Hello there. Welcome to Ink Theory. My friends, <laughs> we just had mild panic for a second. My capture card, uh, my capture card was having issues. Um, <laughs> for a second, I thought everything broke. But things are now okay. We did it, guys. We did it. I can confirm that the tournament is happening. And I am happy to tell you that not just is this tournament happening, the tournament is also going to be co-commentated by my wonderful, wonderful friend, Baggage. Baggage, are you here? I, I am here. Hello, Snow. Hello, chat. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. How, how is everyone today? I hope everyone's having a good day. Everyone's ready to theorize with us and see how these matches go. Be a great tournament. This is going to be literally the biggest Ink Theory tournament we, were, tournament we have ever had. There are 40, 43 teams registered. I, I need to, to check for a second. I thought one team one team dropped out, but we might be... I think we're okay, okay. Ah, here we go, here we go. Okay, two teams dropped out. We have 41 teams. 41 teams are going to be participating in this tournament. Um, I've already gotten the feedback, like, why is this tournament um, after the Swiss stage, Swiss, Swiss, this, wow, why, after the Swiss stage, why is this going to be a top four? And I can already say, if this keeps on going like this, we might be looking at a top eight in a future Ink Theory. For now, we've got six Swiss stages and then a top four top cut, which is going to be super, super exciting. Those are always, usually the entirety of Ink Theory is, is hype. We always try our best to find the the best matches to be streamed. And actually, um, I can say that the bracket has, has just started. <laughs> Baggage, how are you? <laughs> oh, I, I am doing rather well today. It's nice and sunny where I'm at, warm, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to see some amazing Splatoon gameplay going forward. How are, how are you today, Snow? Oh, Everything I'm doing okay accidentally. Enough? I am doing so accidentally. I actually have to quickly chat, uh, send a quick message to the organizer, organizer so we can set up the match, the next match that is actually going to be streamed soon. We're already, we're already getting started super, super quickly. I've got so, so much stuff this time. If you might want to take a quick look at the bottom right, um, all of those wonderful people, there are so many people that are working on this tournament at the moment. So I gotta quickly communicate with them and make sure that we can get the first match started as soon as quickly, as soon as possible. Yeah, lots of staff members today. Not just be, it's not just gonna be me and uh, Snowpoke commentating this time. It's we're also gonna be joined later on by Layla or Tamashi Kan Kanjo as our uh, third commentator for today. So. I'm sure you guys will enjoy hearing her lovely commentary. Exactly. I am I am super super glad that this time um I am I am joined by like like two super super experienced commentators. You guys might know I am rather new to all of this. This is my I think this is the fifth Ink Theory tournament and so this is also the fifth time that I have that I have run a tournament. By the way, also Chimeric, thank you so 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 much for the raid. It is very much appreciated. <laughs> Thank you so much. And ever since we started doing those Ink Theory tournaments, there have there have been so, so many people excited to watch it. And I hope that <laughs> just as the previous four ones, this tournament can can like make sure that you guys will not be disappointed. The hype will be the hype will be there. <laughs> and things are are going to be awesome. I'm very yeah. curious to see actually how things are going to be now that there are are 41 teams participating. Like everything is now lighter, twice as large. Baggers, can you tell me what's the largest tournament you've ever have like have been involved in? Well, the largest tournament that I've ever been involved with commentating has been my own uh, tournament for uh, or own tournament that I've helped uh, run and organize, uh, and that is Winter Breeze. That was the largest one that I've ever uh, commentated over. Okay. And okay. That, that was a lot of fun to do, and th this I one. I that breeze was amazing. Br breeze is amazing. I'm just a bit sad that with everything going on in the world, that we're unable to host and do these sort of LAN events. But mm, yeah, of I'm, I, I'm, I'm just as happy that we're able to, uh, that we're able to still do a lot of these stuff online, commentate, and have a lot of uh, tournaments going. But hopefully. 
hopefully we'll be able to get some more LAN events going soon. Either way, that I, I'm, I'm ready to theorize with these first upcoming and teams. Are, aren't it's you? not just it's not just us two because this is this is slowly getting started. I can already tell you the first the first matchup that we are going to be streaming is going to be Dark Sun versus the Broadway Grillers. Both of those teams show were had an incredibly good showing last time. Um, they participate in the tournament, so I have decided that I would like to really, I would really like to watch how those two match up against one another. They're all currently Maybe. getting ready. Um, Broadway yeah. Grillers, you might know, they actually made it to top four in the previous Ink Theory. A surprisingly strong team who I have played against like a year ago, and back then they were like about as strong as our team. And now here we are, <laughs> here we are with them making the top cut in tournaments. Mm. Just waiting to get set up into the lobby. Everything. Uh, let's just go over the first first set of maps for our Swiss stage, shall we? So. Uh, Oh, yes, Game course, 1 being Splat Zones on, uh... Oh, it's been a while since I've played Splatoon this season. <laughs> my mind... My mind is foggy. Muscle Forge Fitness, that's the name. Oh my word. <laughs> there we go. Too much... Too much Halo the past few days. It's burned me out. Oh. Halo? Yes. So, recently on PC, uh, the Halo 3 has uh, released and that's like a 14 year old game okay and okay. i played it 14 years ago <laughs> so going back and playing that it's got my mind all nostalgic and that and now going back into splatoon it's made me forget the names of things and uh <laughs> it's it's crazy no, that's fair though that's but, fair but either way i'm i'm ready i'm ready to see how this first map will go one thing that is probably going to make many participators happy is actually that this time most of the map mode combinations, I would even say, I mean, I'm not an expert in like which mode combinations are popular, but like the maps are really, really good this time. So <laughs> I think this is the first time where I haven't had anybody complain about the map mode combinations. Um, because, you know, like it's usually based on the on the ranked modes and this time like nintendo is just very kind to us apparently <laughs> oh this month this month's uh, map list is a lot is a, is a lot more consistent and a lot more friendly to everyone everyone likes these maps in the in the rotation and the maps that have been picked out it's been uh it's been very very interesting to say the least okay i've I, also now I, finally I've... I very much enjoy looking uh, at how these matches go, especially for uh, tower control on the reef for our second game. That'll be interesting to see how it goes. So. Uh, yeah, the reef. It's it's a very large map. You can you can do some very nice flanks from there. Like I have, I feel like I'm slowly making the experience that tower control seems to be the mode where where flanks seem to be the most successful. At least I have made the ma the most the best experiences with flanking on on that particular mode. Um, also, Baggers, I've got good news. Um, I finally managed to find the lobby that, that we were looking for. Oh, excellent. Okay, we're getting ratty. Yeah, I was spending like the last going. five hours. So <laughs> if you saw me if you saw me struggling to speak, I was uh, trying to find the, uh, the lobby, which <laughs> I mean, everybody who's played private battles before probably knows the feeling when you have like 200 people in your friend list and then you're trying to find the one lobby and oh my gosh. <laughs> So that took me a while, but but here we are. We will finally be able to play to play the game as as we are getting ready. But yeah, Baggers, Baggers, tell me tell me your opinion about tower control because I like I am currently learning so much about about this game strategically. I'm trying again. I'm trying to get better at the game. There's still a lot to be learned. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different this? tactics. There's a lot of different tactics going into uh, tower control, and we we can see a lot of different tactics going into this. This map particularly the muscle forge as well because there's so there's such a variety between the weapons that we can see lots of different play styles coming out from each of the players so uh expect so I'm, I'm i'm expecting to maybe see explosions or uh or just generally chargers 
for the back oh, lanes yes, of the teams. They are. Maybe they're so good. Maybe we'll map. see tons. Maybe we'll see tons of end zaps coming forward uh, with the armor <laughs> oh, yeah. spams this time in compare in comparison to what we've generally seen with the juniors. And I their remember armor having spams. a match. A match in ranked I, I, against I don't want to guess any of these team comps yet. I want to see what these players are going to be running going forward into our first match of uh, Splat mm -hmm. Zones on Muscle Forge Fins. So. Also, I have a quick t question to, to chat before before we're getting too much into it and then, then we'll get, get to ask. Can you tell me about the audio? Can you guys hear the nice music in the background? Is Can you guys like make, our, make clear our voices? Do we have the same volume? Because um, since this is all this is all happening so quickly and there are multiple people people involved, I can't properly check everything beforehand. Chad is saying the music might be a bit quiet. Oh, of course, of course. Well, I will always way. gladly make the music a little bit louder. Either way, we're going into our first match as we uh, start with Muscle Forge Fitness and Splat Zones between Dark Sun and West Broadway Grillers. And there's an Explosher. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, we, we've got our Explosher and we've got Firefin Charger on the side of uh, Dark Sun. So this will be interesting. Uh, hopping on forward here. You can see Control going into the side of Dark Sun as West Broadway Grillers trying to get positions. Fortunately, two of them go down, so Dark Sun gaining control this first half of the map. Dark Sun already having a very good showing here, keeping the map and taking down people from West Broadway Grillers. I think last uh, tournament it was actually West Broadway Grillers that were ahead of Dark Sun, so this might be their chance to to redeem themselves. And so far, so far it's really working out. Oh, but here yeah, comes the combat see. attempt. Ooh. Inkjet does manage to get picked. There we go, Jeremy coming in, getting two picks with that tri slosher. Very nice, allowing control to go into the side of West Broadway Grillers. Such a good job there by German. We can also see specials. All, almost all of the specials are going to be ready for this next push coming from Dark Sun. And we can see two specials used, three specials. I There's just saw German down. having his ink armor ready. And I was, <laughs> I had to stop myself from pressing the R button because I was like, oh, <laughs> ink armor, let's go. <laughs> yeah, we just... Oh but my of course, word. in zones, it's also important that you coordinate your specials and not just pop it at the first possible moment. And they did a really good job there, though they were not able to get the lead in the end, with now Dark Sun holding control over the zone. Now, yeah, we can see. Everyone on West Broadway Girl is working together really nicely here, trying to stack up and push together. There's a special coming from Jim. Oh, getting picked oh, off by wide. the Charger. That was very clean. Only leaves one player alive on the side of West Broadway Girlers and forced them into a bad situation here if they want to take this first game. Gonna have to take it slow. Turf control completely in the side of Dark Sun right now. In zones can be extremely out. hard to come back from situations bubbles. like this, but they're using their yeah. specials. They might do it. They did it. They did it. They got their specials in time. There we go. That was a nice clean push by them. But it doesn't seem like it's gonna last for long as Bomb Rush comes out and picks go back into favor of Dark Sun. West Broadway girl Such, a, Rush, such a good special in in zones. Being able to take back the zone just sometimes just on your own can be an incredibly useful ability in this in this mode where you usually have to coordinate, have to rely on people being alive, have to potentially even rely on having ink armor. Yeah, so being able to do it all on own can be inc incredibly useful. See Inkjet being forced out by Gem there, trying to get a pick going forward into the zone. Is neutralized though, so this is helping them for West Broadway Girlers as they push forward. They do manage to take it here. Does force Dark Sun back as turf control starts to go into the favor of West Broadway Girlers. We're now in the middle of the match, right in the middle. And um, so far, I would say, honestly, West Broadway Grillers, they like they can still take this back. They are doing, they're having a tremendous show. All they need is just one one good lockout situation. Oh. However, they're now two down. So this might be oh, the end of their German. zone control. Oh, oh German so close. trying to jump out. Unable to miss the hits that he needed to get those picks there, and this this could be Dark Sun's KO here if they're if they're if they play this right. West Brawler Girl is stacking up. Oh, Explosher going down for them. This is not good. This Charger is very very strong right now, getting pick after pick. Oh. That's so that's sad. So far, I've always seen West Brawler Girls coming back out of those bad situations, but they don't have a lot of time left. Oh, and the zone is there. Right. This is unbelievable. 
they do <laughs> manage to cap it though, this is keeping them alive. Citrus trying to get a pick, does go down. Two however, down on Darkside Sky. Managing to trade. Three Sermon, down. However, get a pick there. Only two players alive on the side of Dark Sun, as uh, West Broadway Grillers sitting back, playing this slow, playing this safe, using specials just to prevent any push coming this forward. This is their biggest chance right Dark now. Sun. Yeah, they're they just trying to get it. Honestly, I think if Dark Sun takes this back, I'm not sure if they can if they can win at all. Now one oh. down though. Do you know one down, the armor coming he out. He doesn't. This he doesn't. Is not, this is not looking good for West Broadway Grillers. This. Dark oh, Sun this is not looking good for us very either. Very well. <laughs> The, your connection to the host has been lost. Wait, Baggins, are you still seeing the tournament? The I'm, I'm still there. I can, I, I'll give you oh, an audio let's go, let's go. Baggins, it's solo still, commentary. It's still in the favor of uh, of Dark Sun right now as West Broadway goers trying their best to push in. Six seconds left on the timer. 25 seconds left. Oh, West Broadway goers are... Oh, it looks like they're going to cap his own here, but Dark Sun just takes it back. Two seconds left on the timer, and it goes to Dark Sun first match. Okay. My gosh, <laughs> that was that was something. <laughs> so I hope you KO guys enjoyed the radio the mode. <laughs> yeah, KO going in the favor of Dark Sun. <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> Seventeen KA coming in the side of Citrus. There playing the junior. That was that was a very interesting first match. My God! Wow! <laughs> yeah, the junior. Junior being very impressive there. I saw that throughout, throughout the match, they did a really, really excellent job at getting a lot of splats. Oh my gosh, the German internet being strong there. I hope this is not going to happen again throughout the tournament. Um, it seems like this time it was legit, like it, it must have been on me or something like that. I have no idea. Well, but excellent, excellent job being our radio host here. Yeah, we, we, have, we have ways to get around this. Radio hosting is always a good way to get around technical difficulties. But at least I we know. Have a radio, I actually have a radio audio filter on my on my mixer, so uh, worst case worst case we can give like a fully authentic experience here. Oh my horror. <laughs> oh. So what uh, I saw in no. this match though, what stood out to me was West Broad regulars were incredibly, incredibly good at at taking back the zone after it has been captured by the opponents. However, they weren't that strong as far as actually keeping it is concerned. And it shows to me again, the experience that I have had too is that the West Broadway Gorillas individually, they are not even that strong. But together, like everywhere where it depends on them working together excellently, they show a tremendous job. But then of course, once it gets more into the like holding the zone phase where you have to win the 1v1 situations, then a team with uh, with just extremely strong slayers like Dark Sun with the the um, Junior getting those 15 splats, some of those probably assists, but you know, um, they can shine in that situation. So let's yeah. see how Tower is going to go for them. I expect Brad Regulars, they probably always know when to be on the Tower, we will, we will see. I mean... Looking at what their team comps were in that last one, I'm expecting to see a Charger come out again from the side of Dark Sun, so this will be a very interesting second match. As we can see, there's a Charger, and we yeah. have a Golden Dynamo this time for the side of West Broadway Grillers. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. And there's also Daffle Doolies. Oh. Awesome! Yeah, we I've can been see Mori immediately at the start just going straight away for that armor to allow their team to get a quick push and get control of the map. You can see. Going forward, trying to get a pick. Does go down, is a trade, however. Charger managing to get that pick. Gem sitting back on the side of West Broadway Grillers. Just trying to play for turf control right now. Make sure that they have picks, have have turf and have specials ready for this first attempt. Missiles. Having to play this slow here. Ooh, one going down for West Broadway Grillers. Two going down. This could be a push coming out of the side of Dark Sun here. Sam just trying to shark there. Tower being moved for Maybe the first get time. A pick from oh, it doesn't look Can like it's going to be a pick past though. The checkpoint. Oh, checkpoint seems very safe here. As yeah, this Dark is, Sun just this keeps. Is very, keeps this is painting. very much in the control of Dark Sun right now. And where is where are the West Predators? They are they seem to be very very far away. Nowhere nowhere close to the objective. They're just trying. Oh, Jam falling down gets splattered immediately. Oh, only now Debbie and Sam trying to take the corner, drive. but Sam oh Sam is all alone. Gets sniped. 
see it's just trying to clear them off this checkpoint and they do manage to clear them off manages to push it back and now it's and only just free it's a 3v3 again but the turf control right now is in the favor of dark sun west broadway girlers have to get turf control back as they try and push forward sushi looking to get peck here on gem does get it uses missiles immediately after he's pushing straight back in across that bridge oh 2v3 gets down one again for west broadway three down only dap, only the dapple ghoulies is from Sam left alive here for West Broward Griller. Is just gonna try to play the safe, play it slow. Has special ready. Mm, that toxic oh, miss, however. Oh, they also being sniped. This charger is so good. Yeah, we can see there's wow. another clean pick. <laughs> oh my days, this is, this is really, really in the favor of Dark Sun right now. They are, they are controlling this game right now. They also have three specials now, so that's going to make it even harder for them, even if even if West oh. Broadway Girls try to coordinate and take this back. You can see Sam getting that pick on the charger though. This this looks like it could be in favor of West Broadway Girls, so they get picks buff three already. go down right there! Oh my gosh, yeah, all of those specials, they just they just come and it's over. Oh Sushi able to get a clean pick there, able to push forward. We can see another jump from Sam with the dapples there. Does, get, does manage to get the pick, stays alive. Looks like this is going to be a stop for the terror push here as there's only two members of Dark Sun alive and West Brawler Girl is trying to get turf and trying to get this push going for themselves. Vet so any more really of a hard time getting cap Dark Sun. map control though. And without map control, they're not going to be able to move forward. If I'm not mistaken, I think Dark Sun also has the better painters on their, on their side with the Junior and the Splash, both of them oh. tremendously inky weapons. Yeah, we can see... West Brawler Girl is pushing up to this first checkpoint. Dark Sun playing it safe, waiting for their team to be back. There's the Ray coming forward, trying to pressure. Missiles, Dynamo does go down, only three members, only two members as I say that. <laughs> and as I say that, only one member left alive for the side of West Brawler Girlers. As and if I'm not Dark mistaken, Sun Broadway Girlers, they also, they also do not have a Stingray, so... If they yes, do they need do to defend, defend, what they will have to do is try to use their Booyah Bomb. Which, in yeah, my experience, they're... is a little bit less effective than Stingray in that in that regard. They have they have plenty of defensive specials, but the positioning there that we can see two members stacked together there does get pushed out by the entirety of Dark Sun as they pressure forward. Only two members left again on the side of West Broward Girls as they push into the checkpoint. Mori trying to get this. Does get the checkpoint. This could be a KO for them. German trying to get the tower. Dynamo. Nice Dynamo. dynamo. <laughs> German. Dark Sun seems to be looking to get Pickle Sushi gets the pick. Excellent. Very clean. This, this looks like they can hold this and maybe get a push going as we go into the last 40 seconds of the match. Oh no, pain, 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 pain. <laughs> They need turf control and picks here to go forward and get this push going for themselves. They need to get for two checkpoints still in order to get the lead here. So we go in the last 30 seconds. Special's getting and ready on like the side of Dark here, Sun. German managing to because... paint while also taking all the safe corners. Oh, they're three down. What just happened? Oh my gosh. Oh, that was just her, her positioning on the side of... <laughs> of West Broadway Grillers as Dark Sun's coordination is just picking them off every time. Ray Ray on the side of on the side of Dark Sun that's gonna be game. That's so unfortunate for West Broadway Grillers. But wow. Very well played second game as we go forward. Dark and I, I guess it, it it makes sense that um in a mode where coordination is not quite as as in it's oh we can see the difference in the splats too. The splat's oh, clearly showing a, a huge difference. We can see and that does make it a bit harder for... Excuse me, you can... Oh, all the frontliners there from Dark Sun. 20k from the Junior. And both the Splash and the Ken's Splatter Shot had 16k's apiece. And you can see it's just control there, getting picks. And that was, that was very well coordinated by Dark Sun. It was a well-deserved second game for them. As we go forward into our third and final match of the set, uh, Inkblot Art Academy on Rainmaker. Maybe we'll see West Broadway Grillers make a difference here in Rainmaker, where it's a lot more chaotic and the turf control can swap very fast. We'll have to see. I think Rainmaker is definitely going to be a better mode for the Broadway Grillers than, than Tower Control. I'm still... 
I'm still all set on thinking that like wherever wherever coordination goes, broad regulars will will shine. That being said, I mean I can't understate how how good of a job Dark Sun did there. And I mean you saw that in the match that whenever whenever people were taken down on the side of broad regulars, it was not just one person. It was always it, they just went drop 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 drop. Everybody was down. It was either all or nothing, and many times Dark Sun could make it work out so that it was nothing for the Broad Regulars, who then could not move forward. And, of course, in Rainmaker, if there's a wipe in Rainmaker, that's rough. You don't want to see a wipe in Rainmaker. Rainmaker is such a chaotic mode that one single wipe could lead to a KO. So we'll have to see what happens here as we go forward into Pink Floor Academy. This could be... This could, this could go either way. And if we see two wipes coming out on the side for one team, this could be it. That could be a straight up KO. As we can see, ooh, a Hydra Spatling coming out from West Broadway Girlers this time. And a Sorella Brella. Interesting. We can see a similar comp from last time from Dark Sun, Splash Matic this time. As we get set up, Pop going in Dark Sun's favor. As. We also got our first ends up, by the way. Broadway Girlers yeah, going for an actually more painty loadout this time. More turf heavy, double armor as well for them, so this could be very good for them. Unfortunately, there's only one player, or only one player went down there for uh, West Brawler Girlers, so they're unable to push it, as you can see Sam Shark in there. Moving forward to help German, but German gets picked off there as Citrus pushing forward into the Brawler. Sushi there as well. Oh, and now Sam also in danger. To... Oh, but they do somehow manage to take down two, two for, uh, for Dark Sun. Well, this is, this is going to be a push, however, because they do get the pick on the Hydra Spatling. This could be a very good push, get it down to, to 40, even 30 if they're lucky. But, members of West Brawler Girlers up already. Good pushes. Oh, Two that people down time. already. Dark Sun cleaning house right now. Getting pick after pick, as we can see another pick going forward. Rainmaker just going for that KO. Is it going to be it No here? way! And the instant yeah. KO. That... That was very clean coordination from the side of Dark Sun as West Broadway Grillers unfortunately go down in a KO. That was that was very clean gameplay from Dark Sun. Instantly getting the turf control at the start. Getting that Rainmaker pop was crucial for them. And then getting pick after pick and working together to systematically pick off the members of West Broadway Grillers to get that push going. Unfortunate for West Broadway Grillers as they don't take a single game in this first set, but it's just how the Swiss stage goes. We'll have to see as Dark Sun take the first set clean, free all in the Swiss stage. I have to say, I actually, like from what I saw from um, West Broad Regulars, I actually kind of liked how they, they played at the start. It's just, I mean, as as we said, if you get wiped in Rainmaker, it can be, it can be over very quickly. And it seems like the Sorella Brella, you know, I, I see a lot of people picking Sorella Brella at the moment. Uh, knowing that it is a, a very strong weapon, but I also think that Sorella Brella is, is a weapon that is very, very hard to play. It's a weapon that you need months practicing because like the entire like leg aspect and the Brella shield, it's very difficult, so picking it up on the fly can be, can be incredibly hard. I mean, the, the Sorella Brella in itself is a very good push weapon for Raymaker, but like when that Sorella Brella was left alone with no turf, was getting pushed by three members, I believe it was, on the side of Dark Sun, that was just not going to work out for them. Able to keep themselves alive a bit longer and delay the death, but that's not going to help the entire team in the, in the long run, because then it'll put them one member down and it'll stagger the respawns, and as we saw... Dark Sun was just able to coordinate, get the pick on all members of uh, West Broadway Girlers, staggering the respawn of the backliner there uh, for the Hydra Spatling, and that was just a clean push from them going forward. Mm. Oh, what I also have in to the point out, What I have to point out is, of course, that um, since this is the very first turn in a tournament with 40 participating teams, they are... <laughs> Okay, the overlay team overlay team is figuring things out right now. <laughs> but yeah, the winners the winners of this match are are Dark Sun. Yeah, as I as I indicated, um there like we doubled the staff. There are a lot of people that are Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> a lot of people that are just being trained. 
So we did a little bit of training in advance, but of course you can only you can only really figure out as things are happening how how exactly it is it is going to be. Seeing especially with Battlefire, they're like only seeing buttons for the first time right now. So yeah, yeah. the first round of a Swiss tournament is usually very, very um <laughs> Very unbalanced. It's very chaotic. It's entirely random. Very chaotic and unbalanced, yes. So sometimes you'll have really balanced teams in the first round, sometimes you won't. From the looks of the scores so far, from what people have said, it looks like a lot of the teams are a bit unbalanced right now, as I see a that's, lot of free O's coming out of the board. We'll have to see, that's though. True, that's true. So We'll have to see, um, though, going into our second round. Um, we're still waiting on a few teams finishing off, as I'll just refresh the bracket and make sure. But just just a quick explanation of how the Swiss stage works. There's six rounds in our in the Swiss stage, so no teams are eliminated during these rounds. After the six rounds, there will be a top four. This may change in future tournaments, but for right now, this tournament, we are doing a top four. So the top four teams in the bracket make it through and go into a single limb double double limb sort of uh, play style to get the top three teams of the tournament and, exactly exactly and just just to describe uh, the swiss stage itself it is play all free so every team plays free matches for their sets all of the games are played and scored and that helps determine uh, tiebreakers later into the tournament especially at the end of uh rounds five and six where we start to see who's going to be in the top half of the bracket and who isn't so and in my experience it's, it's a lot of math <laughs> in my yeah it very much is luckily it's done automatically um in my experience there are actually quite a lot of positions that are decided by those tiebreakers so like for example who makes it into top four like the the fourth place usually is decided by a tiebreaker so those outcomes are actually very important and every single match counts. And if we do if we do the math, so we've got six Swiss rounds, we've got play all three, that's 18 matches that every team in this tournament is guaranteed to play. So that's a lot of attention that they will be. A lot of attention, a lot of focus that they will be needing, lots of different teams that they will be fighting. And that's also the thing why why so many tournament organizers, me included, love the Swiss stage format is that every team that participates actually gets to enjoy the tournament, actually gets to play a lot, and over time gets to play against teams that are more and more balanced. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have I, to see it. We'll have to see speaking, as we go forward. Let's, let's list off some of the scores, actually. Oh, yes, 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 absolutely. For, absolutely. for, for this current round. Uh, right now, we have... Uh, Unstable Connection getting a buy from this first round as we do have a odd number of teams participating in this tournament so they get to play their first match this next uh, round. Uh, so they are only going to be able to play 15 games from the looks of it so far. Oh no. May change. <laughs> that 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 does happen sometimes. It that's does. what happens when you get odd number of teams. We may have some teams dropping out, some teams uh, not being able to finish the Swiss rounds, which is unfortunate when that does happen. Hopefully we won't have that happen in this tournament, but oh, anyway, going have. forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going forward, uh, Radical Dreamers, free owing Inkcraft Cult. Uh, oh, wow. Fear of, death. <laughs> free, Fear of Death, free owing Memento Mori. Uh, Half English Breakfast, free owing Reunited. Riot, free owing Incadia. 60% Fish Puntance, free owing Hardcore Noobs White. Uh, Brainlets, free owing Toxic Ice Cone. Uh, Carnage Gaming, free owing Young Dreamers. May uh, I as... point out for a second? Um, Carnage mm -hmm. Gaming is actually a sponsored team. So you might know Dylan from, from his stream. He is an incredibly strong player. And I assume that the other players are probably just as strong. So that's going to be... Uh, keep, keep out a look for that name. <laughs> yeah. Okay, excuse me, you, I... can, you can go on. <laughs> that, is, that is perfectly fine. As we go uh, into the next set of results, Dark Sun free owing West Broadway Girlers, as we saw on stream. It was a very fun match to watch. Uh, Symphony free owing Calling Angels. Uh, Destiny Troops free owing R. Uh, IPS Sucks free owing Divine Downpour. I may uh, also 
I explain in this case, IPS is actually a member of of that team. I, I wouldn't let I wouldn't let people have a name <laughs> like that if it wasn't <laughs> clearly in a in a comedic sense. Yeah, we, we we accept these comedic names a lot. Uh, Vision free owing uh, Squid Party chat. Uh, hardcore noobs red as there is two hardcore noobs teams. They have decided themselves as red and white. Uh, hardcore noobs red winning free o against Phase Four. Uh, Midnight winning 3-0 over the deep fried octolings. Uh, Passion winning 2-1 over Otakos. Uh, Trinity winning 2-1 over Operation Stars. Uh, I cannot pronounce the name of this team every time we get to it. In every <laughs> every time in the <laughs> tournament we get to this team, I just cannot announce their name. This is a bit of an Umstellung. Mm-hmm. 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 They 2-1 uh, MC Wimmies, uh, and then the last few teams, Conversion 2, uh, free owing Pure Divinity, uh, Kiwi in the Cave Men, uh, free owing Fluffy Muffins, and Metro Misfits free owing System of a Splashdown. That's uh, such a wonderful name. Finish off the round's results. They actually, System of a Splashdown, if I'm not mistaken, they actually, before that, used to have the name uh, Gris, Panic at the Grisco. So that's a team that definitely has has really impressed me with their, with their team names. And by the way, we are now getting ready for round number two, because as you guys could hear, all the teams have indeed played. So let me take a look at who... Who might we see in this in this particular match? Again, oh, wow. I already see Carnage the... Gaming versus Metro Misfits. That's gonna be that's gonna be fascinating, but I will I will actually hold out on that one until until later in the tournament because we might see this one later in the top four too. And we'll have to see uh, what team we will be spectating, slowly but surely. Again, thank you to all the staff members and uh commentators for uh commentating the for helping out with the tournament today it's a lot of it's a lot of uh, fun and again thank you to the artists as well uh, for providing uh, prizes to the top teams as well we very much appreciate that and um, you guys helping support the tournament this is this wouldn't happen without you guys pretty much you guys absolutely yes. i can actually talk about the prices for a second so um as you see the prices this time are much 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 larger than the usual ink theory prices and that's not how it's going to be in the future just please please don't <laughs> please don't expect too much of the future ink theory this is because lonely days has actually donated 140 dollars to the ink to the price pool and because three actually four wonderful artists adorable weapon of doom six six Actually, Sijang Maru, I think, but we could usually call her Six. Lonely Days and Nathan have decided to participate in the in the prize pool and make awesome, awesome, awesome art. So, if you look at the top left corner of this one, um, the one, the cutie, the cutie derpy Wumi, it's <laughs> it gets me every time, especially with the bubble hat. It's yeah, it's so adorable. So that's for the, the second are place. So amazing. Yeah. Yes, these absolutely. Are these artists are so amazing. It's it's great that they're willing to take time out of their uh, days and out of their uh, commissions. I'm sure these uh, people will people do uh, to provide prizes for our top teams and mm -hmm. for some ra for some of the randomly drawn uh, players that were participating during the tournament as well. Exactly. You so. don't actually have to win. If you are randomly chosen, four players will be randomly chosen and they will also get drawings of their characters by by Six and by Nathan, who are both very, very skilled artists. So even if you are not a top team, you can still hope that maybe you will end up as one of the... Well, I mean every participant is a winner, but as one of the, the prized winners of, of Ink Theory. And then I mean... about the, the charity donations, basically... What the teams get to do is, I think we all have like causes that we are passionate about. And how about just having a hundred dollars at your behest and being like, "Hey, I want to give this to this ton to this charity." And well, the top three places they will get to decide over which charity 
uh, the sum of $175 is going to go to, which I know many teams are, are very excited about. I am very excited about to see where, where the money's go to. So far, it's always been amazing charity. So we had Team Trees, we had uh, Mattville, that was a, um, a charity for, for older dogs. We had Black Lives Matters. Um, we have so, so many good causes. And um, I, am, I am always happy to see how these teams can not just express their passion for Splatoon, but also express their, their passion for, for other causes in this world. Yeah. And the teams that we are going to see this time, <laughs> who may or may not be able to, who are already expressing their, their passion for Splatoon, are Otakos and Operation Stars. Yeah, these teams so, will be interesting to watch. We've seen Otakos before on stream. <laughs> we, I'm not have, we have. I, I'm not too sure if we've seen Operation Stars. Actually, I'm pretty sure we haven't. I'm, they're, they're a little bit of a of a black box. I actually do not know what to expect. There are so many teams this time that actually, uh, there are a lot where I I don't exactly know how strong they're gonna be. So, I I can't tell you whether this one is gonna be balanced or not. I know that I love watching the Otakos. I also can see that Chad loves watching the Otakos. <laughs> the excitement is strong here. Uh, this will be very interesting to see as uh, we get towards our first match already. Clam Blitz on Makomar. This, what what do you think about this map here, Snow? And uh, how how players are going to play this here? Are you are you going to expect more close range weapons, or are you going to expect uh, a lot more mid lane um, and back lane weapons to be played on Makomar? Well, here? I mean, Makomar is a very small map. So usually you would see you would see shorter range weapons. It is it is a bit open. So like chargers, chargers I would say are fine. Blasters are fine, uh, but I expect more short range weapons, especially in clam blitz. I mean we're gonna find out very soon because the match is about to start. But <laughs> yeah, I expect short range weapons. And here we go. We can actually see there's one there's one backliner in this match. It's the splatling. And then other than that, we have a lot of enzaps. We have glue guys, and then of Ooh, course the, the obligatory nautilus. Yeah, this is a very interesting team comp coming out of the side of Otakos here. Heavy Splatling, the the Vanilla Glue goes a H3 and an N, an ends up AE3. That's that's something you don't see every day. So we can already see just going straight away. Otakos trying to get this first push going, and unfortunately it does get shut down. And there's only Sampham left alive in the inkjet. Is trying to duel. Against Silver oh, here, doing it all alone. unable she's to get trying. much it looks like. Oh, oh is he gonna survive though? Oh, she didn't, oh, she didn't, does... she was so close. Spaghetti does manage to confirm that, but in exchange, two versus two here. Only two members left alive for Operation Stars as they're stacked up right now as the turf favor is in Otakos' Oh, can Spaghetti save this though? This looks like Ooh, trouble. Spaghetti Spaghet force back, does have the armor ready however, but Armor is ready for the side of Otakos as they use theirs first. Spaghetti Net control playing really back. awkward against the armor there. Stars right now. Counter push coming forward. Turf control is in favor of Otakos here, so this could be Otakos' push as we say that. Three members three down. down for Otakos. Ooh. Operation Stars looking to get the clams here, get a push going, but Otakos already back in the fray. Already starting to get picks as we can see. Oh, Sam nice, from nice, a clean nice, 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 nice. They're also like map control for Operation Stars is getting better and better. And I can tell you, like looking at Santham for example, playing Glugas with low map control is incredibly, incredibly hard. She's doing an excellent job here. But they oh, will have to, let's... they will have to figure out a way to survive a little bit more. That yeah, means two minutes turf... instant no clown being thrown. Yeah, we can already see turf control right now in, in favor of Otakos as they're coordinating very well, using specials, looking to get picks here. Does get oh, two picks on this right hand side. Excellent. This could be a push going. It's J7 dying. clams there. There's the power clam made. Looks like they're going to go oh, forward we... and get this in, get some points on the board. We shouldn't understate though how, how good of a job Operation Star is doing here with the CDS having, two, having, having seven splats right now. Oh my gosh, they all have so many splats. Seven splats, CDS, eight splats, and uh, seven splats, uh, K-Shot. An incredibly strong team. And now Otakos, they did get 38 points, but that is usually not enough to call, to call anything safe. And we can we see can Operation see Stars already ready with their power clam. We can already see Operation Stars just going in, getting that power clam in. And, and here we go, beautiful special coordination. Oh, 
Only two players were alive there on the side of Otaku. Oh, no so they start left. to stagger forward and there we go. There's clean picks coming out from Otakos as they start to get turf control back. I'm looking to get a counter push going immediately off of the end of that push from Operation Stars. And I'm very impressed by how how Team Otakos was actually able to stop them from taking the lead. I, I would have honestly expected Operation Stars to get a huge lead here and that just didn't happen. Now Sam trying to safely throw in a few more clams. Two versus two. Oh, Sam from unable to Lobanda get the pick. Lobanda's still there. Lobanda's still there. Down. Oh, Silver does get the pick as well. Shutting down the H3 and shutting down any more pushes. Two power clams currently alive. Three power clams now, if you include the pity clam. Four Operation Stars there, looking to get a push going. Spaghetti in a bad position. Sam from Jay trying to get picks here. Do get two. Only two members left alive. Wow, and look the at the map of control. Operation Stars. This is not looking good for Operation Stars right now. Hackers. They're passed where... back in. They are getting they're getting smaller and smaller. Oh, Jay's Jay just getting clam. a sneaky power climb in there. Does go down, but able to just open up that basket and set up maybe for the rest of the team. Only one oh, member no, left alive on the side of Operation Stars. More climbs coming Sam in from Sam excellent from just job, trying though. to keep that. They're just trying to keep that basket open. They do manage to get more. Oh, the power climb is also in. Climb. Remaining 13. Very low score here, so we get just trying to get the picks here, prevent any extra clams coming in. Jay just trying to end this game here, going in. Does he One get more it? Entry. Yes! They do it! They do it! Otakos, sneaking in those extra clams at the end, that opening push from Jay there, that was very strong by them, very well played. <laughs> An interesting I... comp to say the least, and it works for them very well here as we can see. I absolutely did not expect that basket to stay open. I absolutely did not. I expect that that's going to be like the one, the one odd power clam. And then the match just goes on. And instead they just kept having it open and open and open. Supported by beautiful splats by, by Santham, who was, who was, I think, actually the only player surviving at one point and then was able to actually defend the enemy basket, stopping Operation Stars from rushing back in. And therefore yeah. able to to capture that comeback or to capture to capture that control. And I would say Chad is saying attack was with the comeback, but I mean I would say like they were having control throughout this match. Like it wasn't it wasn't entirely decisive, but they were they were having control. They were doing a good job. Yeah, they they had very good turf control that entire match. That their their team comp worked very well with their playstyles. They were able to get turf consistently with that ends up 83. Just consistently getting turf and getting picks, getting those sneaky pushes as we saw. And I definitely we also did, saw, did not expect the answer. Yeah, I mean, not the 83 we, saw, <laughs> we saw a lot of interesting pushes coming forward from them. They managed to get sneaky push after sneaky push and just putting consistent pressure on Operation Stars who were losing turf control just, just from the playstyle of uh, Otakos and picks going in the favor for Otakos at the end, and that allowed them to get the KO here. We also Either have way, the first... Oh, excuse me. Either way, going forward in the next match, Splat Zone Starfish main stage. I'm I'm interested to see if they're gonna... What sort of Glugas Sanfum will pull out this time, because I know Sanfum loves to play the Glugas in tournaments. I'm gonna I'm gonna so. guess on Vanilla. He's, he's a vanilla, vanilla main, of course. There might be a surprise. Kenta Glugas have Fizzy Bombs after all. Very, very strong painters. We also, by the way, I wanted to point that out. We saw the first CDS this time for this tournament. Um, last tournament, it sprung out to me how many CDS there were. And I mean, this isn't one of the top team tournaments where like everybody plays the meta, but there were so, so many CDS. And I'm curious to see if there are gonna be more. I mean, they do paint well, they have the spot bombs. It's absolutely not bad. And I could imagine maybe yeah. we're gonna see one in this match. As we get forward here. Ooh, it's a charger coming out from the side of Operation Stars of Firefin with the ends up 85 Junior coming out this time in favor of a uh, farmer for Otakos. Sapo playing aggressive manages to get one pick of a trade going forward onto the player. Ooh, Sapo getting the pick on the charger there. It's very vital for Otakos as they push forward. Another clean pick from these glue. Sapo just playing right now getting pick oh, after pick after pick start. that was very well played by south i'm getting pick after pick was very aggressive could have oh, that could have went either way there if the charger managed to get the pick 
onto Sam from there, but unfortunately doesn't. Oh, 2v2 right now. Only Salty and Barry here. But to some Do extent, manage to get the pick this... and only... You can see it's only the heavy spattling left alive right now. This could be the ter this could be the zone in favor of Operation Stars, but unfortunately they let it tick down for way too much there. Okay, we have coming. And it looks though. like it's gonna go back. It looks like it's gonna go back in favor of Otakos here. Is oh, and Sam pick. Jesus keeps getting those plats. Pick after pick after pick as we see the Booyah bomb coming out. Can they go all night this here. time? Only two players. Oh, it doesn't look like it. it. They don't. They don't. They don't. Otakos just. Clean pick after clean pick. This is ticking down very fast for them. The entirety of Operation Stars un unable to get much and bomb there. Picking off Samfung. Samfung again picking off the charger. Only two members left alive. They need to cap the zone here. Free, free remaining on the timer. Oh, they got a chance though. And they did it. They did it. Operation Stars do manage to save this game for themselves and keep themselves alive. Getting that penalty onto Otakos here. But... That, that was very close for them, that was very tense. Zones has this tendency of having having a recap in the very, very last seconds, because of course the teams, they're trying to get ready, they're trying to coordinate, and then they know, okay, we have this and this many seconds left, let's use all of those seconds to prepare for the comeback. And so that is when you see, see those remaining three, remaining one moments. <laughs> and they're able... Just look at, look at Sad from score there, 16k already, oh what? my god! Oh wow! Stamplum is absolutely slaying in this match, just keeping consistent control over Operation Stars as Otakos just trying to get pit. Wow! After pit 16! They're just trying to get the turf control and take this zone and KO here as Operation Stars are struggling to get much here as again the charger goes down for the Operation Stars. Oh, those poor guys are gonna have nightmares! <laughs> and now they're three down again! It's only Salty left alive! Here is Ollie and Jay trying to hold the zone here is use armor. Salty got the armor ready, waiting for the teammates to use his armor make it here. Back, oh, there's armor for Getting, for Otakos yeah, too. By Jay does get the pick onto Jay, oh, just looking the neutral well, zone. Does, does, does go down. Oh, three down Otakos though. Three down Otakos. This is a good chance for them. Can they stop the backline? They have to stop Ollie. Uh, Ollie's providing Ollie a jumping point. Ollie's there's providing a special. Ah, uh, does neutralize the zone. And, and that's the start. Alive. They would have, they had to stop Ollie, and they just didn't quite manage to do it. Oh no, here oh, we go, nice direct. As we say that, Inkjet <laughs> coming in from Barry, managing to get a pick. Unfortunately, it looks like he's down. Oh, it does get the pick of Sandbomb. Is it going to be a trade? Unfortunately, not, as the zone goes back in control of Otakos. As Operation Stars are just struggling to get much here. Booyah Bomb saving the life there. Low going down, unfortunately, as Salty cleaning him up. Only the heavy spiraling left arrive again on the taco side. As they do clean him up this time, this could be the zone for uh, Operation Stars and turf control going in their favor as they start to set up for a defensive hold. But what I'm worried about so is the splatting so far, Oli has nine splats and they have to stop him. They they need their sniper to stop Oli or otherwise they will always, Team Otakos will always have the jumping spot. They will always easily be able to come back. And so far, unless they're able to stop Otakos backline, I don't quite see them able to, to recap this. Even though that and being said, I mean, they are doing an excellent job. As we say that, Otakos, Sampham, just unable to get picks here, does go down, unfortunately. But trade here as we go forward. Bomb rush coming in, just trying to keep the zone in <laughs> Operation oh, Star's favor. Oh, am I getting favor, the commentators and... curse right now? Oh <laughs> as no, we get into the last oh, 30 no. seconds, 20 points difference. Sandham desperately trying to get spats. Oh, sorry, go oh, down. there's the inkjet. Oh. There's the inkjet, but it's only one special and she stopped. No Spaghetti. way. Spaghetti. She stopped. Spaghetti. Is Spaghetti. the booyah bomb. Can the booyah bomb take it? It does. Oh, only Spaghetti left alive here as the jump comes in. Spaghetti has to jump out. Unfortunately, goes down and... Salty unable to get a trade here is only Sampham and Ollie left alive. The last 10 seconds of the match. Operation Stars don't have time, they have to rush forward as Sampham gets another They're pick. Gonna... Oh, no way. Okay, okay. My days, that was such wow. a back and forward game there. <laughs> I was so surprised to see Operation Stars with their near with their near comeback. I mean, you you saw the commentators curse. I really felt like as long as Ollie is in a stable position here, I always I felt like it was always this this back and forth between Ollie and Santham. Santham getting twenty three splats, and then Ollie was always there providing the jumping spot and therefore keeping the members of Otaku safe. I mean, that was a ridiculous game. The start of that match, just complete control in the favor of Otaku's there. 
just Sam Fum slaying out, getting pick after pick after pick. I believe first four K, first first four splats were actually Sam Fums, just getting one pick on one side, managing to get the charger, and then another pick, and then another pick as the last player tried to jump out, and that just led to the entirety of Otakos getting turf control there and just pushing I out was, the entirety. I was also surprised. Of I was surprised to see Santham's incredibly aggressive opening. When that match started, Santham just rushed in and went for the splats. As a Gluga player myself, I have to say, I usually try to find a safe sneaky spot. I, I, I wait in some corner and just try to pick people. And Santham, she just rushes in, gets splat after splat after splat after splat. And that's how you see those 23 in the end. And I think that might be a trait that will actually be really good for her in the upcoming match. Tower Control and Piranha Pit. Because Tower Control in Piranha Pit has this one, this one unique gimmick that at the start of the of the tower's path, it actually moves into your direction. So on this map in particular, it's actually to your benefit to rush to the tower as quickly and possible as possible, and then keep the tower in in a safe spot for you, which you ironically get by being on it yourself. It's kind of a funny map like that, and I can imagine yeah, well, that turning out really well for her. I mean, we'll have to see, as this map does have the other gimmick of it having uh, conveyor belts consistently moving backwards and forwards and changing the tower control of those uh, of those ramps and tower control specifically in the middle of the map. So we'll have to see what happens here, because this could be... This could be another game where Sanfum, as you were saying, could control it with the Glugas. This is a very, very good... Very strong map for Glugas to be able to just move about and keep turf control in their half get picks and slowly push forward. But we'll have to see as we go forward into our in, into this match of Tower Control and how Operation Stars might be able to counteract this because the Charger that last game was just picked off. So I wanna, I wanna see, are they gonna stick with this Charger or are they gonna switch it out and play something I different? think Charger's gonna have an even harder time in this match. Oli now switching to even more range and the Charger is back, the Charger's back. Not but Oli's outranging time. them this time with their Hydra. It's a non-scope charger this time, so it might be more beneficial, actually, for Operation Stars. Is already turf going mostly in the favor of Otakos as it's going backwards and forwards here. Spaghetti trying to get the pick with Sampham. Sampham does get that pick, however, shutting down the charger and looking. It looks like it's going to be uh, push. In. It looks Where's like it's going to be Otakos push here. Oh, Sampham running out of the wrong time. He got popped up really easily. <laughs> Oh, that, that was unfortunate there. That could have been a very good push to the first checkpoint for Otakos, but ink management not being in their favor there as Operation Stars starting to get a push going. Oh, nice boy of them. Okay, now it's Operation Stars. Time to shine. They are on, this, on the tower. Spaghetti in a bad position, trying to jump out. Does manage to get out in time as Low and Sampham pressuring there. Do manage to get one. <laughs> Sampham is going and again. Yeah, but she's Jay, not having it quite as easy trade. as the previous match. Oh, that's a very awkward position to shoot from, and I think she does realize. Uh, gonna play this slow here, just trying to keep turf pressure on them, keep them in their base. Inkjet coming nice out from her. Does get a pick onto the Dooley's here. Petros. But then the Charger has... has uh... Oh no, oh, not the Slap Bomb! Oh, Rolls into the Slap so Bomb! annoying if your dodge roll into them. <laughs> Oh, that was okay, so Okay, where's the Stingray? Oh, there we go, there we go. Charger has been having the Stingray ready for a while. And still, Operation the... Stars does have the lead. And look at all of that map control around the tower. This means, so far, Otakos really cannot quite take it. But now, Santham is getting the splat. She's getting it ready for another push attempt. If she can get this this splat. And she doesn't, though. She doesn't, she doesn't. Silver does get that, but Jay... Or, low, sorry. Does manage to trade off as Jay is riding in terror here. Ollie and there's the lead. pressuring beside him. Ollie's... Ooh, that was close. That bomb could have possibly picked off Ollie there. Does manage to stay safe and survive and that I have to, to say, get through the first checkpoint. I, I have to say, like, usually a 70 points lead, like, that's not a lot on this map, especially since the tower tends, does, does move into your direction, so it's very, very safe in the first checkpoint. And yet, so far, the points have been very, very slow. It's a very, very aggressive match with not that much objective gameplay. Way more, way more spotting, way more trying to get the zone. Oh, and it is such a back and forth. Oh, it looks like the trades are going in the favor of op or of Otakos here is again another pick coming out for Sanfum. 10k right now does go down to Solly. Is Solly gonna get a pick onto low there? Does not, unfortunately. Silver unable to clean up. Does actually get the pick there from Spaghetti. Oh, but Otakos are too down. Pushing through this corner here. Can the jumper make it? Oh, no Spaghetti. way. <laughs> 
clean snipe Usually as blue goes, you can actually dodge roll out very, very safely. But um, that doesn't work if you if you get sniped on frame one, and Baguette was ready there. It's a very, very important move to snipe as quickly as possible when, when there's a jumper, and not just... Usually with other weapons, you have a few frames to wait, and so people tend to be patient for some reason. But with Glugas, you have to get them on frame one, but then it actually works. Oh, unfortunate here. Salty, playing it back, has armor ready. Just trying to wait for the rest of their team to come forward. You see Silver already on the conveyor, armor coming forward. Just trying to get the control oh, of the tower alone, right now. Trying to push the tower. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. This doesn't seem very safe. Oh, two members pushing immediately from Otakos, preventing any more of the push coming forward. Sam from having to dodge the bird does get the pick onto the pro there. Good pick up from those dodge rolls. As turf goes back in their favor as they start to push around this corner once again. And Jeff from Sam from trying to get a pick here. Does go yeah, down trade. Nobody Does really has been trade. able to capture the drop. This drop area where they're in right now um, is an incredibly crucial part of this map where, of course, the enemy has the upper hand um, standing there, standing there from, um, from, from the high ground. And so far, none of the team has really been able to figure out how to defend the drop against the other one. But that is yeah. exactly what Operation Stars needs now with 40 seconds left and them so far not having the lead. But if they can figure out the drop, that's the one thing they have to do. Then they can take the lead. They just need clean pick after clean pick and preventing these players from pushing as aggressively as they are onto Spaghetti. Does look like it's gonna start a push going for them as we get into the last 30 seconds. Silver, splashdown ready, trying to get this flank here. Pressuring two members. Oh, but Does try to get Sam from. Very dangerous short Force range. Splashdown, Sam from getting the pick there is his only last member alive. For Operation Stars, has to boo themselves, does manage to get the, the pick booyah, onto... The lonely booyah bomb. Low. It's not going to be enough, and I don't think that Team Operation Stars will be able to come back in time to to recapture the, oh, the, the unless, tower there. Unless, unless this, they actually do. This is, this is going to be an all overtime push as players push onto the tower, and they do manage to get the pick off of the player that's riding the tower there. Clean plays. <laughs> Clean plays by Otakos there, do manage to get pick after pick and manage to get through that first checkpoint. This is a very, very back and forward game here. and It's a very it aggressive gameplay this time. It does manage to go in the favor of Otakos this time. That could have went either way. Well played by both teams there. Both teams only having minor mishaps or getting... Uh, not quite... Uh, <laughs> not quite getting the uh, positions that they wanted to... Uh, win that game, but yeah, Otako's winning a nice clean set there for them. First couple of games, very strong plays, and that last game was a bit backwards and forwards. You can see Operation Stars were getting into it and just unable to get that uh, momentum that you needed to get that third and final match. And now our round two. And definitely Operation Stars, they were doing they were doing a great job. They got incredibly close this time in this last match, but they just... <laughs> Yeah, they needed one, one or two times. They they should not have gotten spattered by by the duelies, and I think in that if that if that happened, they they would have had a much much better time in in this particular match. But of course, if you are if you are still practicing, if you're trying to get better, and maybe don't have that much experience against unusual weapons, it can be really tough to play against a team as strong as this. And then of course you also have again, I am really impressed by by Ollie on the back line who did a marvelous job. Chad actually was asking. Uh, custom Hydra, what kit does a Custom Hydra have? Um, but a Custom I'm Hydra not... has Ink Mine and a uh, Armor, so it's a armor weapon for a backline. It's a very strong weapon on uh, on Piranha Pit, actually. So, and that, yeah, that sounds incredibly useful, especially on Tower Control, actually, because they're they're able to place Ink Mines uh, on the conveyors and as players uh, move up to the top of a conveyor, the ink mine will trigger, and any player you... that was up there will get it revealed immediately. And are, it's you very... sure... are you sure about that? As far as I know, I mean, I, I main ink mines. I don't think you can place ink mines on the conveyors. As far as I'm aware, you can. Oh, okay. Unless... I gotta try that out. <laughs> gotta try that out <laughs> next time. But I, as it, far as I know, that doesn't the... actually work. It's not the easiest thing to place them on there and get it in a nice position to prevent players, but you can do it. You can place them there as far as I'm aware. Either way, okay, it's okay. a good way. <laughs> Ink mines are very good for terror control anyway because you can place them on the <laughs> they tower. Are, just... They are. Any player that goes on the tower from that will just get revealed and allow players that are either defending or uh, 
pushing at that time to be able to say, okay, there's a player, we can focus that player, force them away uh, from the tower itself and be able to get back control of the tower ourselves. So it's it, it's very, very much everywhere. Definitely a very, very enjoyable weapon to play too. Um, by the way, we are making more and more progress with this second round right now. Currently waiting for the match between Unstable Connection and Passione, but other than that... We're seeing, we're seeing a lot of progress. If I may show you for a second the schedule of this tournament, actually. So at the moment, taking a quick look, we are ahead of schedule, but just by just a tiny, tiny little bit. Uh, one of the other perks of Swiss stage tournaments is that it is fairly predictable how long a round is going to be. Because of course there are like 20 matches that all are supposed to last three rounds, and so it's basically gonna, like, there's gonna be at least one match where there will actually be three rounds played. And of course, some other teams, the teams that are getting the really, really quick KOs, they know they get to breathe a little bit, they get to drink some water, which, which actually would be nice for me right now. Give me a second. And, and uh, yeah, so the schedule that you're seeing right now is, um, is a somewhat, somewhat decent orientation. I'm, I'm actually proud to, to see how well the tournaments have been so far, as far as like keeping, keeping in the schedule is concerned. And uh, since many people have been asking how long is this tournament overall going to be, usually it's like five and a half hours. So you can it's... expect five and a half hours, five and a half hours of of exceptional Splatoon gameplay. Swiss stage tournaments tend to take a while to complete, mm -hmm. and uh, that's just due to the fact that we need to get uh, we need to get top four teams going for uh, for the entire tournament, and we want to we want to make sure that. Everything is as even as possible as we get out of the Swiss stage. So, just playing through everything—it's a lot of fun, and it's it's great to see how these teams will play. We're getting towards that middle stage of the tournament, uh, going towards round three after our sec, after we wait for this last match to finish up in round two, and just. Just looking at the time schedule for everything, you can, you can guess it's about 35 to 40 minutes. We get those extra time for people to be able to play all, all their games, which should only take about 15 minutes. But we have communication and possible uh, disconnects from teams, so on and so forth, and they need to be resulted. Hence why we have the extra time. Absolutely. Also, I would like to thank Charlie, by the way, who gave a, a three month tier one sub to Gaki, actually. Uh, Gaki being one of the tournament uh, tournament support staff, actually. I mean, at the moment, at the moment, Gaki actually has one of his hands broken, I think, so he couldn't actually uh, be part of the the overlay team. But Gaki is here. Gaki is supporting us mentally, and we love Gaki. So please, please do not forget. <laughs> please do not forget, everybody in chat. You you love you love Gaki, and we all love Gaki. Mhm. Mm By the way. It seems like round two has concluded. So maybe we can take a quick look at how those matches went. Yeah, we can see Incraft Cult had to buy this t this time for uh, round two. Uh, Kiwi and the Cavemen winning 3-0 over Trinity. Uh, Passion winning 2-1 over Unstable Connection. Much closer game. Uh, as we saw on stream of Tacos, Free owing Operation Stars, very close games, very well played by both of those teams. Uh, Dark Sun winning 2-1 over Half English Breakfast, so much more even game there. And we also have a 2-1 in the favor of the Deep Fried Octolings over uh, over the team name that I can never Oomster. pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, then we have uh, Conversion 2. Winning 3-0 over Destiny Troops. Brainlets winning 3-0 over Hardcore Noobs Red. Uh, Pure Divinity winning 3-0 over Squid Party Chat. Incadia winning 2-1 over Hardcore Noobs White. Uh, Fluffy Muffins winning 3-0 over MC Wumis. Fear of Death winning 3-0 over Symphony. Toxic Ice Cone winning 2-1 over R. Arr, 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 uh, arr, 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 arr. Yep. They have they have requested they be pronounced like that. Uh, okay, I'll I'll pronounce I'll pronounce R as R R R R R as we go forward into the channel meme channel <laughs> meme. 
Uh, calling Angels winning 2-1 over Phase 4. Uh, Memento Mori winning 2-1 over Divine Downpour. West Broadway Grillers winning 3-0 over Reunited, as it looks like Reunited have actually dropped, I believe. I'm not, I'm yeah, not entirely have, sure about that. We have that. an even number of teams now. Okay. Unfortunately, Reunited had to drop, but it's what happens. Uh, IPS Sucks winning 3-0 over 60% Fish Punts. Riot winning 3-0 over Radical Dreamers. Vision winning 2-1 over Midnight. System of a Splashdown winning 3-0 over Young Dreamers. And Carnage Gaming winning 3-0 over Metro Misfits. Wow. So, oh. Okay, Metro Misfits is a very, very strong team. So that's that's quite a showing. I mean, a lot of those games there were very even. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm expecting we'll maybe see a little see more even matches as we go forward May more two ones maybe we'll have to see what happens yeah i think so uh, i'd also like to point out or to call out uh the team called ips sucks actually as as mentioned does have ips in them and ips was a member of one of the previous tournament winners actually so that's another team that i would definitely look look out for so at the moment we have ips sucks we have carnage gaming uh both teams not dropping games so far. We have Dark Sun being very strong. So, of course, after two matches, you can't really say too much. But those are those are some names that we might want to look out for in the future. The future being very soon, because round two is over, and I am about to start round three just right, right now. So the teams are getting ready. Where's the button? There we go. There's the button. <laughs> And we are now with 20, 20 new matchups. There are still 40, 40 teams going. So we had we had 33, 30, uh, 40, 43 teams registered. Then I think two weren't able to play, one dropped out. So we're still at 40 teams playing right now. And I imagine we probably have 40 teams throughout the rest of the tournament. Um, I think most of the teams should be should be more stable now. Yeah. Well as we look towards these next games and teams playing into round three um I, i'm very i'm very curious to see how these teams are going to be going forward and <laughs> what sort of uh, team comps and theorize theor theories that they will they will provide us for their for their for their, for their play styles I'm, I'm i'm very curious after all this this tournament we we do theorize a lot here. <laughs> we absolutely do. We gotta get our our scientists uh, cat kind scientist cats and scientist cats. I'm sure every scientist has their own <laughs> their own scientist cat. <laughs> or scientist dog. We don't we don't we don't hate dogs here either. <laughs> true 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 true. <laughs> um, well, by the way, I would also like to to explain. Um, so Hardcore Noobs are actually a German team that has participated in Ink Theory tournaments before. And like so many teams at the moment, they are expanding. We've seen that too with Ultra Squids, for example. Ultra Squids started as just Ultra Squids, and now there's Ultra Squids EU, there's Ultra Squids Ultra. There are a lot of Ultra Squids, and um, yeah, many teams, many competitive teams at the moment are seeing that there is more demand for competitive gameplay. I think there's also been, just yesterday, there has been a new server being opened that is was very, very popular on Twitter for semi-competitive players. Uh, teams are growing, tournaments are growing. I, I am a bit confused because this game has been out for three years and suddenly everything is exploding, but I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's lovely to have tons of people coming in and playing these tournaments and able to have fun, experience, def have different experiences and be able to just show off why they love the game. I mean, I, I mean, it's it's just a lovely game, Splatoon, and I'm I'm so happy that we get such a big competitive scene running and <laughs> have players willing to join uh, our community run tournaments and everything it's it's a lot of fun it's great to see and i would also <laughs> i would also like to find out not just like there are so many tournaments there's actually another tournament happening right now as we speak by run by nintendo so um guys i am officially competing with nintendo right now this is <laughs> this is the new the new nintendo and nintendo's running a turf for uh, tournament at the moment so like even 
<laughs> even like from the from the perspective of a of a tournament organizer, like whenever you run a tournament right now, there are oh actually I just got the message there are four tournaments at the moment going, so uh, never mind. <laughs> There, Whenever you run a, a tournament, tournament, there are so, so many others, and they all have participants. It's amazing. There's there's so much going on in the competitive Splatoon community at the moment, and um, it's it's actually really exciting to see. It used to be very hard to find tournaments to play, and, and now it's just like every day there are tournaments for all different skill classes, for all different play styles. It's amazing. Uh, as, as we get set up into our match, what teams are we playing or watching we are as we go forward? going to watch Young Dreamers versus the Hardcore Noobs White. So if I am, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Young Dreamers is the the baby team of Radical Dreamers, the younger team, and Hardcore Noobs White is the baby team of Hardcore Noobs Red. So we are we're watching the little the little newcomers. That being said, I'm seeing a few names that I know are very strong. So maybe I've got it mixed up. <laughs> Maybe it, maybe they're sister teams rather than younger teams. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see as we go forward here as uh, we get immediately into this first oh, match. Wow. Rainmaker on Madame quickly. Maria. I, I'm i very curious to see what these players are going to pull out. I I love watching I, it, Rainmaker. And Madame this Maria is going to be map. very interesting. This, th this map isn't as backwards and forwards. It's all about that good push uh, as teams go for this uh, aggressive push. See, Young Dreamers. Running Usually the most, the most contested part of this, of a match like this is um, this drop area. The team that makes it down drop usually has um, has the upper hand. Yeah. But right we, now it's first about surviving as everybody's getting started. We can see it. Very interesting team comp coming out from Hardcore Noobs. Oh wait, there's a push! As we can see them running a we can see them running a bamboozler and a blob blobber, so it's a very interesting comp from the run here. As uh, they get the immediate first push, and well, Hakim is doing the first push and then getting punished for immediately. Immediately, Tarzan going for the left side, which can be a very, very sneaky, very strong way to go. Yeah, this this looks like a very, very clean lead as bubbles come out. Oh, does nice force bubbles, Tarzan play this a bit slower? Is he going to be stopped? Oh my gosh, the splash side. Oh, down to 27 already. Right. This is very good for uh, young dreamers. It's hardcore noobs trying to play a slow, trying to get turf. I don't, they I don't know if they now. noticed that player's still there. Oh no, they did. They did. They got the thing. Okay. As uh, hardcore noobs do start to slowly but surely push back forward. They're going to have two specials ready at least. Oh, the splat bomb from the side Ouch. coming from Webster there. Ouch. Does manage to get the pick. Enzyme. That was a very clean wipe for for real dreamers or oh, for might even young take dreamers, the lead so. even further now. That was so 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 strong. And they do have specials. They have ink armor. They're just waiting to push forward. The path is nearly oh. ready, but Crafty only able to take a few more points out of this when when they get splattered by the blob blubber. Oh, they do manage to get a nice armor pop. Ray staying alive. Oh, runs out of ink when throwing that wall. Unfortunate. And a half and there's is the jump out. Reset the Raymaker there. As Everybody's favorite is to reset position that that rail. Mm hmm. Oh my word. It's very interesting. Well, Crafty getting pressured by the Blob Blob does go down. Ray winning that fight out. Has special ready. Does use the rain. Looking to get a push going. As we can see, trying to be sneaky there, but unfortunately, Tarzan misses the wall. Falls into the abyss and ends up just leaving the Raymaker in a bit of an awkward position for Hardcore Noobs. As gets pressured there, Ray not able to deal with this player on the left there. Bomb does oh, pick off that player. Oh, and now Hardcore Noobs Who seems to be their strongest player. Uh, and a half going down. Bubbles coming Wait, out. I'm oh, looks like there's going to be a sneaky push. Crafty was going for that. Oh, that's but all alone though. Oh my gosh, Crafty's all alone. Oh, they did not quite make it. That would have been so nice though, the sneaky push. And I think they had they had a bit of a chance there. Ironically, ironically, um, Young Dreamers also got a bunch of splats at the same time, and therefore Hard Canoes were able to respawn just at the right time. Oh, and a half getting pressure here into the corner. Doesn't really have turf control. Is going to get pressured in by that junior there and gets picked off. Armor coming out. Only only the bamboozler left alive for hardcore noobs as uh, young dreamers starting to pressure here. Luckily, the bamboozler itself a really good painter and also having 
having those fizzy bombs. Uh, so, uh, interestingly, uh, like Hardcore Noob so far, like still has a pretty decent chunk of web control. They are being three down again, though. They get taken down one after or one after one, it. but yet, and and yet you can see how their their map control is actually really good. They have so many good painters in their team. And we can see Webster trying to pressure here. Does a player does get marked by that point sensor there and is going to be able to trade off onto the remake, preventing any push coming forward from Young Dreamers again. Blob pressuring the bomb from Webster does get a pick there onto the bamboozler. Very nice. Just going to be a bomb onto onto the hut there. It's going to be pressuring Webster. Okay, but with only one minute left. So bad position does manage to get the trade. Oh, does manage to get the pick. Again. Sorry, and get out. Oh, fortunate trade there. Young Dreamers yeah, so just trying they, to get pushes. Hard canoes, they need to do, they need to pull something off right now. Like, of course, of course, Young Dreamers, they're probably not even going to go for the KO. They, like, they will be a little bit more careful at the moment, but unless, unless Young Dream, unless Hardcore Noobs are able to, to consolidate their specials, work together, I don't see this working. And now they have the Rainmaker again, which I think might be a little bit unwise picking up already. They're going for the jumper. They're not getting, oh, they did get Crafty there, jumping down. Two down for Young Dreamers. Three down for Young Dreamers. Never mind. Scrap everything that I just said. Oh, but there's still one left. Oh, one player is very, very dangerous. Straight. Now, can the Rainmaker move forward in time? They're going there. They're going there. The bubbles are there. But, oh, my gosh. This might not be... This is not going to be enough for 21. This is not enough for 21. Crafty being taken down. Hardcore noobs have to play this very slow here. Oh, this is very their one and only chance. Lead. They need another splat. They need another splat. They're moving. They're moving. They're moving. No. Oh, no. no. The heavy splatling from Young Dreamers able to clutch out that game and prevent Hardcore Noobs oh. from getting a last second push. That was such a such a close game there. If Tarzan was not in position oh, to prevent wow. to prevent and a half pushing the Raymaker there, that that could have went in favor of Hardcore Noobs White. My gosh, wow. that, that that was well played there by Young by Young Dreamers. My word. Wow, that was <laughs> that was the most amazing new comeback ever. That was so so cool. I honestly I I, I thought that was it for Young Dreamers. I thought okay, Rainmaker Rainmaker has the path open, but then there was the one you see, especially as a backliner, I guess. Um, it, it can be really beneficial to just like sometimes hide hide behind uh hide behind the pole and just wait until until it's your moment to shine. And luckily luckily for Young Dreamers, that is exactly how this ended up playing out. Because otherwise. There was a huge, huge, huge opening for Hardcore Noobs. And now for the next match, we are finally going to see Clam Blitz again, but this time it's going to be on Humpback Pump Track. Interestingly, Humpback Pump Track Clamps seems to be one of the more popular Clamps maps. Um, I'm, I'm a bit surprised because Humpback Pump Track is a bit gimmicky and people tend to not like gimmicky maps, but I mean, I don't, I don't mind it. Humpback Pump Track, hard for Glugas, I have to admit, but it's definitely a very fun map with all of its ups and downs. I mean, Humpback Pump Track in itself, with all of its verticality from the uh, ramps, from that middle hump, as uh, you could say, uh, it just... You could very much say just, so. <laughs> <laughs> it just allows for such different playstyles, and it allows for rollers to be able to... Rollers, for instance, to be able to get in to a safe position below the hump, and then pressure players that are above very easily, keep themselves alive. And if they are above, they're able to... Uh, hit further over uh, with the rollers as well so it's a, it's very it's a very interesting map especially on clan blitz it's such backwards and forwards and it's all about controlling those two choke points that we see uh one directly in front of the basket and then the other on the left we do have the rails as well to be able to get over to the uh other sides and maybe get a flank going as we can see players immediately rush for the middle half of the map I think the and most already, oh, two down already, Hardcore Noobs! Oh, are we doing this again? <laughs> okay. Already, Young Dreamers, pressuring out, managing to wipe Hardcore Noobs. This this could be a very good first push oh my for gosh. Young Dreamers. And then, of course, on this first... map, you can get to the basket incredibly quickly if it's safe. The choke point is very, very, very rough. But if the choke point is safe, you can make it to the enemy basket so, so quick. You can see how close the baskets are to each other. Tarzan just playing forward with the, the dynamo there. Unfortunately, is unable to get picks. But meanwhile, in the middle of the map, trades and distractions are coming forward from brush of uh, hardcore news. But unfortunately, Webster with that jet able to clean picks onto the bamboozler or not bamboozler, sorry, blob lover. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
we see turf control kind of everywhere right now. It looks like it's in favor of hardcore noobs. This could turn around at any moment as specials come out. Rain. Ray coming forward. Oh, nice Unfortunately, nice Karzan going down at a half. And the most curious. Oh, wait, they're three down. Oh, my gosh. Only, only the, the jet sculpture left alive. Curious to see how... Out of half is pressuring. How the blo how the blob blobber and how the oh no of course how the blob blobber and how the uh, roller are going to manage this actually because those are the weapons that I would say are the most the most suited to this particular map like everything where you can use a height advantage is really really good and of course as a as a team it's sometimes hard to adapt to to new maps because of course you have your favorite weapons and all but I think it's the the dynamo and the blob blobber you can see here it's Hazen playing this right now actually um, being Wait, able to very use this well here and there's another spot. bomb getting the pick. Perfect. Going in Young Dreamer's favor as they start to pressure forward and get control of the middle half of the map. Tarzan just pressuring this right hand side with a dynamo, trying to force players away for hardcore oh, nuke to prevent anything coming forward. I think, oh, the, I think there's, a, there's a brush with a lot of clams ready. Oh, and there we go, there's the power clam. Oh. But can they make it to the basket? That's the question. In Three theory, all they need out. is one player, like a brush Landing for example, directly so they can on Hydra. Hydra having to back away a bit, play a bit slow, just looking to get picks, looking to keep turf and support the teammates here as it looks like Hardcore Noobs is setting up to go for a, 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 two a aggressive straight push. They're not looking to flank here. They could maybe get a clean flank as positions right now for Young oh, Dreamers. Okay, very oh, bad no. as we see a flank oh, no, coming in from the squish. It. Push is over. It's not happening. That splish is very clean there, it does manage to get the pick on the Hydra, prevent anything coming forward as Tarzan and the rest of Young Dreamers playing very aggressive here, has the Booyah Bomb ready, just gonna get that power climb in and then use the Booyah. Unfortunately, oh, and the Booyah bomb even is he gonna go down? He does get a trade! Before and there's only down. one brush oh. left! Can the brush save this alone? Oh. No, the brush can't, there's another power climb! Young Dreamers getting a very decent lead, down to 33 points already, are they gonna get any extra clams in? I'm not too sure if they will. No, it looks like they're just going to play this back. They're already picking up that power clam, allowing for uh, another pity clam to appear. And, and at this point, they're... at this point, Hardcore Noobs would need three power clams, three power clams and three normal clams to take this back. So now, now to take this back in one push, they would need a huge, huge, huge offensive. Our young team are slowly reaching the point where they can can deem this somewhat safe. Though, of course, in clams, clams, everything can turn around very, very quickly, but this is this is where things start getting at least a tiny little bit more comfortable. Though, as I say this, uh, two people down for hard control. Oh, I have to for and that, getting the that power climb in. But it's not going to be enough. The brush, the solo brush. Oh no! Look at that map. The solo brush push though usually doesn't get you very far. I think it would have worked out better earlier when the uh, when the backliner when the splatling had that power climb. But right now they were all alone, and oh, Tarzan just keeps getting the picks with this dynamo. That was a very nice flick there. Does manage to pressure out the Hydra. Now they're pressuring forward on this right hand side. They have Booyah Bomb ready. Bubbles coming out in the straight. Oh, we can see out of half is just trying to make a sneaky play with the brush there. Unfortunately, there's no clams for him to be able to make a power climb and get a sneaky. Uh, oh, nice pop. blob. As we say that. And there's another brush, another brush attack. Who's going oh, to throw the clam first? Two splash downs. We have two splash downs. Who's going to throw it in? Oh, neither players are able to get it in, unfortunately. As we can see, both, both teams. Failing on the pushes there, defense from both of those very, very good. So we see no, Young Dreamers. Just 20 seconds and no clam for Hardcore Noobs. They need to form a power clam, but it's still not happening. Eight clams on the side, 10 seconds, they need a power back. clam. Tarzan is jumping somewhere. Has Booyah Bomb ready, it's just going to Booyah Bomb prevent any push coming forward. Do they get a power clam? They do oh, manage the clam, to get a power frame. clam just before the end. Oh, Ray has to on get the blood power clam in. Ray coming forward from Young Dreamers. They're just trying to get stuff going. Ray goes down. Oh, I think this. I think this is going to be it here. Unfortunately, oh, yeah, I don't. No, think... I don't think. I don't think that's safe enough. There's a jumper, but the jumper is so so so. Oh, so unfortunate. As we saw those players just stacked up again and again and again, unable to get the flanks. Hardcore noobs unable to really use their brushes effectively as they wanted to. Is the Dynamo and the Jet Scotch are just constantly shutting down the brushes push. So you can see a 20k coming 20 out from Tarzan. Splats. A 15k coming from Skyro as well. That was very well played by both players. So this time you could actually somewhat see though how the Blob Lubber and how the 
the the Dynamo, how how they were like they did actually use the advantages that they have, like both Tarzan and and the Dynamo on the side and the blah blah on the side of Hardcore Noobs did a really good job adjusting to this particular map. But it's just Tarzan is so 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 strong. And my impression, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, my impression is that Young Dreamers. So I know that Webster, Crafty, and Skyro they are all very strong, but like Tarzan, Tarzan is like uh, he's he's the papa. I, I think he's <laughs> like like the the, the Webster, Webster, Crafty, and Skyros are like more more of the babies in the family, and I think Tarzan he's uh, he he he's got them he's got them on on his back and he's he's ready to fight for his young dreamers. It's a very it's a very interesting description to go for <laughs> to describe the team members of Young Dreamers, but I I guess that's that's a way that you could see that there with Tarzan being. Leading the team forward there with the Dynamo being able to play and get the picks that they need on uh, on Humpback Pump Track. Now as we go forward it's... into Macklemart Splat Zones, I'm very interested to see if they're going to keep running a Dynamo Roller on the side of Young Dreamers or if they're going to switch it up once again and play something completely different. And how Hardcore I... Noobs is going to counter that, are they going to keep with a brush or are they going to switch something else? As they go I've, forward. I've had some I've had some painful splats from, from rollers before on Macklemart, but I think usually I see I see carbon rollers, I see splat rollers way more often on this map. I feel like Dynamo... I don't know, it's a little bit slow. It's a little bit slow to to actually take the advantage on a map like this. I feel like, especially with Tarzan having this responsibility in the team, I feel like he's probably going to go for something else. Maybe a blaster? I, I could imagine him having the flexibility to play that. Maybe... Yeah, maybe a blaster. Maybe even a, a tent umbrella. We haven't seen umbrellas in a while. We'll have, we'll have to see as we go forward into this match what these teams are going to be playing. Blaster okay, is Tarzan a very strong weapon chat. on Tarzan, Tarzan in chat. Me on a blaster. Are you not? Tent up for like question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> oh, of course, Dino. Oh, his main is Explosher. Of course. He's playing Custom his main. Explosher. Okay, of course, of course. Oh, and immediately Young Dreamers. Crafty moving into the zone there does get picked up and it goes immediately into the side of Hardcore Noobs for uh, Turf Control of the zone. But, as I say that, Turf Control goes into the favour of uh, Young Dreamers as Tarzan with that ball over there does pressure into a bad spot for that T-Tech. Unfortunately, not oh, much is going to happen. Even the bubble seem to not quite be happening. Oh, Whoa, players get picked... Players are getting picked off from Hardcore Noobs as Young Dreamers able to just turn around the, the first pick that they lost there. And um, getting turf controls, they pressure this right inside. And Very now of course call. Tarzan is on his on his main weapon, which makes him even even scarier. By the way, the colours at the moment are flipped. We have the Young Dreamers leading at the moment. As we see bubbles oh, coming out. Oh, there's a one one Inject. lonely special. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this works though. It works. Doesn't Two matter players. if it's a lonely special, it's enough. Two players immediately picked off and then the rest are cleaned up for Hardcore Noobs as they manage to pressure in, get the picks onto Young Dreamers and starting to look for a push here as and a half is marked from that point sensor, gonna have to play it a bit slower. Again, picks going in the favour of uh, Hardcore Noobs as they get a pick again, only two Ooh, members like left this. alive. Like yeah, one they player moves into the zone. For a while. And there's one lonely player, Skyro, being taken down. Where's Tarzan? Where's Tarzan? They need Tarzan right now. There's the baller. Oh, and that's the oh. other pick. Another pick. Oh, well, as we say that, zone going in control. That explosion just stealing the zone under the face, Two under the noses again, from Hardcore Noobs. Honestly, I think oh. they might take the lead here. This is looking really well for them. I, I like what I'm seeing. Yeah, Hardcore Noobs playing much better in this map. Playing much more together, able to get pick after pick here. As unfortunately, Ray in a bad position. Bubbles coming out, however. Okay, I want to see coming in. Splash oh, down. I want to see those missiles. Splish as they do take the zone. Oh, the bubbles oh, not really working out for them. And bubbles they do disappear after 12 seconds, and so I think these bubbles, they're probably not really doing a lot oh, this time. Oh, Webster in a bad position. Bit too aggressive there as Ray and uh, the Bamboozler pressure forward and get a pick. Rain, ready, does get a pick onto the splish. This is going to be a rain over the zone and possibly a neutralized zone here as they do pressure this. This <laughs> this junior, unfortunately, the junior goes down. The zone is not quite neutral though, and the penalty is through. They're being down so to close, and yet. Oh, oh Rain goes so down, strong. unfortunately. Oh, this only might be two KO, players. actually. 
They're too dark. Only two players left. Hot canoes are desperate now. They have to do something. There are bubbles, but the bubbles aren't popping. The bubbles can't pop like this. Five left. Two. One. Oh, they were so oh. close. Oh, no. They were trying to get that it in the last frame, but it just didn't work out. That was so close. Hardcore noobs only needed to get one or two picks more. I think there was one player in the zone that was so close to getting picked off there for the side of Young Dreamers. But unfortunately, but fortunately for Young Dreamers, they are able to survive long enough that Hardcore Noobs are unable to cap the zone and make much more of that game. That, that was very well played by Young Dreamers there. It was an amazing game to watch. Wonderful, wonderful game. Was very, very dangerous for them though. I think Hardcore Noobs... Yeah, they just needed they just needed a few more frames to, to take to take that map, and I think they 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 really had a grasp on this on this entire match. They they did a much better job than in the previous two matches where they were fairly consistently outplayed. But this time, even though even though Tarzan was on his main, he was still challenged by the hardcore noobs quite a lot. And so it was it was great to see to see a a, a slightly more challenging interaction there. Because of course, like that's also that's way more satisfying for the for the actual players in in the tournament that they like they actually had to fight. This wasn't just like even though we keep we keep seeing those three O's in this in this tournament so far up until round three, um, like these matches are quite challenging for all for all participants involved. And Tarzan actually saying this was their first win. Let me get, let me yeah. actually take a quick look. Like who have the the young dreamers played against so far? Because I mean that that was a strong team. I want to see. Who, who would the Young Dreamers lose again? Against? Uh, if only I would have an, have an easy, easy way to get that overview. Let's take a look at round two. So who did our heroes? Young Dreamers, they lost against System of a Splashdown. Aha. Uh -huh. And let's take a look at what Hardcore Noobs did. Uh, oh, that's so many teams. <laughs> hardcore, that oh, was they lost against hardcore. Brain Lads. Oh, I yeah, see. And that was Hardcore Noobs White's third loss there. Not having the best tournament so far for the, from the looks of it, but it is it has been very even games so far from what we saw, especially in that match there. That was a very close set to watch. Both teams playing very well. Uh, it's a and bit yes, unfortunate think... for Hardcore Nibs White, but it's the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. And I do think the teams that are losing more matches at the moment, I mean, towards the end, they will all be paired up against one another, and... Um... And then, of course, for them, it will be it will be more even. Though I have to say, like looking at the teams that are a little bit further towards the bottom right now, like they are all pretty strong. I mean, we saw Operation Stars. I know Phase Four, like Hardcore Noobs White team, like they are all so strong. I'm I'm very surprised to see that they lost their matches so far. And I think this is going to be one of those situations where they're going to come back in the later rounds, and they're probably going to have really really good tiebreakers. I think those those teams they just lost against really strong other teams and. With with the power of the tiebreakers, they they like at least in case of Hardcore Noobs White team, I'm fairly sure, and and probably also Phase Four. Like, like I expect them to be in the in the top half. Actually, they're gonna take this back. I'm fairly con confident. Yeah, we'll have to see as we go forward uh, with the last few sets and games of uh, round three. Just waiting on a few teams finishing up now. Uh, I'll just go through the scores that we have so far. Uh, Destiny Troopers winning 3-0 over Radical Dreamers. Uh, MC Wimmies uh, winning 2-1 over Squid Party Chat. Oh, wow. Another okay. close that set. Close. Uh, Metro Misfits winning 3-0 over Symphony. Uh, Midnight winning 3-0 over Calling Angels. Carnage Gaming winning 3-0 over Passion. Uh, not losing a single set so far for Carnage Gaming. Very, very good games from them. Uh, Half English Breakfast winning 2-1 over Unstable Connection. Uh, Hardcore Noobs Red winning 3-0 over Inkcraft Cult. So we could see that uh, the other uh, the other uh, team for Hardcore Noobs uh, gaining some success this round. Oh, yeah, uh, again. Right. I think I actually mixed them up earlier when I, when I <laughs> talked about the previous matches. Well... <laughs> Well, I gotta gotta admit though, their names are kind of similar. They they are very similar team names, and Hardcore Noobs White is unfortunately not won a set so far in the tournament. But maybe that'll turn around as we go into the second half of the Swiss stage. 
Um, again, Young Dreamers winning 3-0 over, 3 over Harker Noobs White. Uh, Divine Downpour winning 3-0 over Phase 4. Uh, Vision winning 2-1 over Fear of Death. RRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRR
one of those teams some people in chat might might recognize. But Riot also has been doing very well so far, so I I hope that this is going to be a a very, very exciting match. So wait, let me start with the roster for Riot. Riot being being custom, Mr. J, Noro, Natubu, and Swazi. So I actually don't fully recognize any of those names, but they again they have been doing really well in the tournament so far. And then I would also I would also like to to introduce half English breakfast to you. Um your meal your meal will be served by BTW Blue. Oh wait, I was I was kind of stuck on the long lobby there. By BTW <laughs> Blue, by Sean Stinney, by Hammy, by Ahmed, and by E10. Bunch so of those, those players are nice. Those are people that are incredibly, incredibly active on on Twitch. Uh, four of them actual, actually streamers. I know that Ahmed is actually streaming at, at this moment. I believe Hami is streaming as well. Oh, awesome, so, awesome, awesome. Yeah, actually, I think my, my channel was actually hosting Hami. No, I think hosting Ahmed, actually. They, we were hosting Ahmed before the tournament started. But it's always lovely to see um, all of those streamers also streaming their own perspective in, in a tournament like this. And you know you get you get to feel the excitement from from so many different sides. Yeah, we'll have to see as we get set up into this match. I'm I'm very curious to see how these players are going to be playing. Like I believe Fami for um, half English breakfast has been practicing the uh, Hydra splatling, so we might see some splatling gameplay coming out from him. And I'm I'm sure um, Ahmed will be playing stuff like the T Tech and ends up things like that going forward into these matches. So I'm very I'm very curious to see how they'll play. And I'm and while I don't really recognize the t team members from Riot, I'm sure that these players are <laughs> are very good considering they're keeping themselves up in the bracket towards the top half. So we'll have to we'll have to see as we go forward setting up into this match sometimes those those names that you don't recognize they can be they can be the scariest and um yeah. like i mean from the perspective as somebody of somebody who's running a tournament um i got to i got to know so many players that i i have never heard of before i started running these tournaments especially i mean baggage both of us are in europe so we oftentimes don't get matched up with us american players for example who therefore are just a little bit unknown to me and well in this case we have the awesome chance of getting to know more people now if only i could also get to know the lobby that our <laughs> next match is going to take place in that would be a fantastic experience okay i i, I have one of the members added i believe I'll... oh really wow okay yes so I am so unlucky with those movies right now. <laughs> it's it's fine, you can join off me. Right. Uh, anyway, let's just go over the maps uh, for our round four. Tower Control on Inkblot Art Academy. Now, we saw Inkblot Art Academy already in the tournament earlier on. Um, so I'm very curious to see uh, what teams will play this time, since it's not Raymaker that we saw. Well, we saw Raymaker earlier, but this is now Tower Control, so it's going to be a much different game. There's checkpoints, lots of choke choke points for players to have to push through. I'm very curious to see how these teams will be able to handle this. Um, be able to push through these, these choke points and get the turf control that they need to win. So... Yeah, Tower Control... Uh, tower Control on... Inkblot Art Academy, I would say that is uh, the the closest, one of the closest map mode combos on Splatoon that it comes to the the infamous uh, Falco only final destination. It is so, <laughs> so vanilla. You've got, you like, there are not a lot of gimmicks. It's just, you've got the two stacks, you've got the tower, and the tower is is moving on a on a safe field. There are no, no rails or anything. It's just... <laughs> It's just straight up gameplay. 
And that also means, of course, that it is very neutral as far as weapons are concerned. Some, like especially the more gimmicky maps, they tend to prefer certain certain weapons, certain playstyles. Whereas the more neutral weapons, uh, the more neutral maps, people can people tend to be able to just play whatever. Like there are some, there are some nice, like particularly nice picks. For example, I tend to see a lot of a lot of eliters or spellscopes on on this map. Uh, just like a tiny little bit more range can be can be useful for the charges. But then, like short yeah. range players, also having a great time. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a bunch of uh, blasters on this map, particularly because uh -huh. the corners are very, very good for Luna blasters and just generally for custom blasters. And I'm very curious to see if either team is going to run a blaster in this one or uh, what, and if they're going to run, as you were saying, that little bit extra range as a spire scope or a um, Elir, for instance. So we'll have to see what happens, what the teams are going to be playing as we get into our first match of this well, set, guys, think about our academy on Terra Control. Everybody get out of bed, breakfast is ready to be served. <laughs> <laughs> and and we see, see. Uh, CDS, CDS are happening, I see. Custom Dually Squelchers, a very mid lane comp actually coming out from uh, Half English Breakfast. As we can see, already member going down the CDS, a bit too aggressive there as uh, Riot cleaning them up, pushing forward and getting this first push to this first checkpoint going. As we can see, two members Ooh, already two down, down, three members down already down for Half English Breakfast. Oh, wait a second, are we... Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit confused right now as far as the colors are concerned. I think the colors are flipped, but Riot... Wow, Riot is, Riot is carrying this at the moment. Oh my gosh, they Riot have so much already... map control too. Riot are getting pick after pick after pick as they're already through the first two checkpoints since they're getting towards this first checkpoint here. You can see. Stingray oh, coming out. Try oh, Ahmed so trying to get a pick on the terror. They're unfortunately unable to get anything. Ahmed managing to get two players. Oh. Oh, but now finally. Finally, Half bit... English Breakfast able to, 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 to stop some of the players in Riot. That was a very strong push from Riot there. Getting through all three checkpoints in that first push. Very strong for them, as we can see players starting to get picks for half English breakfast as Riot again just keeping pressure forward here. Booyah Bomb forced out on that pro. Custom sitting back with this uh, sloshing machine, just trying to pressure here. Chad is currently Using discovering, just as we are, that getting only half a breakfast definitely violates a riot, and the riot indeed is coming here. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Kaliana, for that observation. As we can see, Hami pressuring. Ahmed does try to get that pick, is able to confirm it, but unfortunately, Hami will go down just before the checkpoint. The players from Half English Breakfast are still trying to push through and complete their full breakfast. Unfortunately, is going to go down and unable to get much more of a push going here as Sean Stenny only able to trade off a player, is pressuring that charger, unable to get much though. Does use the armor. I know Sean, he's he's a super, super experienced player in this game. Um, I'm surprised to see him on the Gal, actually. Um, usually, I think he plays a little bit more dynamic weapon, slightly more. Like, you know, your your ends up, your spider shot. Oh, unfortunately, does go down two members, pressuring him at the correct time there, able to get the pick. Is Mr. J starting to play very aggressive into their into half English breakfast, half map, as they start pressuring the, uh, the tower forward. So Jay does going to be the second out. attempt. And this it time they have no checkpoints really to stop them. Yeah, we can see 96 trying to get anything going here, trying to just get a pick on the tower. Unfortunately, unable to get much, but able to get turf oh, control. Oh, looks like they're getting Custom going down. Three members down already for Riot is uh, Half English Breakfast starting to pressure up and get turf control in their favor. Half English really Jump. having that emergency defense down. But now with them also getting three splats against Riot, maybe they can finally finally take this into a better position for them. Oh, nice, nice flag by, by Sean. Can he get the... Oh, he Ooh, does, he does get the, the stoshing machine. Oh, that is that beautiful. Was... That is a really, really um, useful situation to be in. Now, finally, Whoa. an advantageous position for Half English Breakfast. Can they get make it through checkpoint? Oh, you can see that, uh, right, they're coming up from the snipe. But they're not quite safe enough. It's... They're still hiding behind the wall. Playing it safe, getting specials ready. There's the oh, armor coming out. Stingray. Armor advantage to them. Are able to clean up two members, forcing players back for Half English Breakfast. Only two members alive right now for Half English Breakfast. Oh, as we can see, the Dooley's just 
forcing players back here, just trying to distract a bit longer. Unable to get a hit, unfortunately. As uh, Riot cleaning up Mr. J in, but <laughs> in Swamp for, for Seed. For Riot, just, every I'm player sure. so far actually having two digit number of splats. Yeah, we can see. But that doesn't splat. always make for a victory, of course. As we have it seen doesn't in some always, other matches before. But we we can see, however, this is being very beneficial for them as players are just getting forced into third positions. As we can see, 96 going down in that corner. Unfortunately, two members pressuring them out as they start to get through this uh, corner and once more for Riot. Oh, Custom going down, unfortunately. Does only get a trade. Pressure coming forward. There's the Booyah Bomb. Noro trying to get a sneaky pick there with the Charger. Unable to get it. Does have to back up a little bit. Turf control still oh, the in right. is ready though. Oh no! When there's 15 seconds left, and you see that thing. Oh, never mind. Never mind. They're taking down. They're taking down the charger. That is very, very important. Giving them, giving them the chance back. Otherwise, they would have said there is no hope. Yeah, Sean Stenny getting clean picks here, having to use the armor here just to try and push this forward. Only two members left alive, unfortunately, for the side of oh, half English no. breakfast, and they're just gonna get cleaned up as they go and try and get on this tower. Unfortunate for them, Riot playing a very aggressive game, able to just shut down half English breakfast, and it's a very clean first game for them. Absolutely, Riot's definitely playing much stronger than I expected. Um, I kind of switched the scenes a bit early here, but we have the slotting machine with 17 splats, and then even other other members in Riot also having having 16 splats, having 13 splats, very, very strong. Sean Stinney definitely being being one of the the heroes for, of the English breakfast. I think he is actually, he is from England. Um, one of the, the namesakes of this English breakfast. So if I'm not mistaken, I, I know that Sean is English, but assuming that the team, considering the team is called English breakfast, I could imagine that we're having a 50% English composition here. It's entirely possible. Uh, we'll have to see. As we go forward into our second game, uh, Rainmaker Muscle Forge Fitness. I'm expecting to maybe see a bit more come forward from the uh, midline uh, and frontline of uh, Half English Breakfast. I know they were struggling in that last match against Riot, just constantly getting picked out in bad spots. We'll have to see what happens if they're able to uh, turn that around for themselves and get this game going. I'm uh, really scared yeah. for English Breakfast here though, like especially with the slossing machine. Um, the sloshing machines always scare me, and then seeing that there, that Riot had a sloshing machine player that got 17 splats. Oh boy, that got scary. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty cool though seeing Sean on the 96. I mean, the sloshing machine was very strong at being able to pressure that terror there, able to get on it and ride it, and then when uh, the rest of the half English breakfast were trying to push, just able to slosh over the tower itself and just hurt players that are trying to get on it or get away from it and it just allows for such pressure to be put forward we'll have to see if they keep with the machine which they do and to rainmaker as we can see oh, comps, also the this, scope again oh wow this time instead of going with a uh splatter shot pro they're sticking with a cancer splatter shot instead this time for half english breakfast you can see Two members oh, down, for one member down. Oh, oh my gosh, no, don't, not the backliner! Oh, it's a trade, oh. it's a trade. Only one member left alive. Unfortunately, he does have the rain maker. Oh, wow, He's gonna yeah. have to play this very slow. Does <laughs> manage to get all alone there, but doing an excellent job with the Rainmaker. Does also have the map advantage, and that lets him be, be safe until his respa you teammates are respawning. Sometimes in Rainmaker, honestly, like just being able to play the Rainmaker well is an incredibly useful skill. Um, it's a very, very strong weapon. But also, of course, leaves you very vulnerable. And Mr. J um, was was very, very impressive there to be able to survive for such a long time. Oh, look at the sneak! Look at the sneak for a Harvard English Breakfast! Are they going to survive it, though? Oh, it does manage to get a pick on the Rainmaker. We can see the custom duelies behind the members of Riot, forcing them to turn around, trying to deal with this player, as they do keep pressure forward, however. Bumsy ink jetting ahead of the team, allowing for extra pressure onto Half English Breakfast. But unfortunately, Noral going down with the Raymaker, does reset Riot's plans as Half English Breakfast able to hold it at this choke point here in the middle of the map. Map control so far, pretty clear 50-50. Half English Breakfast doing much, much better than in the previous match right now. Oh, but Sean oh. is being taken down. They're no, now two down, Half English. Knight. 
Oh, there's right, another spot, queen spike. Oh, and there's their chance. There's their big chance. They're going right way. Only the Hydra Spatling Life Live is trying to get the pick. Oh, the Hydra really is well, able though. to. Look at the damage, oh, they... and right being three down only. Oh, there's a Stingray though. The Stingray's probably gonna gonna do a lot of damage. I can see the Stingray on mid right now. Stingray being challenged actually got taken down. Oh, So that's a delayed wipe against Riot. So we can see members of Half English Breakfast pressuring forward into the middle of the map. Members a bit split right now from Riot as they're oh, doing nice push though, but Oh, yeah, they need the safe people from the left side to be safe. Luckily, nobody's flanking. Oh, there's one flank. There's one flank. The slotting machine. Oh, no. Getting oh, the double down. splat! Double splat for the only, slot only machine! Only shot left alive! Oh, oh no way! Able to get it past the 46 mark, does go down, and the re the remaining members of Riot are going to push forward, get turret control back in the middle of the map, and look for another push as they start to pressure oh, forward. Oh, that hurts, of course, the one-point meme. It's a very close push there. This, this could go either way, though. We still have two minutes left in the match. This is a much more Teams enjoyable match, and... Uh, of course, I imagine half English breakfast now, knowing that they're on stage, them themselves being streamer who like, I, I know there are a lot of people like looking forward to seeing them perform. Like they want to show us right now that they can they can do better than in the first match. And so far they're doing an excellent job. But of course, so far not having not having achieved the lead. Oh, but look oh, at Sean yeah. just being able to. Oh my gosh, make it make it down into incredibly dangerous positions and still manage to survive. Um, honestly, I would have been splattered three times at least <laughs> had I played like that. But Sean, he just knows how to move. Armor keeping him alive, being able to keep pressure up as we can see Custom was sharking there beside Sean. Uh, does, Custom does go down there with that as Ahmed's gonna pick up the Rainmaker for half English breakfast. Oh, but look at Swazi. Oh, Swazi is incredibly threatening there. Swazi probably gonna catch oh, up soon. Oh, pressuring in from okay. behind. Okay, Swazi going another way though. Oh, now he's, he's coming back. They're coming back. They're coming back. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Rainmaker going down. Swazi does manage to pick off the Rainmaker and the 96 that was in a forward position there, allowing the rest of Riot to push forward. Does manage to clean up another pick onto the Dulies as they pressure forward onto this perch. Hami with the Hydra Spiling, however, able to shut down any push there. Ink Mine marking. The, We've got one minute uh, left now. Marking one of the. Okay, I don't feel like Riot. this push is going to go anywhere, but it, at the moment, honestly, even if they can't expand their lead. It doesn't really matter that much, as long as the Rainmaker... Oh my gosh, that's that though. As long as they can t take the Rainmaker further and further away from their own from their own pedestal. Yeah, and they only have one minute left to push, really. This is a very close game. Half English Breakfast have to get picks going here. And be able Everybody to shut down Riot. the members of Riot. They're gonna let this Rainmaker reset. reset. Rainmaker. Let's get one. Oh, they... One for okay, one. Are... Two for... Breakfast, two down. Two for one. Two down for both. Uh... One back Ahmed liner, trying one to pressure that Charger, unable to get much here, is in a bad spot, does have to back up a bit, gets hit. Starting to pressure Mr. Get the J, who's sharking nice, there, does get the jump nice out. out. Very nice, as we can see, this is looking like a push for half English breakfast as they're starting to play a so Charger's down, this is good for them. They have to I get a pick on the swat. Oh, there's Honestly, still a lot happening. Custom. Now oh, it's, just it's just Hammy and Sean. It's just Hammy and Sean, can they do it alone? Just oh, Hammy this is incredibly dangerous for Hammy. Hammy, can you get the snipe? No, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't. Unfortunate there is Riot able to clean up and barely hold a lead oh, over no. half English breakfast. That was such a close game. Losing Very well by played one both. point. 17 KA from Mr. J. You can see he, oh, he was gosh. putting in work with that ends up there. Much more even uh, KAs across the board for uh, English breakfast. That was a Same. much, much nicer match than what we had in the first in the yeah. first match. This was so, so exciting. I can't now I really can't wait for Clamp Blitz. And I mean of <laughs> course, um Riot Riot now does count as the winner of this interaction. But as as mentioned before, let me actually show you guys the the Swiss system again, the way it works. Is um it is play all three, six rounds, nobody eliminated. And the position in the end is not just decided on who wins and loses. It also depends, like, are you, excuse me, are you winning against a stronger team? Are you winning against weaker teams? Which is also then decided, like, it's decided throughout the tournaments, depending on how you did before. So, like, like there are all sorts of, like, mechanics that work either towards you or against you as the tournament goes on. And then it's also the win-loss ratio of your games. And winning against a strong opponent, of course, is something 
that the algorithm, the, the slightly, slightly anonymous algorithm in the back is going to, to keep in mind in <laughs> how the, the future matches are seeded and how the final result is going to be. So yeah. winning against a team like Riot that is now that has now proven how strong they are, of course, is something that would be very important to have English breakfast. Yeah, we'll have to see and, as we um, get set up this third match with the Clan Blitz Reef. Another repeat map. Again. Yeah, we're now <laughs> we've slowly seen getting to the point where all. we are seeing maps again. Yeah, as Reef Clan Blitz, it's going to be very interesting to see how these teams play. It's a much more middle ground map as uh, teams are looking to pressure in. You can see a Hydra Spatling again coming from the side of Half English Breakfast, but this time we're seeing a Foil Squeezer from Riot. Oh, okay, nice. I think that's a pretty decent choice, actually. Um, squeezer. It has a lot of range, it does a lot of damage. Um, oftentimes considered to be the stronger version of the, the Forge Splattershot Pro with its its extra range with a, a similar damage and a similar um, sh shooting speed. Does Already three desperate. members down. Three members down on half English breakfast. This is looking like it's going to be Ooh, another push for really Riot at the start position. as they've got the most majority of the clams. There's the power climb coming out onto the uh, slosher machine. Just trying to look for turf and pressure forward, trying to avoid these bombs. Has to splash down early, unfortunately. Does want to maybe save that for going forward. We'll have to see. So you just keep turf pressure going. Bubbles coming I'm in. How's going to jump to in? And there's the jump. Jumping in behind and above. Does manage to Oh, and look at how many safe. people are down for half English. That's... A... Oh, they have like no defense at the moment. See the members of And Riot just able to stop all the jumpers. You see Sean, running clams Sean in. jumping in, getting taken up immediately. I'm no, dropping I'm down, just there. trying to pressure forward. Unfortunately, he's out of ink, so has to back up a little bit, wait for the remaining members of the team. Clam, the clams aren't able to keep coming in, however, so this does stop the push coming from Riot, as Half English Breakfast are looking to get set back up and prevent any further pushes coming forward. As we say that, armor coming in, three members of Riot, all pressuring the one member of the Half English Breakfast there, does manage to clean up that pick. Normal in a bad position. Like all does all but... to oh, three down again. And we could see the nice, yeah. no, battle battle between the cancer shots going towards Riot. They're a very, very strong 1v1. And that's case is just literally just aim that matters. And Riot showing that mechanically they definitely have the, the skills to match. As they do open the basket again, Mr. J just trying to keep that open as long as he can. Unfortunately, it does go down. Custom putting in a few extra clams. And Norrell looking to get a few more in. Sneaking in behind them. Is sharking there. Members having to come back for half English breakfast, unfortunately. Not much more is going to happen here, unfortunately, for uh, Riot. But this does give a relief of pressure for half English breakfast as they start to get themselves set back up for a position. And oftentimes after the push, you, usually your team gets wiped. You you push in and uh, like just, just fight as long as you survive and then you just like reset, basically. But this time, of course, Riot able to just to just keep it going, to keep their specials ready, to keep map control. And that's making this considerably yeah. harder for Half English Breakfast, who now oh, is again too down. Pressuring, pressuring that Hydra battling of Pami there and forcing him into bad spots. Looks like this could be going either way here as players are just collecting clams, getting themselves set up, just trying to make a power clam here. We've got two members on this right hand side for Half English Breakfast. Custom just it's trying to get these picks. Incredible danger though. Fortunately, it doesn't look like they're going to get much here. Oh, Both three power specials though. Oh, look at those specials. Three power. Yo. Yo, let's go. Let's go. Can they do it though? There's no map control so far. Nice ink armor. Are they actually oh. going to try to push from there? I don't know. Hydra this, oh my god, Son! Son is struggling! Son is struggling! Son is struggling! <laughs> He's going for the style points now. Much. Does force members back. However, for Riot, but this does oh give Riot gosh. more time to be able to get a power climb of their own, which they do make. And it looks like they're gonna get another push going here. Baskets open. Well, then, usually, honestly, I've never made juggling work in, in an actual match. It always fails, but <laughs> nice, nice to see somebody else try. <laughs> yeah, we can see there, the Riot was immediate. managing to clean up, clean up the members of Half English Breakfast at the end there after opening the basket. 
very unfortunate game for half English breakfast. Unable to get the picks that they need and get the relief of pressure that they needed to get back into the game. Well played to both teams there. It's a bit of a struggle uh, for a half English breakfast in that later game. But we did see in that second game with Rainmaker, both teams were very even. And it could have went either way. We'll have to we'll have to see how well these teams do uh, further into the tournament. Um, but, definitely. Yeah. I also just heard that Radical Dreamers defeated Young Dreamers in an incredibly close match. <laughs> Ooh. So that is another thing that that Chad is very excited about at the moment. Um, <laughs> super super cool to see like all the friends playing playing with each other and everybody having fun. Yeah. We'll and have well, to you see, see like. Riot. We didn't know the players of Riot before. Actually, let me read their names again. Wait a second, because they are now. I guess. They, they, I mean, they are. They are now part part of the friends. <laughs> part of the having having won on stream at at Ink Theory and showed an incredibly incredibly strong performance. So we have Swazi as the captain. Natuwu actually in chat being very excited. We have Noro on the charger. We have Custom on the sloshing machine. And I think Mr. J was playing Anzap. I remember. A very very good job by by Riot. And if yeah. we take a look at... Oh my gosh, they are undefeated at this point. Oh my word. Riot and Carnage Gaming being the top teams right now. Going out of round four. Both having won all of their games so far. All of their sets, at least. Have to look further into seeing if they have managed to win all of their games as well. But... Just looking for the results so far for round four. Symphony winning 2-1 over MC Wimmies. Metro Misfits winning 3-0 over Dark Sun. Uh, oh, wow. Operation Stars winning 3-0 over Squid Party Chat. Hardcore Noobs Red winning 2-1 over Incadia. Hardcore Noobs White managing to win 3-0 over Phase 4. Uh, Carnage Gaming winning 3-0 over IPS Sucks. So that's, that's a also very... A that, that was one of the two uh, close top teams from the end of uh, round three. So going into round four, them matching up against each other. Do start to see Carnage Gaming perform much better and in a better position to uh, take that top spot so far. We'll have to see. Um, the Deep Fried Octolings winning 3-0 over Incraft Cult. Uh, Conversion 2 winning... 3 over Unstable Connection. Uh, Divine Downpour 1-2-1 over Calling Angels, but I believe that Divine Downpour has uh, dropped from the tournament, unfortunately. They have, they have. So, so we're back to an even number of teams. <laughs> not quite able to finish the tournament from them. That's a bit unfortunate, but tim timings and things do happen. So... Uh, Going for the rest of the results, uh, Fear of Death winning 3-0 over Toxic Ice Cones. Uh, Fluffy Muffins winning 3-0 over Tacos. Uh, West Broadway Grillers winning 2-1 over Trinity. Kiwi and the Cavemen winning 3-0 over Pure Divinity. As you were saying earlier, Radical Dreamers winning 2-1 over Young Dreamers. That match being a very close set from what we have heard. Uh, Riot, on stream, winning 3-0 over Half English Breakfast. Well played to them. Uh, Midnight winning 2-1 over Memento Mori. And RRRRR winning 2-1 over System of a Splashdown. So more and more uh, we're seeing 2-1 results. Things are, things are getting very, very close. And only two teams so far being undefeated. Which honestly, like for a tournament with uh, 40 teams... I am um, I am surprised how close this is is getting. Like every team, except for four teams so far. So we have we have 30, 36 teams that have been able to win or lose a, a match. So they're all finding even matches here. Which, of course, for from the perspective from the perspective of a tournament organizer, that is exactly what you would want. That all the teams that are participating actually are able to have a good time and don't just like either get crushed in every match or just rush through everything. Because I mean that's no fun. And um, I, I believe every team has finished the <laughs> round now. Uh, oh wow! Just just quickly skimming over everything. Uh, I the team I can't pronounce their name of mm, uh, winning two one. Defeating fish puns. <laughs> yeah, they, they won two one over fish puns. 
Uh, I believe another team I didn't read out was Destiny Troops winning 3-0 over Passion. Uh, I believe I read out a majority of the other ones. Uh, yeah, Brainlets you did, you did. winning 2-1 over Vision. I don't think I read that one out. That's also very relevant, actually, because Brainlets, um, they have been among the, the undefeated teams. Actually, I think, wait a second, I think they are an undefeated team now. I think my numbers... They my numbers are, are up to date. They're currently an undefeated team. They did have a bye during one of the earlier rounds oh, when I the see, teams were I uneven. See. That's why. Okay. Okay. So we'll have to we'll have to see how they perform going through the rest of the bracket. They might be able to uh, pull ahead, manage to beat Carnage Gaming at some point. Who knows? We'll have to see as we go into round five and six as we get the deciding teams for the top four cut. So at the moment. Carnage Gaming, Riot, IPS sucks, Brainlets. They are looking they're looking at uh looking at that top four cuts. Metro Misfits still there, Kiwi and the Caveman I would look out for. Conversion and Fear of Death, those are two names. That like I don't really I can't really associate with any teams at the moment with any players. But um they are also still still contenders for this. Keep in mind this is just the top four. We have 40 teams playing and they're all they're all trying to sneak into this teensy tiny little top four card. It's very, very small. You could even say it is too small. Um I was very overwhelmed by how many teams are actually playing this tournament. Um usually it's it's considerably less, so suddenly suddenly you have so 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 many teams teams clamoring to to make it into the group of, of the best four. And that, of course, means that the next rounds, round five and round six, especially in this in this teeny tiny tiny area, is going to be more and more relevant. So we just saw for for Riot, um, we had half English breakfast having a chance there to kick out Riot out of their chance to make it to make it into the safer area. Um, but having been half English breakfast, having been defeated there, so um one one contender that riot does not have to worry about as much anymore but there are still there are still 39 others left that yeah, we'll, we'll see whether see. or not they will be able to defeat yeah we'll have to see as we go forward towards round five as we start to get set up with everything i hope chat is enjoying the tournament so far everyone's having a good time and again thank you to all the staff members and uh, artists that are willing to put in their time and help with the tournament itself. We appreciate it. We appreciate you guys providing uh, the prizes as well. And ev everything, just, we appreciate you guys in the chat being here as well and showing your excitement for <laughs> for the tournament today. Okay, I'm seeing some very, very decisive matches here. We have both Brainlets versus Conversion 2 and Metro Misfits versus Fear of Death. Both of those both of those are incredibly, incredibly important as far as making it into top four is concerned. Let me quickly... Oh, yeah, they're all... They all have 301. Well, Brainless, uh, Brainless currently is undefeated. So Vision having a chance here to take them to take them down. But then Metro Misfits versus Fear of Death. Whoever is losing that match won't be able to make it into top four anymore. And whoever is winning is, is having a, another chance. It's... Uh, a necessity at that point, so I think Metro Misfits versus Fear of Death is probably going to be an incredibly, incredibly exciting match. Super, super high level gameplay. Very, very important match as far as making it into top four is concerned. And keep in mind, this time the prices are as high as they have have never been. Um, maybe if you might, uh, Baggers, if you might again <laughs> take again yeah. a look at the prices with the with the audience. Well, the prizes for this month's Ink Theory include several art prizes from our wonderful artists that have volunteered to put in their time and effort to draw uh, draw different pieces of art for uh, different teams. For the, for the top three teams of the tournament, they all get uh, team drawings for their, uh, their in-game avatars, while for the for randomly chosen players, We'll have uh, two chibis and two bust drawings drawn by Nathan and uh, Six. So I'm sure you guys will enjoy those. Uh, we also have for the top three teams $175 total split between the teams being given out to a charity of their choice. So that's, this could be uh, relief uh, charities, uh, I'm try just trying to think of other charity names. It's been a while since I've done anything charity-wise. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair, uh, that's fair. So, yeah. 
So there, but yeah, it's a it's like with it's all for a good with, cause. Absolutely, and with those numbers, like with a hundred dollars, you can do so much. And oh, and of course there are there are so so many charities that that appreciate it. But also, um, please, 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 guys, guys, take a look at the wonderful artwork. And I would like to actually wait a second. I'm gonna switch back to the the coming up scene because what you can also see is um, their their Twitter accounts, guys. You know, you know, artists with their Twitter. Um, you better follow them. You guys, guys. There's so much. There is so much bad stuff happening on Twitter. If you want your Twitter to look a little bit happier, guys, follow artists. That's my my life advice, guys. To improve your life quality is follow all the artists on Twitter. So here we have it. Lonely Day 17, Six Angmaru, and Nathan sent by Ubu. Um, then Adorable Weapon of Doom, she's actually on Twitch. So I I entered her, her Twitch account as the, the recommended way to follow. Yeah, you guys should go check out the artists. They put in a free time to uh, show or to make the art for our players and for the lovely members in our tournament. We really appreciate them coming in, and you guys should go follow them and see what other art they post about. Because I'm sure they do lots of lovely stuff. Uh, as we get started into round five, uh, we're getting set up for this i do believe we yes i'm uh i'm currently again trying to find the the lobby uh the, so the, the way the it lobby usually works where... is that the uh pun uh, the uh. way it usually works is that um the teams the team captains they basically they sent me a friend request Um, oh, and then I accept them all. This. As we get us up into round five, our teams that we're going to be playing and watching this set are Metro Misfits versus Fear of Death. So this is going to be an interesting match to see. This is about the middle of the pack, I believe. Both of these teams from the last round. Uh, Metro Misfits and Fear of Death towards the, towards the top half of the pack, sorry. These teams are very much in a chance to pull off into the top four and make it through the uh, top cup. We'll have to see which of these teams will win and be able to, to to make their chances better at getting into top four. So we'll have to see as we go through round five. Oh wow, now I just accidentally opened an online loss. Oh no, oh no, Nintendo Switch Online online loss. I <laughs> no, I'm not gonna oh, do no. voice chat with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you ever done that using the, the the app to do voice chat? Oh I have used the app to do voice chat and it is delayed. It's not <laughs> it's not the oh, greatest no. thing. But it's 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 useful for people that are not quite able to use things like Discord or anything like that. It's a bit easier as well because it just allows them to set it up it an official way through Nintendo, which is always nice. I've heard people say that um, it's actually quite neat for Mario Kart. Yeah, for Mario Kart it'll be especially good because it allows everyone that's in the lobby to just play and be able to listen to each other, so we'll just have to see. Uh, as we get into the lobby with these players, I'm very curious to see what Metro Misfits will put out this time. I know they've not had as successful a tournament. I say as successful, they've not been in the dead top of the tournament this entire time, but we'll have to see as they go forward. Uh, they had a recognizable pretty rough members. Time last tournament. Yeah. But I think I think things are getting getting better for them. They've clearly they they have shown that they are they are still working hard on on improving their skill and um, that they are still contenders for for top four in this. In, in this tournament. Um, as far as the players are concerned, so we see Benny is there, we have Mirren, we have Mevlin, we also have Gary. I actually haven't seen, I haven't seen Gary before in a tournament. And then we have Ame. So we know our usual suspects, uh, Benny, Mev, Mirren and Ame. And then Gary, our, our new contender. Oh wow, and they're already yeah. ready, so. We'll have to we see, see a spear play. Death for both teams ready to go straight out, straight into Splat Zones and Starfish main stage. We saw this earlier going in the favor of um, 
Otakos, I believe, was the uh, match that we saw. So we'll have to see which team comes out ahead in this match. As we can see, Benny running his Firefin Splat Charger, and of course, Mavlin running the, uh, the Nautilus Splat. Of course, of course. Yeah, he's, he's we... really, really even enjoying the Nautilus lately. We can see another oh, interesting but then we also have a... coming, coming forward a from the other side. A Tristar and Splatling. Oh, that looks fun. Plus That's a really a... fun comp. Plus a, a Vanilla of Bamboozler. Vanilla Bamboozler, H3, Ballpoint, Splatling, Tristar. This is a very unconventional team comp. I'm wondering how well this will work for Fear of Death. You can see... Oh, nice splash. Already Metro getting Misfits. sniped immediately. Yeah, Metro Misfits already pressuring in. Gang picks one after the other. Only three members left alive on both sides. Tri-Slosher has his armor ready, just trying to get into a sneaky position, maybe get a flank as we can see him going around. Behind the members, the rest of the members of Fear of Death are setting up, they use their armor, go in and there's two picks down already on the side, three picks down already oh, on the wow. side okay, of Metro Metro Misfits. Misfits. In big danger now. This is the first, the very... first potential big push for Fear of Death. That was so very they're, now, they're now getting started push. trying to take map control and everything. Trying to see where where is Metro Misfits coming from. They gotta find out which which side of the map do they have to defend the most. Now Ink Armor for, for this push. Oh, and there Ink goes Metro the Inkjet. Inkjet. 2v2. Bomb Rush coming forward for the side of Metro Misfits as Fear Death are just trying to hold this zone. Looks like they're gonna be successful at least holding this right now as Shio is just pressuring forward with this ball point and the H3 from Mas Mashimo is. Wow, uh, nice snipe. Gonna get stuff. <laughs> Benny, very clean. Right now, oh, we're gonna get another oh my pick. Gosh, Only the bamboos are left alive, however. I also really, so. really like seeing how, what, like Benny, Benny, Benny realized that he was in danger after his teammates were were being were, were in trouble, and so he immediately went back, went to a safer position, and then got his snipes from there, and had had a really, really good time getting this this double snipe, and therefore being able to take back the zone with his team. And now, fear of yep. death, they're down by two players, so they are now in the situation that they. They put Metro Misfits in before, and it seems like Metro Misfits will indeed be able to get the lead here. Oh, Mavelin trying to deal with one of the flankers as the Triflosh is flanking once again, putting pressure onto Benny. The charger there is just allows the rest of Fear of Death to get the zone. In a bit of an awkward position here, W. Unfortunately, it does go down to Jerry with the 96 gal. Armor coming out. Looks like this is going to be an aggressive push for the side of Metro Misfits. As they look to get the zone control back. At the moment we're having a 4v4 double here. Defended by the rain in the middle of the map. Rain being a very, very strong strong special on this map in particular. It looks like Metro Misfits are gonna back off, wait a moment, get their specials ready and then go in again. As we can see, there it is. Pick onto the tri slosher trying to flank again. Unfortunately, Mevlin does go down with that. Splashdown comes forward. Metro Misfits confirm the cap of the zone. Well, it looks like they're getting flanked by H3. Jerry turning around to try and deal with this. Norse is in. Oh my gosh, yeah, the flanks on this map are crazy. <laughs> this map, of course, you always... Like, if you see if you see players on this map kind of kind of being awkward towards the sides of this map, it's because you always have to be... There we go again. We always have to be careful if somebody is flanking over the side. And you could see, for example, here, we've got the splatling making sure that the tri isn't able to stop. Oh, and the Fear of Death is now down by three people. Whereas Metro Misfits no. having two specialists ready. Which of course is exactly the kind of situation they want to see themselves into. In only the H3 left alive. Rush. Looks like they're gonna have an armor ready before this push starts. But Benny already bomb rushing, just trying to keep the entire E of Fear of Death back and allow them to get the penalty down very quickly. You can see a tri slosher flanking Jerry, unable to get the pick on him, does go down. Benny having to play this so slow and back right now. Oh, Metro is just being able to keep the zone thanks to this. Oh my gosh, Benny! <laughs> Benny with the front line snipe. Benny managing to avoid detection from the tri Ooh, is that going to be the KO snipe, but the zone is still Metro Misfits. Be able to take it. They're not Metro Misfits what? winning the game. I I don't know what happened there. Metro Misfits just kept the zone alive long enough, and I don't know if Fear of Death's members just weren't paying attention to the timer or what. But that just they were <laughs> just kind of able to to keep out the 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 H three. And just, just that, like I, I don't know, like get them into into danger. I don't fully, I don't fully know where where people were in this one either. Metro Misfits just pick after pick going in their favor, and at the end, I think it just their presence themselves was able to keep pressure onto the members of uh, of Fear of Death. So Metro Misfits Met were able to just 
pre prevent them from paying attention to the zone and those walls, especially from Danny. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not too. I believe it was an armored 96, if not a splashdown 96. I wasn't paying too much attention to that. Uh, if it, it was, was an armor, if it I was think. the splashdown. If, uh, the well, the splashdown yeah. was the sloshing machine by Mirren. Okay, so Mir Mirren playing with the sloshing machine. It was it was good enough that they kept it distracted anyway, and they were able to prevent the players from getting much of the turf on the zone and able to keep it long enough that it could KO for them. It was a very close game and a very very unfortunate collapse from the coordination of fear of death but that was that was close it was a very good plays by both teams as w as we could see just holding w around those corners able to get those flanks mm -hmm. consistently but it's not enough for their team and so they're gonna have to play this back and i'm very curious to see what they're gonna run here in terror control hunt back pump track yeah we're going to see wait a second oh i'm i need to press a um <laughs> <laughs> we are, we're probably in this round, we're going to see considerably, considerably closer matches with both of those teams being so, so close. And that's just what happens in Swiss stages as the, the rounds progress, is that things will be much tighter. We're seeing very similar weapons. This time we have Glugos, but other than that, I'm seeing mostly the same. Benny switched to a non-scope charger this time. Non-scoped, not a fire fin. Very interesting choice. Very good choice as well for humpback on track. Very midline comp, not favoring a backliner for the side of fear of death. They're on this H3. Armor already popped from the tri slosher. Gonna be another armor coming out from Mas Massimo now. As they look to get control as two member three members are Metro down on Metro down. Misfits. Oh and that's a wipe! Mav was all alone there, being in a very awkward Here spot. Fear of death. Oh, already it seems like Metro is Metro see. feeding. You could They're see to come back three in, but members. Not safe. <laughs> and there's the next armor course. coming out. This is very aggressive, and we can see another armor is being ready by Massimo. He's going to use it there and keep the armor okay, alive. Very, very, very out of corner. Map of trying to make it. Mav, Mav can't make it though through the side. There was a very, very out of corner there, like kind of behind the overlay. And we so can Metro see the is still being down by two. We can see well, the no, coordination like, like, coming out from. Fear of death here is very strong, and this is just preventing Metro Misfits from getting much as another armor is coming out there, just constantly chugging them out and preventing players from getting much here. As it's a two for two right now, Massimo and uh, the Galugas Shio having to play this a bit backwards now. Do ride the tower oh, forward, still keeping it in their favor. Beyond the tower, I th I'm not. I'm not quite sure if the tower is, is safe again, but them getting to 19, of course, is a is a very impressive feat. Benny will now have to get. Very crucial snipes. But I think so far, I think Metro Misfits have mostly fended off this push for the time being. Yeah, we can see. But not by mm. not by taking down Fear of Death in a wipe or anything, but just in an in an incredibly slow interaction by being able to resist. But of course that means that Fear of Death they will be able to to come back very, very soon. And as we see, we have a, a 2v2 situation right now, two specials from Metro Misfits. Yeah, we can see very, very good plays being made here by Fear of Death. Just keeping that tower forward and putting pressure consistently onto Metro Mistress. As we say that, Shield getting the snipe onto Mevlin using that inkjet. Very well played. Got to start right in the tower. It's only really three members alive right now. Forward for Metro Mistress. Special is coming out yeah. again. Another armor for oh, the same. Look side at with this really, really threatening sniper position. Yeah. So it's coming oh, out. But I like turf how control is... always does reels at the exact right time. Yeah, turf control is so is so vital here for uh, fear of death. Is there such a close line, close comp that they're able to just keep putting pressure in? And is this KO? It looks like they're through the last checkpoint. And... Oh, this looks KO. This is yeah. KO. Okay that, then. That was such a good push and such good aggression from fear of death they do not want to lose this match against metro for misfits and you can clearly see that from the way that they played there and how aggressive they were onto metro misfits and you can see the double armor oh, being very aggressive you can too. see wow. a total of 11 armors coming out from the site of fear of death they were just spamming them out being very very aggressive and it worked out so well for them that's i guess with a name great. like fear of death you will. You probably have pretty good, pretty good defense. Then you, you better be ready with that. And um, well, this is finally, finally, baggage for the first time in this tournament today. We are not gonna see a 3-0. We've had some few. We've had some some close matches before, 
But now this time is our, our first legitimate 2-1. Two on, two on. And I want to remind you, Baggage, and everybody in the audience again, um, whatever team is going to lose this match is probably not going to be able to make it to the top four cut. If the, the team that wins is getting, is getting closer, I wouldn't say guaranteed, but it's getting closer. But you really do not, like, since all of those teams have aspiration to make it to top cut, you really do not want to lose this match. This is, this is a lot of, a lot of pressure. This is kind of like, like, you know, when you're an extra and you have a minus 30 match, you know, okay, if I win, if I yeah. win, it's nice, but I really, really, really must not lose this match. And that's what both Fear of Death and Metro Misfits are in right now. Um, they're readying up incredibly quickly, actually, uh, because we're already getting started with Rainmaker on Piranha Pit. This is a much more open and wide variation of uh, Piranha Pit, as we can see the spawns are slightly different for Rainmaker, and this is deliberate. Uh, we'll see what happens from these teams. We can see much more conveyors, as you can see from this top-down view. The Rainmaker sitting on a little podium in the middle of the map. These team comps are very interesting to see. We're going to see a Jet Sculpture coming out for the side of Metro Misfits this time, and immediately a Ray coming from him right now, and then an Armor. They want to push here. They want to make sure that they can force the members away for uh, Fear of Death, but Armor coming in, saving members. Jerry having to play is a bit slow since he's a bit weak. Is uh, working together. Mevlin does go down, unfortunately. Two members for uh, Fear of Death push forward. Managed to get a pick onto... Jerry, um, this is going to be a first push going in favor of Fear of Death. Okay, which Desert. which part are they going to be able to take? Desert they make it to the, the right to the one behind, then they will. Okay, they're taking the slower belt, but they're making it down to 25. It's a very good push, getting it all the way up to the top of the conveyor belt there is very nice for them. Unfortunately, it's only one Best member left already, alive. Yeah, the H3 last member alive for Fear of Death. It's going to play it back. Wait for the team. Use the armor now, and, and start pressing it forward. You can see Mevlin just sharking, weighing. Does get marked out by that, uh, by that, uh, ink mine, unfortunately. It's just gonna pressure and, yeah, these members course, in the corner. I, does manage to trade! As Very a sharking nice. player, get you really, you, you actually, like, like, point sensors, point sensors can be really, really cruel if you're a sharking member. Um, if you're a shocking player, of course you always like in a tournament. Those this point sensor effect is not quite as strong because of course you always have the call, call out. But there's still like in any <laughs> any any kind of situation where you want to be sharky and for Nautilus in particular, that's like one of their one of their main strengths. Being pointed out like that by a point sensor or an ink mine, um, it can really change up the way you have to move. Yeah, but you see turf <laughs> control nice right now is on the map. very e yeah, turf control is very even right now for both teams. Fear Death is just looking to try and get some picks here, get this middle of the map and go forward. There is a trade from both sides. Here as the Rainmaker resets. Mevlin starting pressure forward, trying to get any pick they can. Massimo sitting by this left there. The H3. By the cushion. Tries to pick off that 96 gal there. Unable to get much. You see on the right conveyor, Mevlin. Moving forward. Does fall her. Oh, Two nice members night. down on the side of Fear of Death. This could be a push. Oh, Fear of Death. Three. Yeah, yeah, they're three down. They're three down. Sorry, I just. Metro Misfits. <laughs> I just noticed. Bubbles coming out and the from bubbles w can't save it. Now the the foil is also down. Benny's going they do. They're going to go for the rail this time and get as oh, much wow. of it as they can. Oh wow! What an unusual thing. But he still needs to get further. Oh, the ink is there. The ink is there. He does it. He does it. He does it. Benny in huge danger. Benny took it to down 13. Thing. Fear of death. Three down, down still. This might continue. This is not over. Oh, W gets this the pick on the over. Trying to get the pick on the 96. Does get it. That is okay, a complete and here we go. point onto the side of Metro Misfits. Fear of death. Managing to hang on and prevent any. Further pushes coming from uh, Metro Misfits there. Gonna play in a very aggressive position here for W. Has the bubbles ready, just trying to look and get some sneaky picks. Does notice the K Pro here is gonna bubble, try and fight here. Unfortunately, goes down the bomb from Miran. Very well played. Two versus two. One versus two now. She was the last member alive for Fear of Death. And it's gonna be looking like Metro Misfits are gonna keep pressure up here. Yeah, that means Metro Misfits, they're probably gonna go again. Oh, and as we say that, 96 going down for Metro Misfits. Jerry, unfortunately, got caught out by the and gets directed. Shio. Oh. We'll have to see what happens. Are they going to pick it up? They do, they do. Fear of Death. Playing aggressive here. Okay, it looks like they're going to take it out again. It does look like this is going to be a preventive push here for, for the side of Fear of Death. Metro Misfits, hold on. Benny playing this very slow. 
trying to keep the turf. Make sure the rail is there. There's only two members alive right now. Forward for uh, Metro Misfits. I like Benny's safe in position though. Favor of your death. Oh, and as we say that, <laughs> pick coming up for Benny as he does trade off to Shield with the Raymaker. Desert winging the flank on the swipe down side is managing pressure players. Very, very well played there. Mevlin gonna get the pick with that baller there. Very well played. Gets the Glugos. Baller. That's a lot of trade so far. Wulpex now pushing forward. This is a little bit of desperation with Wulpex and the and the bubbles, but they're not picking oh. up the Rainmaker. Oh, that looks a bit Rainmaker like a coordination resetting. mishap. Resetting. That, they're that pushing with the bubbles, there. but they're not picking it up. Which, to be if, fair, I mean, they weren't exactly safe, but I mean, if the bubbles are there, it's not like they're going to have 10 more chances. It's just 20 seconds. And there's no more match after this. Play. If, if Mathlon misses in this, it's over for View of Death. They're going to have another match. They're not going to get the pick on Mevlin here. Mevlin's just playing so aggressive on the shield. Has to get the pick here. For ben and they're forever. not getting it. That's, That's going to be it. Metro Misfits keeping their dream alive and making it into the top four as they manage to shut down Fear of Death and prevent them from getting further into the tournament. Such a good last game. Wow. Well wow. played by both teams there. Such Welcome to late stage, late stage <laughs> Swiss rounds. Here we go. Yeah, Mev Mevlin with the 15k keeping the dream alive for Metro Misfits. That was well played Beautiful. by him. And that, that push down to 13 points, my word. Such a close game for both teams. So far, like whenever we've spectated Metro Misfits matches, like they always, those matches are always the best. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, Metro Misfits, they, they got to start streaming. I feel like their perspective must be, must be really fascinating. And they're all, they're actually all really, really nice people. Very warm, very, very like kind young people who have a lot of fun playing Splatoon. They're all very, very untoxic, just super, super enjoyable people all together. And it's always, always great to to see them win and to see them fight against wonderful teams like Fear of Death, who, for example, so Vulpex, Vulpex just popped out in chat and said, Vulpex is actually the player, player called W, so some of you guys might actually recognize them from, from my stream. Hi, hi, Vulpex. Good job, everybody, from, from both of those teams. And um, it seems like many of the other matches are actually still going on. This is, uh, this is a way, way, way more fought, fought for round compared to the other ones. Like, a, like 50% of the matches still going on. I'm seeing a lot of 1-1s at the moment. A lot of really close matches. Yeah, I mean, my my biggest concern is who is currently the top spot? I'm looking for the results. It looks like Carnage Gaming managed to beat Riot and confirm their spot in the top four. But the, it's Winning. a 2-1. This is... This is this is not over. Like Carnage Gaming, you know, like it's the sponsor team in this tournament, so they are of course the huge, huge favorites. But they we'll lost the game against Riot. We'll have to see what happens going forward because they did manage to lose that game against Riot, and Riot are still in the top spot. They need to. A lot of the teams that are currently with four wins are gonna have to win this last match to to even confirm their chances at getting into the top uh, four for this tournament. Uh, looking at through the results so far, as you were saying, a lot of teams were 1-1 right now uh, in the results that have been posted. We're currently weighing on, oh, as, as I was saying that, as I was about to say their name, we're currently waiting on uh, the results from Brainlets, as they're a team that has been very even throughout the sets as well, and they've not lost a single set either from what they've been able to play with one of their buy rounds earlier. They've managed to, or not, have they had a buy round? I don't think they've had a buy round. Have they? I'm very confused. But it looks Wait, like Brainlets you... managed to win all of their matches as well, and it looks like it's going to be between Brainlets and Carnage Gaming for the top spot now. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm a bit confused. I'm gonna like, well, let me quickly go through the through the names here. Like, it seems like our overlay, uh, not the overlay, sorry, our numbers aren't aren't updating as as quickly as I would like them to. Because I don't mm. see them, I don't see them having a BYE there. I, I don't know. Maybe we just thought they had a buy earlier and we didn't see that. Uh, but they are currently 5-0 in the bracket as well. Um. So just coming out of nowhere, winning all of their uh, all of their games, yeah, they, they must have been everything. a hidden team. Absolutely. So must I just have been a hidden oh here we go. Now it shows us 5-0 for me too. Sorry, it's just it's just uh, like battle fight sometimes needs a second to actually update update the results. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go for the results that we do have right now. 
Uh, Otakos winning 2-1 over uh, McWimmies. Uh, phase 4 having the bye for the round. Uh, Brainlets winning 3-0 over Conversion 2. Uh, Symphony winning 2-1 over Half English Breakfast. Uh, Radical Dreamers winning 3-0 over uh, the team that I cannot pronounce. This is what they're going to Yep. Yep. RRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRRR
A stable connection and no tacos. <laughs> Making the uh, bomb. Ha. Huh. Exactly. Oh my word. Um, so, I would also, since it is mentioned so much in chat, maybe <laughs> everybody who's watching chat right now is probably intensely confused. Let me actually, let me take this second to explain what is up with R R R R R R R R R R R. So, uh, that is actually a team that is, it's it's a half pickup team, it's half Octarian Rhapsody, half pickup. Um, so most players of Octarian Rhapsody are actually not able to play this time. Um, I, because I happen to be running a tournament on the same day, I don't know, don't know what this is about, but I apparently cannot play today. So that's a thing. Falco, <laughs> Falco, another member of Octarian Rhapsody, happens to be playing in, in sad, uh, sorry, happens to be in the support staff for that tournament, actually. And so we have Blue and Lara from Octarian Rhapsody. And then we have Hakan. We have Hakan, Darkness and Lilith who some of you guys might know from from my community. They're actually really, really active. Um, those of you who take part in the afterstream parties, they know them. And they are they're doing really well. Uh, position 15 right now. And yeah, the channel meme is just... Um, I tend to laugh sometimes over how, how some... Like, there are some streams that manage to... Like have their entire stream just be be uh, cheer spam, and that's the entire stream. And I kind of envy them because um, you're just sitting there as a streamer and the enjoy and like waiting for the money to come in, and then people are just using the r r r r r r r r r cheers <laughs> as their own entertainment. And um, I always find that quite funny how the chat is just entertaining themselves sometimes in some streams. And uh, yeah, that's when my chat decided. You know what, Snowpoke? Why not? Why don't if you if you're envying them anyways? Why don't you just join the, the group of those streamers? And then everybody cheered for my channel, and uh, we had like ten minutes of of ra 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 ra. And I hope that will never happen again. But here we are. So then, I think we are. We're looking to get toward... into this lobby for our match. Exactly. Again, thank you to all the staff members, uh, commentators, and artists that are willing to put their time in and run this tournament with us. It's a lot of fun. We really, really can't thank you guys enough for uh, helping us out here. <laughs> it's this tournament wouldn't be possible without you, the the chat, and without everyone uh, running it in the background. So again, thank you to all the staff members for helping us run this, and to you guys, the chat, for coming and watching us run a tournament. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's 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 really really cool. How like I just posted this thing on Twitter, being like, hey, does anybody want to help with the tournament? And then so, so many people actually, like, are now willing to spend their time. And I mean, it's not just the time in this tournament right now. Like, there was a lot of planning beforehand that, that happened. Um, the people that are doing the overlays, they had to get actual, like, training. We had, like, training sessions and everything. And there are manuals and stuff to make sure that everything works out. Like, there is one person who just, like, communicates with the teams to make sure that they open their lobbies and stuff when I want to stream them. And then there is Witty who is sending out who is sending out pings to everybody to make sure that everybody knows how the rounds are going. And you see my team, like the, the entire staff is doing some wonderful. And then there's me who like just repeatedly cannot find the lobby to join. Uh, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> Twitch chat, please. <laughs> uh, everyone right now. It's either R or Eyes of Derp. The spam, it's real. <laughs> yeah, we also had a conversation yesterday about chat chat quality in tournaments. <laughs> and how I take the quality of chat during tournaments seriously. Uh, here we are. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. This is the greatest uh, chat quality that we could hope for. Chat is with us on this. Enjoying, <laughs> enjoying themselves, having a good time. This Falco. is this is what the tournament's about. Having a good Falco time. Falco got a B minus on overlays with snow. Now Falco, you did great. You did great. 
Uh, just sat up, waiting on, on getting into the lobby is all. Oh, and then there's actually all right, enough. <laughs> Cat hammer. <laughs> oh, look at chat being so well, so well controlled. Chat, chat knows when to, when to spam and when not to spam. <laughs> the toppest of tears. But it's in community. Okay, and we great. are actually making progress as far as the lobby is concerned. So that is an excellent thing to happen. Yeah, so basically the way it works is, um, like, I don't actually host the lobbies, it is the... It is the players that themselves host the lobbies for, for those matches, and then us commentators, we join into those lobbies. As far as I know, like, there are other tournaments where actually the streamers host the lobbies. Um, I personally like to do it the way that, that this is handled, because I want to... I, I want to make sure that the players have as little lag as possible, and so I like those those teams to be able to play directly to be connected directly with each other and not to have to be correct connected like through me like imagine for example if there are two teams playing that are both in the us and then i am the host sitting here in germany um i don't want to i don't want to do that to those poor people <laughs> yeah it does happen it's always good to have someone that's uh, around the region of where ev all the players are for the teams it it just depends we'll we'll see what happens going forward as we do get set up and into the lobby. Yeah, okay, so there still so. seem to be some some slight delays. We're currently figuring out the players are all ready. We're just trying to to figure out the setup. Um <laughs> As we are are communicating ourselves through all of this, uh, let me. Technical have difficulties, you noticed, chat. <laughs> have you have you noticed the kiwi? The kiwi. This kiwi, kiwi actually. So when I when I set up all of those those icons and stuff, I actually have to go through Photoshop and make sure they all match into the overlay and stuff. Um, kiwi and the caveman. I have to call them out here. Um, they actually did not remove the uh, stock image. It's a stock image and they did not pay for it. No royalties are being paid for this Kiwi right now. Oh, sad Kiwis. Feels bad. But yes, guys, if you have... If you have dreams about your future, um, you can you can become a professional photographer and earn your money taking pictures of kiwis, and then and then there will be certain kiwi and the caveman who just who just steal your picture. No, but legit though. I mean, that's that's how we all that's the welcome to the world of content creation. <laughs> been been there, been there. But yeah, coming up with with team logos always is. Um, is quite a challenge because most teams, as much as I recommend that every team should have their own, their own team team artists. Of course, like we you will. cannot just find a random group of Splatoon players and suddenly somebody has the the artistic skill to to create their own creative team logo. So it's always it's always super cool to see that some some teams are like super professional. Yeah, we'll you expect season. cavemen to pay royalties. <laughs> I guess that is a very yep. fair point there. I have to say, we're having a bit of uh, lobby troubles, as not all of us are in the lobby right now. Uh, we're just waiting on uh, the teams sorting this out. Uh, let's just talk about the oh, maps yes, real quick. Um, to, uh, Ace, Ace, run. your... Ace, Ace, watch... Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go. <laughs> so the downside, the downside of, of streaming the tournament is that sometimes the player are listening to more to the tournament stream than to the to the tournament chat. <laughs> okay, I think the the important messages are coming through now. All right, people should people should be able to 
get in now. As we can get set yeah, up for this happens, first match. It happens sometimes that people are people are giving their feedback in, in the tournament chat and forget that uh, other other avenues of communication exist. <laughs> okay. But it's okay. We've all we've all been there. Okay, we're we're all ready and set now from the looks of it. So we're good to go. Uh Clamblitz Oh yes, this on... looks like a stable lobby. Yeah. Excellent. Clamblitz on uh, Manta Maria for the first map. It's going to be an interesting one. Uh, as we Oh, I think that's actually our first Clamblitz Manta Maria mouse. For for the Yeah, it, it is the first one that we have for this tournament. It's very interesting. Considering that there are only 8 maps in this entire tournament, I'm I'm quite surprised to still have that there are still some surprises open. But um yeah, Clams Manta Maria is actually pretty cool. You have this, um, you have the basket being at this incredibly isolated position, or like at the this this like walled off position at least, where you tend to have a lot of struggle around, and that makes it very exciting. Yeah. Okay, so guys. See oh, what are those already, weapons? You can already see going into this, two very different and unique comps. We've got a carbon roller, uh, a t dark tetra dullies, and a jet sculpture on one side, while we have a bamboozler. Uh, a uh, oil squeezer and a machine on the other. So this is going to be very interesting to see how these teams play. And as I said, the Dark Tetras and the Carbon Roll are already down for the side of Midnight, I believe. Ooh, that's very destructive. So we'll see what happens. Oh dear, those cavemen, they are, oh my gosh, they're they are aggressing. Yeah, again, and again, keep in mind, the winning team of, those, of this match is incredibly likely to be in the in the top four and both of those teams have only lost one single match so far so this is despite despite kiwi and the caveman pushing forward with an incredibly strong push right now this is this is a very even match and we are probably going to see a comeback by midnight or at least a comeback attempt fairly soon and and if not this is that's going to be an amazing upset by kiwi and the caveman but well there are still three th four minutes to go you can already see, see again go. players going down on the side of midnight as Kiwi and the Caveman pressuring in. Getting clams right now. Two players on their team both have eight clams, so we'll have to see what happens. Armor coming out. Allowing for Keith to stay alive with that bamboozler. Throwing clams for just to make sure that they can get a power clam in, and that should be another another score. Apparently reduced. We can see Riki pushing in. Three members stacked there for midnight. Do manage to clean up. The remaining members of Kiwi the Caveman to prevent any more of a push happening. Unfortunately, it does not. Useful. Unfortunately, Splash they don't being a very, uh, pick very up useful the special there. Yeah, they don't pick up the petty clam there to get uh, two power clams for free. But unfortunately, uh, that's just how it happens. Playing aggressive, and make sure that they can get the turf, however, and make sure they have uh, clam coverage. As we can see, oh, only two members left combat. alive. One member now. Oh left my gosh, alive. that's three down. This might uh, that might legit like just but one push. They're gonna take the lead. This looks really really good. And here we this go. Is, they got the lead. This is yeah, look at midnight. those numbers. What a strong midnight. push. Midnight, such a strong push here is ten. Okay, Zillard is now coming back, trying to defend. Street. Oh, Lunar does oh, go down. Does get stopped, but the basket is left alive. Okay. The basket no has plans. been stopped. But Kiwi and the Caveman are three down after this attack. That is a yeah, really midnight. really strong position for Midnight to find themselves in. Midnight were able to keep pressure up. Unfortunately, they weren't able to keep the basket open. They didn't have enough clams around to be able to keep it open long enough to continue that push. So they're going to play it back, play it towards the mid, and get their special. We see free specials all coming up right now for the side of uh, Kiwi and the Caveman. And as I say that, only two members left alive. One member now, just a squeezer there, as we can see Sakura pressuring with that junior. Just going to push in ahead and make sure that there's a jump spot for the rest of uh, Midnight. Oh, the Already again. under the basket. Oh, there's a, there's a jump from Yuck with the What I really like doing class. in this position actually is um, using Inkjet to give my teammates the jumping spot. But I don't think anybody here is using the Inkjet. And it also... Oh, Sakura! Sakura with the surprise clams! Oh, let's go! Ooh, <laughs> from the, from nice. the back! <laughs> Does manage to get a few of those and unfortunately does go down. They're only able to really clear the checkpoint, or not the checkpoint, the, uh, the, oh my god, I can't think right now. Uh, <laughs> words. They, they um, are yeah, able to clear the, the penalty. didn't get any extra points. And, yeah, we can see 
Hyperweight, specials all being ready on the side of Kiwi and the Caveman. Ray coming forward, just trying to prevent any sort of push coming out from the Zilla doing uh, a really, really cool move there, trying to make sure he doesn't get taken down by the Stingray. And it actually does work out, throwing away the, um, the Clamp to confuse the Stingray. Unfortunately, there's only two members left alive for the Caveman, and Lost able to pressure forward there with that Carbon Roller, using the armor, manages to get the pick onto the end zap. ZZ Lord. And we'll see what happens. Only three members alive for Midnight again. They're going to play this slow. They have time. Power Clan is ready. Splashdown and looks like missiles are going to be up next for This has been an incredibly uh, strategic man. game so far with them collecting their clams, getting their specials, and waiting Ooh, for a long time to actually throw is... in. Oh, two down for Kiwi and the Cave, man. They're just all waiting. This They're waiting the... for the right moment. I think that's actually the pro play to do now. Yeah, down. it's oh, just Sakura won. left alive and Sakura's in the perfect works. position to put in a Power Clamp and prevent anything more coming forward. Luckily, now if they can, can however, be safe, they're just going to keep it open for 8 seconds, but I don't think it's going to work. This is going to be all dependent on the cavemen here. Are they able to get picks? Because they do have the power climb, and they have a petty climb as well, so they're able to get more going here. They just need to stay alive. Riki's in a bad spot. Specials are ready. Oh, survives. Armor just trying oh, to keep Riki's the members alive. This trouble. is bad. Riki can't use, out. has to use the bubbles here, which is really bad. But then two down for the cavemen. Two cavemen are two down. This is very good. Only no, one bad. member left alive. Stingraying on the side of uh, Midnight. So this could be Oh, is that is also stopped. Oh, and that's no! It. That's it. Oh, they just barely didn't make it to the basket. Because of the Stingray, probably. Oh, there's two members under the basket there, but they didn't have any of the clams, unfortunately. And when they were passing clams to each other, they weren't quite able to make a power clam in time. And that was enough for Midnight to be able to shut out that game. And, and when look at those splats, they're are... so close. Oh. <laughs> well, that and here was... we see... <laughs> first game of the Swiss stage round 6, the most the most decisive of the Swiss round matches. That was... that was so close. Very well played by both teams there. Midnight able to clutch it out, get the pushes that they needed, and really keep the clam pressure that they, that they wanted going forward here it looks like one of the teams is subbing out a member uh, uh yeah it seems like that's that's midnight isn't it i yeah, it looks like Mid midnight three, are subbing out a team member for this the next match as they go into black zones mako we'll have to see what we'll have to see who comes in and uh what weapons what weapon changes are going to go for uh zones mako mark uh this could be very interesting though And Zones Mechomar, like, that's one of those... I mean, Zones in general, you are much more likely to see KOs. I think last time we had Zones Mechomar, that was um, in the play in the game with Radical Dreamers. No, with Young Dreamers, actually, where Tarzan had this amazing performance with the Explosher. I think actually the only time in the in the tournament so far we've seen the Explosher. We've we've had some changes in the in the, in the map and load, loadouts compared to previous tournaments. Like previous tournaments were so 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 many. Like I can't overstate how many custom custom Julius Quests were in the last Ink Theory tournament. And it seems like 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 today it's been all over the place. Like we've seen honestly we've seen everything. I'm I'm missing Clash Blaster. I I know we haven't seen Clash Blaster. We haven't seen Gootuber. But other than that, I think most weapons have been have been played today. And I mean, as far yeah. as Makomart is concerned, you can honestly, you can kind of play everything. I wouldn't go too rangy. I mean, yeah, maybe, I mean, charges are fine and all, but um, it, it is a smaller map. Yeah, we'll have to see what these teams decide to run going through these matches here into Makomart. Maybe we'll see an explosion similar to what we saw earlier on Zones Makomart from Tarzan. Uh, so, yeah. We can see a 52 gal this time. Interesting. It's a uh -huh. cancer 52 with the Booyah Bomb. Oh, I like seeing that. And Booyah, of course, um, also... is very effective at taking the zone. We can also see a mini splatling coming from ZZ Lark. That's, that's I an interesting I played mini splatling this month. It was really, really cool. It paints so it paints so much more than you would think. Oh, we it can see a fly coming in much, already. How much it paints. For three oh, wow. members down immediately for the side of Kiwi and the Gork. For the site That's of Midnight, a huge sorry. For them. As Kiwi and the Caveman managed zones, to pressure here. In, in zones, an early early wipe like this matters so, so much as Kiwi and the Caveman are now trying to, to take this ink forward, but they don't quite succeed. You can still see that Midnight does retain most of their base and is now able to quickly take back the zone, actually. Very, very good defense by them. Don't quite know how they managed to do that, but they did. Oh, 
Oh my word, we can see Bamboozler getting those picks there onto the onto the remaining members of Midnight. Oh, almost getting the pick onto the Dapples there. Dapples manages to dash out alive. Very lucky for them there. He is just knows he's there. Sees him with the missiles. Does manage to get the clean pick there, and that's that's not now. This looking is, now very this is getting, purple. This is getting big. Yeah, this is this is getting big. Look at the purple on Look, this map. Look at how well, at word. least at least midnight they're all pushing out at the same time, which does give them a bit of a chance. But they will need more specials. Oh, I I like what I'm seeing from the Dapples though. Okay, they're trying to go for the flank. Zone is getting get, getting yellow. There are spe oh so many specials at the same time. Beautiful. They do use the rain and the buoy as well, just to make sure that they can confirm this. Missiles do come out from the bandits as well. Only getting to one splat, which is surprising. They and they like midnight really did a uh, caveman really did a good job there, defending against the the devils. I expected them to get way more. They were in a really good position. Uh, looks like it's going even so far as trades are going in favor of midnight this time, as cavemen are trying to pressure and get those picks. But unfortunately, not able to. They're not quite able to hold the zone. Sakura with his junior just making sure they've got the turf around the map. And the Dapples there getting a nice pick onto the uh, onto the hatred. This might be this might be a lead for midnight. Okay, now they're two down though. So can okay, can Kiwi catch up though in time? Do they oh, have enough yuck, time there? Are the missiles jumping in, going forward. Not enough specials though. It's not enough. Midnight taking the lead. Caveman now actually oh. one down again. Cavemen already pushing forward, Dapples down on the side of Midnight. This is looking like Mid- Oh no! Lunar going down for Cavemen, this is looking like Midnight's actually going to be able to turn this around. And as I say that, Cavemen do manage to get the two picks that they needed and are able to pressure back this Junior and this Charger. Are they able to get any of the picks? Charger gets a safe jump, Junior does not this however battle. does get picked off. This battle is so close that just a single, just the difference of a single splat or not getting a splat can make a make the decision of whether or not you get the zone and in the end whether or not the match is going to be is going to be a KO or if this is going to continue. And so far, it looks like it's going to continue. Lunar. But again, again, looks like Kiwi and the caveman might not be able to keep the zone for long. Ace so trying to fight with the HP in the background. Two players. Does Midnight now three down. Oh, this is huge! My God, cavemen are it. making the comeback here. They're getting back the lead. Preventing anything oh, coming from Midnight. Cavemen looking to really, shut really out this now. match. Make this Five. a 1-1 match. Oh, Three, two, one, that and that's it. Oh my word, that was... That was a close game. Both sides trading backwards and forwards, and for a long time there, Cavemen just had a solid hold, and then Midnight were able to turn it around and make the big comeback that they needed. Uh, <laughs> wow, so we're going to have a decider match. <laughs> This this was a interesting set, to say the least. That was very backwards and forwards. Both teams playing very aggressive, able to get the picks and trades that they needed. Unfortunately, Midnight not quite able to win that match. They do lose out to Kiwi and the Caveman there. Kiwi and the Caveman managing to KO Makomar. As we go into the decider of Tower Control Reef. Now, the match that we saw earlier in Tower Control Reef did end up being a KO. So, or not a KO, but it was a very close to being a KO. Yeah, I think it was a very, very decisive match, wasn't it? So, and th that was very decisive in the fact that the team that won was so aggressive and able to clear all the checkpoints. They were able to work together really well and just shut down any pressure. So I'm wondering this, I'm very curious to see how these players are going to work together going forward into this final match and how it how exactly they're going to be able to uh, perform together to be able to get these checkpoints on the reef. And to to step up the pressure just a little bit again, again the reminder, this is the final game of the deciding match. This is, these five, the upcoming five minutes are going to, to decide whether either of those teams will will get to be will get to join join us in chat and watch the rest of the tournament or whether they will be fighting for the amazing amazing prizes in this tournament and um it seems like it seems like they are ready because they have they have ready ready up immediately and we are going to the reef yeah we can see here Carbon and Dapple, very close range comp coming out for the side of Midnight this time. Opting to run the That's Carbon, the, the Dapple delete. I feel like this is a pretty junior. open map, so I, I would have it, expected it, a bit more range. It is very open. We can see that 
the opposite side, Kiwi and the K-Men opting not to run a backliner here, but instead run uh, more mid lane. And it looks like this is going to be a first push for Midnight as they do manage to get the first couple picks, making a player advantage. Unfortunately, not really able to push much here as they do lose a member as they start this push. And as I said, only two members left alive, Sakura and Carbon Roller. And as I said, oh, again, only the just only one, one member left alive. This Lossy Machine is all alone. And we can see he's behind the tower in a good spot to be able to pressure this and prevent anyone riding through this checkpoint. Oh, they're but... stuck in that corner. But Slotty yeah, Machine not... seems to be able to get out of there, saving themselves with this splash down. But of course, Midnight, Midnight, they, they do keep pushing. Yeah, we seems can like see Yacht in a poor position there, but T with that Bamboozler is able to pick him off. And the rest of the cavemen are able to pressure out the entire team of Midnight and force them back. Oh, nice hit onto the loss there. He is able to clean up with the missiles. Again, onto getting another pick with missiles into Sakura. Very nice. This looks like it's going to be the first checkpoint clear for the cavemen as well. And that looks very safe. Much, much safer than what we had by Midnight before. And, well, it seems like Midnight does have that Stingray, but honestly, a Stingray all on all its own is not going to stop Kiwi and the cavemen for too long. And they do seem to keep pushing now. Specials are ready Down too. To... Down to the first checkpoint. Yuck, pressuring in. Does manage to get a pick onto CZ Lord. Preventing that checkpoint. Only one point really remaining. T's going to get back on that tower, but it's not going to be enough time to be able to get through that checkpoint. Does reset it. This is going to give Midnight enough time to be able to come back and caveman. Yeah, going to try play a bit slower. making it past checkpoint. They do. They do. So Zillard, oh, you can see Zillard is now being being forced to move back into the corner. Oh, two picks coming through. But that, that is the was end of a the very push. nice, very nice clean shot from the H3 there of Riki. And that also gives me a little bit of time to take back the zone, uh, to take back the map control. Which at the moment it's looking very, very green. But you can see they're getting their specials ready. They're just painting. Sometimes you just throw that rain out just to get a little more more turf on the ground. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. So he lost getting a nice pick though. We can see Yuck getting another pick with the Dapples pressuring in. ZZ Alert's forced into the corner, does manage to get the pick onto, onto Yuck. Now pressuring Lost with the baller. Does mark him, but goes down. Lost shutting that down. Oh, Tenna actually shutting that down with a snipe. That was very clean. Sakura now riding through that checkpoint for Midnight. Looks like they're going to get this, this checkpoint here nice and clean. They're still two down. They are, oh, they're even more in the corner than, than Midnight were before. That's it. They got the combat. Midnight, all of them riding the tower, the tower here, just trying to get Three through Three people are around the tower, now time to escape somewhere as a... Is this it? Oh is this God. the end? This might be the Sakura end. Sakura riding, it's not, yet, it's not yet, it's not yet, it's not yet, it's one point tower, left though. It's just one point left. Oh my gosh, that was such a close game there. Midnight clutching it out at the end, managing to get that very clean and nice push. Does manage to hit the picks with the carbon roller at the end there. Lost, managing to ride that through and end the game for them. Winning the set 2 1 over Kiwi in the game. And that was such a good set. That was a very that nice was KO from them. Oh, I love those. I love those final round matches. They are exciting. <laughs> well, then it those... seems like seems like we're only seeing one, one big Kiwi on the screen. <laughs> Honestly, just for the memes, just for the memes, the 3 0 by Kiwi would have been glorious because chat has, chat has given some feedback on what they feel about seeing the big Kiwi on screen. And, um,. <laughs> I think we need more kiwi, <laughs> guys. Guys, y'all, eat your eat your fruit. Eat your. Wait a second. Let me. Oh no. Wait. I'm I'm wrecking my I'm I'm wrecking my overlay right now. But I have to do this. Oh my word. Ah. Uh... All of the kiwis. Ah. Uh... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that's not that's not what I was planning for. But I guess here we are. <laughs> Again, guys. Reminder. Reminder. Midnight actually did win. But oh, here we go. I find the zoom function finally. <laughs> guys. Here we go. <laughs> zoom, zoom until we see until so we see that watermark. It is 100 big. times 100 pixels though. <laughs> the big kiwi. Oh, kiwis are actually very tasty. Not not in this state properly, but kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> very big kiwi. Yes. Okay. Let me very let me un undestroy my overlay. I think I think uh. we need we still need this. <laughs> Oh, that was a very interesting uh, last set. Let's see, well, we'll we'll see what happens uh, with the last set. I believe everyone is finishing off the last last few matches in the Swiss round. So to all the teams that have finished, 
I've not quite made it into the top four. Thank you very much for playing in Ink Theory this month. We do appreciate you guys theorizing with us and coming in and participating in the tournament itself. So... Oh. <laughs> yeah, I am I am really, really happy with how this tournament has, has gone so far. I mean, I was... I mean, I'm usually nervous about, about Ink Theory because there are so many things that you cannot quite expect how they go. Um, but... <laughs> But this time in particular, with twice as many teams registering as usual and having so, so many more new team members, I redesigned the entire overlay, so that is another another unknown factor. And it was just... It was a lot of unknown factors, and it still is, because of course, like, we're still right in the middle of this tournament if we look at the schedule. We just made it through the Swiss stage, and we're now looking at the top card, where the, the strongest players are going to are going to be playing, one of whom might be Midnight that we just saw winning. However, however, it is not guaranteed. It is actually not guaranteed. It's looking like... It's looking like Metro Misfits might actually be sneaking past them, but there are still... There's still one match that has to... has to finish before we get that result. Because while there are... there are four top spots... And there are five... <laughs> There are five teams that have won five matches and more. Um, I think the biggest the biggest thing that I would like to point out right now is that Brainlets actually defeated Carnage Gaming. Carnage Gaming beating being the the favorite, uh, not the favorite, the um, oh, what's the term? The team that we that I kind of expected to. I was actually scared as an organizer that Carnage Gaming is going to take down everybody <laughs> easily, and this is going to be boring. But Brain has got a two-one against Carnage Gaming. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see how who who makes it into the top four. From the looks of it, Brainlets and Carnage Gaming are going to be able to make it through. So we do have our top two seeds. We'll have to see who who out of the remaining teams that have managed to win five sets makes it into the top cup. Uh, I'll just quickly list through the teams that have made it through the Swiss stage and yes, finish yes, please, their matches you. uh and we're starting off wait i'm, I'm gonna <laughs> i'm just gonna start for you okay <laughs> so yeah. we have unstable connection <laughs> winning 2-1 against sommerzeit uhren umstellung and now baggage <laughs> you can <laughs> <laughs> saves me saves me the time of trying to read out the name and not being able to uh squid party chat next uh winning 2-1 over inkcraft cult IPS sucks, winning 3-0 over Riot, so it looks like Riot never quite made it to the... <laughs> Such a promising I mean, really, team and that's, working that's, really yeah, well, they never Riot, quite made actually. it to the top cup. They they so, fell down a lot there. It's unfortunate for them, but well played by them either way, making it to the top cup. We have Destiny Trips and Memento Mori. Uh, Destiny Trips winning 3-0 over Memento Mori. Uh, Pure Divinity winning 3-0 over RRRRRRRRRRRR. Uh, <laughs> Passion winning 3-0 over Young Dreamers. And Metro Misfits managed to win 3-0 over Hardcore Noobs Red. And that might be huge, actually. That might that, make a difference. That could, that could make the difference for them making it into the top uh, cut of the bracket. We'll have that to being see. said, if I might interject for a second, as far as the Swiss system is concerned, Hardcore Noobs is has been doing not quite as well as um, the opponent that Midnight has won against Kiwi and the Caveman, which means that if you look at the opponent's win percentage, um, Midnight might have a higher opponent's win percentage because they have been playing against Kiwi and the Midnight uh, and the Caveman, whereas Metro Misfits has been playing playing against a slightly weaker team. So that might be a strong factor. And if you're wondering, like, why does Metro Misfits play against a weaker team when, like, they have to play against a stronger team to be able to, to progress? It's basically an accumulation of Metro Misfits' previous performance. So that's all, like, taken into, into consideration um, as those last matches are decided. So we might actually have a case of the opponent's win percentage being, being decisive here. But then on the other side, we don't know what other matches Metro Misfits has played before. Yeah, so as we, we will, look for we the rest. To see. As we look for the rest of the results, we have Symphony winning 3-0 over Incadia. Uh, Conversion 2 winning 2-1 over Fluffy Muffins. Uh, Half English Breakfast winning 3-0 over Operation Stars. Uh, MC Wimmies winning 3-0 over Phase 4. Midnight winning 2-1 over Kiwi and the Cavemen. 
Fear of Death winning 3-0 over West Broadway Grillers. Trinity winning 3-0 over 60% Fishbums. Brainlets winning 2-1 over Carnage Gaming, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, the Deep Fried Octolings winning 3-0 over System of a Splashdown. And Dark Sun winning 3-0 over Otakos. Uh, we still have two matches to finish, I believe. I'm just going to quickly refresh Actually, the Actually, no, we've, we've got all the check. results. Uh, oh, we have Hacken all the White team have defeated Calling Angels 2-1. Which I think both of those are actually German teams, so we're having a bit of a local derby there. And that means that for many, for many, many teams in this tournament, um, this, this tournament is now over, and only four teams managed to, to progress. So if we take a look at the final standings, we have... So, four teams, four teams that made it into the top four. Let me actually take a quick look whether we've got this... Oh, we do have this overlay, excellent. So we have, that's a little bit off-center, that was actually my, here we go, my HTML is not quite, <laughs> not quite excellent. Okay, so we've got Brainlets being the only team in the entire tournament that has had the same result in every single match, being, in this case, being a victory. We actually have no team at all in this tournament, and that's what's making me the most happy, honestly. We have no team at all in this tournament that has lost every single match. Every team in this tournament has won at least one match, and that makes me really, really happy. And while there is this one team, Brainlets, that has not lost a single one, so they are currently they are currently being the favorites to win the tournament, but they have quite some competition. So on position number two, we have Carnage Gaming, a sponsored team that actually, if we look at the opponent win percent, um, Carnage Gaming actually has defeated stronger, uh, stronger opponents than Brainlets, but of course since they themselves lost against Brainlets in a very very close match this is uh like they will not they are now in position number two but whatever whatever grand finals we are going to see seems to be going seems to going to be extremely close because um of course Brainlets and Carnage Gaming being so close to each other already kind of spells spells out which direction this is um a a close match like this is gonna go to we have Metro Misfits Surprisingly, actually making it to position number three. Managing to clutch it out and managing to get themselves to the top three. Very well played by Metro Misfits there. Having this actually the exact same percentage, win percentage and uh, opponent win percentage as the fourth spot team, IPS Yes, sucks. yes. So that was <laughs> oh, a no. very... <laughs> oh, very no, Chad close. is not very happy with me saying surprisingly. <laughs> that, but I mean, the Misfits, like, very... they, had a, they had a harder time throughout the tournament. I think Metro Misfits, it was one of the earlier rounds that they lost, I think, against Carnage Gaming. So um, they, did, they did have that, that uphill battle. But in the end, yeah, they've got the exact same stats as IPS suck. So that's a, a perfect tie. I mean, it's not even a tie break. It's just a tie tie. And then Midnight is so, so, so close. Midnight got the same win-loss ratio, um, but whereas IPS Sucks and Metro Misfits had a 58% opponent, opponent win, um, Midnight has a 54% opponent win. So that means that fifth, uh, Midnight failed to make it into top four by 4% of the performance by the opponents that they, they lost, again, uh, lost against. So that's an... Yeah. An incredibly, incredibly close outcome there. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. And I think everyone is getting sorted out for this next set. So I'm going to now step away from the commentating desk. Thank you guys for all having me here. Thank you, Snow, and thank you to all the staff members once again. I will be stepping out to let our other commentator, Tamashi, come in and commentate. Exactly, exactly. With you guys. So. You guys so have I would... a good one. Exactly. So before we, we set this all up, I actually need to press a few buttons. Um, I would I would actually go to the bathroom for a second and set up a few things. So for example... Oh wait, actually no, I think I want to do that later. But I do I do want to go to the bathroom, so... Um... <laughs> while while the, the teams are, are getting ready to go for, for their top four, I am just going to let you... Look at this beautiful overlay where you can see all the wonderful, wonderful staff members. Oh, I remember what I wanted to do. I wanted to... 
change the overlay so that it probably shows that Lila is now my co-commentator. So if I may... Ah, oh, Lila is in the other voice chat. We have two voice chats in our organization team and... Um... There we go, there we go, there we go. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. Hi. Okay, let me quickly figure out the volume, because of course I want to make sure that we all, we can all hear everybody. Um, Lila, hello, how are you doing? I am doing fine, thank you very much. You're the pair of you have done great so far, and I've been enjoying every second. It's been, it's been a very fun time. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very glad that uh, nothing, nothing bad has happened so far. We got a little bit close to, to some breakdowns during the very first match where my internet was struggling. <laughs> that would have been unfortunate. And so far also, can I point out, we did not have a Discord crash yet. Yay! So that's great. Oh gosh, that, that, can we all just now suddenly touch wood in every possible direction? Because we don't want that to happen now, please. <laughs> yes, please. Please. And, um, well then, so, um... So, Lila, can you tell me um, something about about your your Splatoon Splatoon career? Because I mean, you're yourself like you're not a competitive player. You do stream sometimes, um, but you are very prolific in the in the commentator scene. Can you uh -huh. can you tell me something about your your experiences as a as a Splatoon person? I certainly can. So I started doing casting in 2018. Uh, I started doing it for Nintendo Players UK for their Squid League initially. Uh, and then uh, word got around, or well, I say word got around, you know, I got to try out with uh, Esports Scotland. They tried to do a Splatoon tournament at one point, and then, um, and then I got contacted, um, asked if I could come in to do one of the qualifiers for the UK Championship. Um, I did the qualifier at Insomnia and at EGX both times I was co-hosting with uh, uh, Barry Alexander, aka Barry the Hero. And um, that went all the way up until the actual finals, where I got asked to do both both days of the UK finals in November and that was just a dream come true. Uh, since then I've done more Splatoon throughout the years, I did Nintendo Players UK again. I have done some recent stints with Endgame TV as well, uh, the most recent of which I do believe was the second Girls Duo Cup and I think I did a Sunday morning coffee at some point as well, which was also a lot of fun. So, uh, And then very recently I did a Splatoon 2 Game Advisor Takeover on the British Esports Association channel, and that was a huge success, and I'm very, very grateful to everybody who came by for that. <laughs> Wait, can you tell me about that? That's something I haven't heard about. British Esports Association tournaments? What? Uh, so, it's, okay, so basically what happened is that uh, I'm a Game Advisor for Splatoon 2 for uh, the BEA, and okay. they, were, they were running a pilot for uh, Game Advisors to do a stream takeover on their channel. And uh, I got asked if I wanted to do the very first one. And so I put, sent out a message to those who have currently qualified for the 2019-2020 UK Championships. Uh, four of the teams got back in touch and went, yes, we'd absolutely like to do some uh, showcase matches. And so we organized it. I basically used the first part of the stream to talk about Splatoon when it started back in the Wii U days. Uh, mentioned the kind of competitive scene since its uh, since its uh, start. One of which I did mention was the Great British Flat Off from many years ago, and uh, brought it up to date. And the second half was uh, some showcase matches between the four teams, which was a lot of fun and went down a tree. One match went to the wire. One match was unfortunately a wipe, but these things happen. Oh. <laughs> hey, that sounds excellent. Though. That sounds like that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, so if I if I may introduce myself, I am Snowpoke, and I have hosted. Ink Theory March, Ink Theory April, Ink Theory May, Ink Theory June, and Ink Theory July. Hello there. Um, <laughs> I am always, I always happy to be to be surrounded by these incredibly, incredibly skilled and experienced casters who are who are able to. Um, I hope give you guys a a good idea of how the matches are going and um, make it just a little bit more organized in your mind to see. You know, like Splatoon, even for us experienced Splatoon players, um, like this is still a very messy very messy very chaotic game so i think it is great to have to have people who are able to like at least at least make our mind a little bit more organized to see like what are we looking at and what parts are important in the in the gameplay also before i forget um i have to thank or i want to thank um navi and viv for the wonderful raids um welcome welcome all of you to this ink theory tournament we are now reaching the top cut of the tournament so that's like the most those are the most important matches of the the entire thing and we are getting close to the semi-finals i'm certainly looking forward to it 
And the first semi-final that is going, or the so only one of the two semi-finals is actually going to be casted. Uh, both of them are happening at the same time. Ah. And Brainlets versus IPS sucks. Those two, they they can do they can do their thing. And what we are going to be watching is Carnage Gaming versus Metro Misfits. So we know Metro Misfits. We literally just watched them play. Oh no, actually that was match number five. We we watched them play thirty minutes ago. Yep. And Carnage Gaming, I've I've been holding out on them a little bit. I didn't want them to be streamed in the in the early rounds because I expected them to make top cut and I didn't want to take it all away. So <laughs> <laughs> now is finally after after I have mentioned them over and over and over again. It is finally time for Carnage Gaming to also be on stream. And yeah, we're gonna have those those five wonderful matches. I hope we will actually be able to see all five of them. Um, Mavlin mentioned earlier, uh, sorry, not Mevlin, uh, Dylan mentioned earlier that he is going to an event, so he is not going to be playing for Carnage Gaming for these few rounds. Oh, no. We'll have to see, we'll have to see who they will, who they will bring instead. It's always interesting and... when you see a substitute coming out, because it's like, you know, you, you always see the established team, but sometimes you don't see the subs take part as much as you'd like to, so it's always a nice opportunity to get that player in the limelight. Absolutely, and it's something that I highly recommend any team to to prepare um, before a tournament, like get a substitute, guys. This is five and a half hours of Splatoon, so that's a lot of gameplay. And I highly, highly recommend that you guys make sure that, um, like, if you play in a tournament, like not just in Ink Theory, but in any in any tournament, that you are able to, like, have somebody who who like swaps out for you so you can take a break off or take take one match off and like take a break take a breather <laughs> maybe eat some lunch just so <laughs> you won't be you won't be overly exhausted because like those tournaments there there are a lot there are a lot like i've been there i've been in tournaments there were only only six rounds like like i've never made it to a top card but I've been in tournaments where like in round five and round six, like you could feel, like I could feel that I was tired. I could also feel that my teammates were <laughs> tired. It's exhausting. It's like, I mean, of course this is a game, but like this is an intense game. Yeah, I'm just gonna say, and especially then you have those kind of double elimination tournaments where it's like the matches sometimes just go on and on and on because they're all so close together. And then by the time you get to grand finals, it's really just a case of endurance more than anything, especially if it goes Absolutely. to a reset. You're just, you're just struggling. <laughs> I've seen I've seen teams before in Ink Theory that has that have completely fallen apart towards the later phases in a tournament because they were so exhausted. And then if you have tournaments, I remember one tournament where it was like I think it was a best out of best of nine with bracket reset, and they ended up playing eighteen matches. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, that's a uh, that's that's a few too many. <laughs> Not gonna yes. lie. And well, the struggle is going to start though right now for Carnage Gaming and for Metro Misfits. As and they are getting ready for the first match, for the first game of the semi-finals. I'm looking forward to it, and of course we have to start with the good old chaotic nature that is Rainmaker. And we're going to see a Spluttershot Jr. on our left as well, alongside that uh, Soda Slusher. So, uh, two very convenient weapons, and already it's popped in the purple favor. As we see, what is Gary going to be doing? Just, uh, just lingering about, just a little bit. Going to get some turf coverage and get the ink armor upcharged as quickly as possible. Pops it no, just before the grenade spots. <laughs> but so far, nice. everybody is surviving. This is a very... And, and as I say that, as I say that, the entirety of Metro Misfits, <laughs> except for Benny, is going down. <laughs> there must have oh, just been the one the moment where, where Carnage Gaming wonderful. decided, okay, this is our moment. It's oh, and now they're doing is. this very unusual left way. Yep, Bronze has it and is being shielded by the pair of their teammates. And this is going to be a very strong push right at the start. They have been taking just a little bit too much damage and the splashdown therefore does get the splat and that is a wipe as well. So a very quick turnaround on the defense to offense as Milan immediately hopped on up. They've almost got splashdown back up, would you believe it? That's how quickly they've managed to get turf coverage. And now just lingering the moment, on the left Metro hand was side. Just working on... You can see how the Rainmaker is honestly like... You can see Mav is mostly just trying to paint at the moment. The Rainmaker is one of the best painters in the entire game, probably even the best painter. A little bit of a risk that Mav is taking with that is that, like, he's not getting any special by painting, but the opponents do by painting over it. 
So that's kind of the, the trade-off that you're doing if you decide to paint with the Rainmaker. But of course, at the end of the day, you do need map control. And so that is what, what Metro Misfits decided to go there. Go for yeah. But it looks but like Kanish Gaming might be having another push now. And they certainly are, and Q is going for this 1v1 and does win it. Nathan does go down and immediately trying to go up and catch the rest of them off guard. Char not going to allow the charge to get too much time to get into position, so they have to really work upon their own spawn point here. As Brock again just oh, keeps firing in with it. the Rainmaker. This could it's be an opportunity. They're down, They've that's it. And that's it. That is going to be the dunk right there and then, and that is going to be the first point going to Carnage Gaming. Great start for the team. So, hey. I think you're starting to see why I've been talking about them. <laughs> Oh yes indeed, it's like the second they can win out just like key 1v1s like that, they just keep the entire rest of the team on standby and if, if they cannot get the spats to take them out, the rest of the team have just pushed forward. And that is it, you're the second you can't get any defense on that podium, the Rainmaker's gonna dunk no matter what you do. I was very impressed by how this match started. Like it, it seemed, it seemed incredibly even, and they were like they were trading close. Nobody actually got taken down, and then like there was just this one moment where Carnage Gaming must have seen, oh, now we have the advantage. Now let's attack, and then it just, it just happened instantly. Everybody went down, and I think that's one of the hallmarks of a very good team is to, to be able to create. Like at some point, Splatoon, like feels less like your regular shooter game, and it starts more into a, it turns more into a strategical like kind of like chess-like game where you try to see like where can I put our players, where can we create the map, because I mean you paint, so by painting you kind of create a way for you to move. How do we want the map to be created for us to be in the perfect position? And that is that is the first step, it, I think, that Carnage Gaming took there to create their own map, to create a, a playing field that, that put them into the advantage. Exactly, and not only that, it's you, it's bringing in the kind of weaponry that you not just that not is just part of the meta for that specific mode map combination, but weapons that you feel comfortable using, like the fact that we saw uh, like we saw Soda Sloshes and Splash Out Juniors coming up on one side, and then on the other hand, you've got that's great against the Rainmaker Shield, but you've also got to remember that you've got to have that range and you've got to have that consistency, and the Jewelies just have both. Well, especially the Jewelie Squelches. <laughs> Oh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing sloshers. <laughs> Metro Misfits going with both the explosion and the sloshing machine. I like that. Yeah, I, I too like that. The more buckets, the better. Since in general, I feel like, needs. I feel like Metro Misfits <laughs> is going very much with a with a 2020 kind of loadout, having the the explosion, the Nautilus, the sloshing machine. It, it, it feels very modern. Whereas, whereas Carnage Gaming, I'm I'm surprised to see the the soda slosher actually. You don't see that one as much. Yeah, but other than say, that, we have our we have our classics. For Rainmaker, I could potentially see it. For Clan Blitz, it's a little bit different as well. It's like a very uh, tricky one to really work around with, especially with Splat Grenade and Storm. But they are getting splats where needed. The Jewelry Squelchers already have up to eight clans. So just need two more and their teammates immediately throw them. Might be a great chance to go for this push, but the rest of the team have spawned back in and they immediately go for the charge. That Nautilus, one of the more unique ones that does go down. Well-placed grenade from, uh, from Bronze there. And this could be a uh, this could be a uh, first clam push of the game if they can get this connected. Inkjet's going to push them all the way back. This is and their chance, and go. that's a score. Interestingly, Carnage Gaming seems to not be going for any of the the regular push specials like bubbles or like baller. And um, I think that made it a little bit harder. Oh, the push is already over actually. Yeah. They're not going to getting the power clam in, and they're down. Yeah, they had. They did have a football on that side, as you saw, but they got immediately taken out. So uh, no further damage. So um, not oh, the best push though. that they would have liked, but uh, the baller is going to come back in. Excellent way of Matt to save himself there, but didn't quite get the spot. That was probably yeah. actually the nerf, the nerf that the the baller got that might have uh, might have prevented the spot there. Because after bit. all, it does take a longer time now to explode. Yep, and it looks like Metro Misfits the... seems to be down by two people again. Yep, so as this could be Bronze another push is... coming. Another push gone the way as Bronze rolls on back down. This will be another attempt, and that is another successful score. And they immediately just go straight to the left-hand side. So I wonder if they can catch them off guard here. Looks like they're doing so. More clams in via the middle area, down to 55 now. There's still one lingering around. You can just see that. I think it's Bronze again, but I don't think they have the clams to really push this, so... 
They're gonna try and win these one v ones, but they are quickly retreating back into a, into a friendly little group. There, they're gonna going in for the doubles. Pushes have been surprisingly small so far, actually. I, you see, with this load, I would have expected, okay, Carnage Gamer is gonna have a really hard time to get into this because oh, this might be actually Mav. Mav might be Mav might be throwing the clam now. The bubbles yeah, are coming bubbles. in. They are coordinating. Oh, but Mav is in huge danger. Doesn't make it. He does not make it now. Oh, Gary is being taken down too. Car Carnage Gaming being in a very superior situ position here. Can Mirren? Mirren does not get the splash down. It's only the the Explosher left and the Explosher. At this point, just just run. If you're the Explosher at this point, just just run and don't run forward. <laughs> and so, well, there goes. <laughs> there, yep, there, never much. mind then. There goes that one. Yep. And Metro Misfits having a very good chance there pushing forward. As well. But it just doesn't. Didn't quite work out, whereas Carnage Gaming now opening up the basket again. Well, what I was about to say actually was like, I would have expected Carnage Gaming to have a really hard time opening the basket because they're lacking those aggressive specialists, but then having an easier time keeping her open with their with their main weapon. But the entire, the exact opposite is actually happening. Uh, Carnage <laughs> Gaming throwing in single clams, but just aren't quite able to to stay there once they, they've got the basket open. I think that's the big chance for Metro Misfits to take right now, is um, is try to be able to have that one that one prolonged push and then just oh. stay there. Okay, they're gonna try again. Yeah, they got and it. They go. got it. Much better Misfits. position this time around. They had the jump right in between all of the bubbles, so it just made them that much harder target. They do finally get the clams in, but they only got one additional one in there. And with one minute left on the clock, they still need to do another successful push here. So whilst they've managed to finally crack on through, Carnage Gaming have had three, yes, small pushes, but they've been consistent pushes. And winning down the 1v1 with the Inkjet as well. Oh, they get two the for that before they finally get out. But again, the damage has been done. That'll be enough time for Banana to get the go- Wait, they missed. They missed it! Oh, what? <laughs> it's oh, away. Okay, okay then. Uh, but Metro Misfits, is Metro Misfits still being taken down there. Oh no, I think in this situation, honestly, I think they should have they should have jumped back, regrouped. Instead of a crossing forward. But I mean, they don't have a lot of time left. And the clams are coming. Oh, Carnage, three more clams, the match is over. It's one, and two, three. There you go. There you go indeed. Again, like I said, sometimes they were small pushes, but they were consistent. They just had damage consistently on that board, and uh, that last one worked out perfectly for them. Despite the whiff, they had a power clam on backup, thankfully. And again, they just kept them in their spawn area at that point. There was nothing that they could do about it. So that's a 2-0 lead already for Carnage Gaming. They're definitely showing why they are, why they are, what, what happens if you put the best, some of the best players in, in Splatoon into one team and uh, send them into Ink Theory. Though I do have to say, there are some openings, like, they're not playing flawlessly. Those pushes were very small, they, they, like, they, they did let Metro Misfits push at one point. This is not hopeless, and I do think, I mean, I, honestly, I think Metro Misfits, like, they're going to have a hard time taking this back. But, like, towards the future of this tournament, I think that, um, like, more, even more experienced teams playing against Carnage Gaming, they, like, it's not hopeless for them. They're not, they're not playing flawlessly. Yeah. They're being very, very, very strong, but it's not flawless. And um, at this point, of course, like, if you're, if you're, like, looking at a team as strong as Carnage Gaming, um... Of course, you're not like you can't. You're not at the point anymore where you're pointing out the strengths. You're like, just trying to find the weaknesses, and yeah. um, that is probably what um, anybody who might have to play against them in the future is probably looking at at the moment. Um, whereas what we're looking at at the moment is the start of zones because they're already getting ready. Yep, yeah, and we got we we got a scope on one side and we got a bamboozler on the other, and I think we all know what that bamboozler will be rocking. Pretty much as much main power up as physically possible as Carnage Gaming immediately get things underway. Are they going to take the zone immediately? Well, they've got Ink Armor on their side, and they are indeed going to take the first points of this match. Already I like Mass Position there with the Nautilus, but oh. it's not quite enough to survive. Yeah. Spawn's like... usually a very, very dynamic position where you can try to stay safe. Yeah, and I love the fact that they have the Spider Shot Jr. coupled with the base, the, uh, not the base Spider Shot, the Tentatech Spider Shot. Both very good at doing turf, and obviously the Jr. with more of that ink coverage. And again, they're just consistently keeping the rest of Misfit Gaming just out, out into their own side here. They just can't seem to break out. They've got Splashdown, but again, they can't really get close enough to utilize it. And they're just keeping zoned out, which is the biggest danger in zones is that you just cannot come back in and that's like that is where where zones matches often and prematurely is by 
Oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, this one, though, is not going to end that early. That is yeah. about what I was about to say. Oftentimes, zones matches end prematurely because uh, one team just does not manage to come back in, even though usually they would be... In a, in a similar map situation, they would be would be strong enough. But it's just, in zones, you are forced to show that if you do not... Like, even if you do not have map advantage, you're still able to come back somehow. And that's kind of what makes it unique, that you're forced to play in a map disadvantage. Absolutely. And Metro Misfits has shown that it does take them a while, but they did take it back. And yeah. so they did give the, the penalty to Carnage Gaming, who is now trying to take this to take the zone back. Yeah, they and got the 1v1. Done. Nicely done there from Gary. They've got Incoma. Well, they've got Incoma nowhere near Charles, and they are going to force the Spear Bamboozler to not get anything on that one. Bamboozler can just be one of those things where if it just at least hits you, you're at least going down, but just could not get the hit on this occasion. And look at what Misfit Games immediately do. They've immediately covered turf on as many sides as possible, and it's such a such a good thing to do in this uh, in this type of environment. They're going up against three specials, on. though. Mirror, nice, trying to stay alive with the special. Oh, but look, it's a 3v1! They got one, though. They got Banana down at the very least, so it gives them one less to try and get this turf coverage, but they do take it anyway, pushing them as far back as they can, but they're still not out of this yet. There's still some danger, and you can just see them coming straight back in. I do believe that's the Nautilus over there. They got missiles, so let's see if they can retreat quick enough to utilize them. Metro Misfits at least getting close enough where you can start where you can start dreaming about about that comeback. And also <laughs> I always I always see them having their special sorry, they're waiting they're waiting for their perfect moment. They They've got are. one baller, one bomb launcher, but it seems like oh it seems like the baller isn't quite happening. Actually no, I think it. I think there would have been an ink chart, but well. Well, and the scope goes down as well, so uh, once again, Carnage Gaming getting that consistency on their side. They, they always seem to get the splats when they absolutely need to. So as you see, Misfit Gaming coming straight back in. And Gary pops in Karma, hopefully that will give their team a little bit of an advantage to get through. Does get the 1v1 on the Slosher, this will be a great chance to go up for it. The Splatter Scope is up there, but they're being harassed here by... Metro's can't get that special this is the special stuff, this is the Oh, Metro is too down. That's... There it is. Wait, they got the zone. They got the zone. It's Oh my gosh, it's a penalty. The penalty's back. Metro is entirely wiped. They gave up all of their lives for this one, but they did give back the penalty to Carnage Gaming, prolonging this match just a little bit further. Yeah, just absolutely crucial. Stuff like that can, can just swing around, even if it's just for a blink of an eye, a half a second. Sometimes that's all it needs. But look how quickly they're running through the penalty points. It might not even matter their in lifeline. the grand scheme of things, Metro but they can take it away, but it's just and the scope. And now they're three down. It's just Benny left. Benny, Benny does have a suction bomb launcher, but it's... Oh, he's not surviving, though. No, and the splatter scope really isn't going to be able to help with the turf coverage enemy anyway, and that is going to be a clean 3-0 on the side of Carnage Gaming. As a result, just, again, just, just too powerful here. Chat was was posting a lot of sheep, hoping for the the reverse sweep. Um, <laughs> guys, guys, we gotta we gotta move to New Zealand. Seems like you, we need we need more sheep in this in this household. It <laughs> but it was a nice start. It's, it's, it's like the, the the fault was certainly there, but uh, yeah, Carnage Gaming just uh, again. Every single time they were able to at least go for, even if they lost, if like you said, just that half a second. It didn't really matter in the end. They were able to get the splats and immediately just push them all back. And it's like, okay, sure, it's just the splatter scope that's left, but the suction bomb launcher wasn't quite ready in time, and the splatter scope is certainly not known for its turf coverage. So there's nothing they could have really done there. So it was, uh, it's unfortunate to see that kind of stuff happen. But uh, credit where credit is due, they didn't give up. They certainly didn't give up. But Carnage Game was just too strong for them in the end. I love though how how much Metro Misfits was still able to fight in this match. Sometimes you have situations where you have a stronger team playing against a weaker team and the stronger team, like you could basically the weaker team at that point, like I've been in that situation where I've played against a team where I thought, you know what, I might as well just stay in spawn, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I think Metro Misfits, actually they did get their training out of this. I think they they learned some lessons. They they will probably watch this set. Um, hi, hi guys, if you're watching this set afterwards, <laughs> hey, hello there. Uh, they will probably be watching this set and see where they could have behaved differently. They will actually get another chance at watching their own gameplay because, of course, they did with this match make it into the into the um, third. Yeah, they get go, to the play place for match. bronze. Uh, we, do we have a team yet? No, I think Brainlets are currently two zero up against IPS. Sucks. So. Waiting on more results from that for the time being, but uh, yeah, like I said, credit where credit is due to Metro Misfits. They certainly didn't give up, and it feels like they got better as the matches went on. Like, 
they lost mm, the, they lost in KO pretty much immediately in Rainmaker, but the the second and third matches they did show signs of coming back at them, albeit unfortunately the first push in Clan Blitz was unfortunate to say the least, where they managed to get the football and then unfortunately they just didn't throw it. <laughs> so it happens like that. Sometimes it's just like you have that sort of like that second that little doubt in that moment and anything can happen. <laughs> Definitely. So we're currently, um, you can see that this match went went particularly quickly. Brainless versus IPS sucks. So those two teams. Well, we're, we're gonna see, <laughs> we're gonna see see everybody um, in these in these matches. Um, I'm not sure if we have casted a match with any of those two teams actually. So those are two two wild cards. Um, if things go the way they are going right now, then we will probably have a third place match of Metro Misfits versus IPS Sucks. Um, again, IPS Sucks actually being led by IPS, because because again, otherwise you wouldn't let that username that team name through. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it only works if you are the one who is uh, <laughs> who who gave the order for that to happen in your own team. Exactly, like... exactly. As the as as a a lover of self deprecating jokes. Um... <laughs> You you self deprecate. You do not you do not deprecate others. No no no. But no, if you no, self deprecate, then, not. <laughs> then that is all right. Uh, uh, so whilst we await the results of the second match, which we will get results on it very very shortly, um, I must ask uh, Snowpoke. Uh, out of all of your tournaments that you've done so far. I know this one hasn't finished yet, but which one do you have the most fond memories of? Ooh, well, I remember... I I remember one tournament where there was a... I think it was one of the semi-finals, which was also... It was also with Metro Misfits, actually, which was the, the hypest match that we have here, we have ever had. Um, that was a... I, a particularly great experience. I was even even wondering maybe I should just like upload that match just standalone onto YouTube because it was so exciting. Um, as far oh, wow. as as the competitive aspect goes, that was probably my favorite moment of In Theory. Um, as far as the tournaments themselves go, I was very 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 positively surprised by the very first In Theory, where like people came, teams came to support me that. I did not expect would be would be there to make sure that the Ink Theory tournament line would be a success. Like we Aww. had Element R, we had um, we had Day Old Sushi, um, we had the the winner in the end ended up being um, Rat Nation, who had Puni Bunny actually in the team, which made me very oh, excited. Gosh. I love I <laughs> love her art so much. I was so happy. You have no idea. So um, I was I was just like really really surprised by all the support that I got for the for the very first tournament, and I think. The first tournament you run, you will you will always remember. Um, just oh, yeah. like just like Carnage Gaming and Brainlets are going to remember that they just made it into the grand finals because Brainlets defeated IPS Sucks in a clear 3-0. So that's two 3-0s. Two 3-0s in the top four cut then. We'll see if the bronze match and the grand finals will go the same way or if they'll be that little bit closer. I certainly hope so. I certainly hope that we can get at least a match four in one of those. I've, I've got a good feeling about this, actually. Looking at, I think IP, both IPS Sucks, Metro Misfits, and Brainlets Carnage Gaming have happened before in the Swiss, in the Swiss stage. And as far as I have heard, those were incredibly, incredibly close matches. So basically, anything, anything could happen. The question is, how exhausted are they? Are they able to show the performance that they showed hours ago, still after all of these hours of gaming? Or will they will they probably be too exhausted to be attentive at all at all possible moments? Well, we're going to find out very, very shortly. And obviously, I guess for the third place playoff, it's not so bad. It's only another best of five. For the grand finals, it's a best of seven, if I remember correctly. So yeah, just uh, no pressure. No pressure in the slightest. Yeah, exactly. The third place. So what we gotta keep in mind is that um, since we will be watching the third place match first, the, the players of the grand finals they actually have to take a forced break right now, and they um, yeah they basically just have to sit here and watch the tournament. And which of course is great that they're getting a break and all, but I mean it's light. <laughs> Many of these teams are actually from Europe. And, yeah, I was gonna um, say I'm I'm in the UK. It is bang on 10 p.m. here, so um, exactly you know, it's 11 it'll be p.m. Fine. for me. It'll be fine. 
And I, I know some people, some people actually do like to go to bed early or, well, I mean, early as far, like, I mean, 1 p.m., 1 a.m., I guess, can be early for some people. And so... <laughs> I saw that conversation in the Discord where someone was like, I'll stay up until 2 a.m. It's like, are you sure you can be okay with that? <laughs> Ah. So then, it seems like we're already getting started, though, with the bronze match. Yeah, also, by the way, like people it. have been asking before about the the team logos, like, what is up with this Team A, Team B? And basically, <laughs> as a team that participates in a tournament, you actually are not required to to send in a, a logo. Like, for example, if you like, if you've got a bunch of friends and you decide five minutes before the line before the um before the um uh, what you call it the um, sign-up ends, you decide, hey, I want to play in this tournament, then you probably do not have the time to come up with a logo. And so <laughs> you just get a logo by me and, oh. um, well, you just end up being team A, team a or team B. <laughs> yeah, a fun story about team logos. Uh, for the Splatoon 2, um, for the um, Splatoon 2 Championship, I did one of the online qualifiers for this past year for ESL. And I wanted to have the team logos of those who had currently qualified. And when I learned that Team 4D, who have been around for years, don't actually have a team logo, I was like, what? what? <laughs> How? How what? do you not have a team logo? That makes no sense. So what I essentially did was I found a red donut and just put it in. <laughs> <laughs> I just put in a red donut because donut is part of 4D and I thought it would be a nice time. <laughs> Honestly, I should do that. Just like whenever I see a team without a logo, I'm just gonna make up my own logo, and um, I'm just gonna gonna see what they say. To be honest, like I already do some slight editing on team logos actually, so I have to Photoshop them anyways to fit into the overlay. And so sometimes I I see that like something like for example, there was one team that actually took a screen like their logo was a screenshot of their logo, which contained the mouse <laughs> pointer and the <laughs> and the desktop bar. So I, I Photoshop those out quickly. Ah, oh, that's funny. And yeah, for those who don't know what, what 4D is, 4D, um, so Dude is in 4D, uh, yep. Dragonuto is in 4D. Yeah. It's basically a team of players that all, their names all start with D. And that's basically, it's like, I know them as like Dude's British team. Like whenever there's a, a British yeah. tournament, there's 4 <laughs> Pretty much is. Because um, it, it was funny because I had Donut, who is co-casting, who is obviously part of that team. And <laughs> as we showed off the logo, I was like, oh yeah, Donut, I hope you don't mind we have this as your logo. She was like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> All right, and with okay, that talk about started. logos out of the way, we're going to start our bronze match. And we're going to another bamboozler already. It's another bamboozler versus splatterscope match. Are you kidding me? We're seeing a lot of lot of bamboo today. We actually, I think we've seen we've seen more bamboo than we've seen CDS, which somewhat makes me happy. Even though even though bamboo, had, like I mean, does have this this stigma at the moment of being carried by by MPU by main power up, but. In general, I think it doesn't tend to be that popular within the community. But it's, I mean, guys, I mean, like, if you remember one year ago, everybody was joking about Bamboo, Bamboozler, and now here we are. Like, <laughs> I mean... Here we are, it's now part of the meta, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> it's pretty much I'm, exactly I'm kind that. of happy for all of those people that practiced Bamboozler all over the past years, and now here we are. And as our Clam Blitz match gets underway, we've already got a Clam on the field in the form of IPS, who is uh, just uh, waiting for the rest of the team, although they are going to lose the Splash Scopes. Gal is down on the other side as well, so it's really just biding their time, doing full well that the rest of the team know that they're there, so it's really just hoping that their team can at least carry on forward and get the splats where they can, but so far they're not doing so, already down to two. And they come so now we're in this phase where grid. both teams are trying to collect more clams, just getting more map control. They've both been very. Oh, oh what's happening there? Oh, oh, oh the surprise! The surprise Somebody is behind, behind there. Oh, it was a bit of a uh, dangerous position. Curlers come and come through as well. Now they've got two footballs on their side of the field, so uh, stacking up the pressure here. But so far, they haven't been able to crack through this defense as more missiles come down. But it seems like both teams, they're just, they're just like con contemplative, just trying to, just like honestly, kind of what we saw by Carnage Gaming, waiting until the moment has come. And just in this case, it just takes a little bit longer for, for this moment to be, to be coming. Interestingly, despite IPS, IPS having the, 
having the upper hand as far as clams goes. Um, Metro Misfits doing a really good job there pushing forward. It's just like they just kind of don't have a clam. But I mean, good, good job in pushing forward. Um, yeah. <laughs> they pushed forward trying to get that splat, but now we got a double jump happening, and that was the last thing they wanted. That's going to be two free dunks pretty much. And they got away as well, which is even better. Already down to 60, and they'll take that. Getting in those double clams always. Always very, very useful because, um, especially in competitive, usually you do have situations where double clams are being thrown. Now, of course, if Metro Misfits manages to also get their double clams in, um, they will still not have the lead because if there is a tie, you by default, as soon as the basket time ends, um, you will be dropping one point. And so yeah, it is certainly an advantage to get that double throw first. Oh, Mav with a very, very risky attempt to attack here. That Nozzle was is very a strong close. one. That's that's they got scary. a little bit of a tag, we just couldn't get the, the, uh, the full-on splat, and this could be another push Come in here if they can keep this up. Although I think that they still might have ranged him a little bit, but I don't think they realized Snipes was there, the gal, and is going to get taken out as a result. That's a little shot on the bamboo. And another one! That's snipes on a roll those here! beautiful Snipes. I think I actually remember playing against them in solo queue, and um, it, it usually tends to be a very short match. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say Snipes is uh yeah they they, they 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 live up to their name of that there is no doubt as we go all the way down to thirty we've got somebody on the back there as well behind the van and that's gonna come come up with a whole lot of pressure you just see more clams rolling in I think that was Snipes again and IPS has some as well are they gonna take the risk they are gonna take the risk and that is a KO brilliant wow. push in the end that was so quick. They knew exactly what they were doing. I was like, like I said, snipes on a roll with those, uh, with those, uh, with those charged shots. And there was nothing that they could do. And the, se the second you had two round, you had one pass behind the van, and you had snipes still throwing in clams as well. It was just like this is a bit of a wall that you can't really get out of. It like, no, no one of two things normally happen at that kind of point in clam blitz. You suddenly risk that wipe. Or you've actually got the jump on the entire team. You're in a position where they can't take advantage off of you. And you just get splat after splat. And you get the KO. Just as you saw. I've also just been informed by Wargan. Wargan actually noticed that um, the, there was a was a slight audio issue with the, the gameplay. So thank you so much, Ooh. Wargan. Um, <laughs> oh no. I actually, I mean, you probably know it as a streamer that like all like all sorts of machines, they have their own audio delay. Like for example, the, the, the microphone has an audio delay and you kind of have to make sure that it matches up with the, the camera yeah. and yeah, all of those things. And I actually have a 300 millisecond audio delay on the gameplay audio. And so if I forget to add that 300 millisecond delay on the gameplay visuals, it can, like, so, luckily enough, some people noticed, and Worgen did, and saved me there. Because I yeah, would have I... seen that afterwards in the tournament, and I would have been, I would have not been very happy about that. <laughs> That's not the kind uh, of thing you want to, you want to see afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, I have had moments like that where I've done the first round of a set, and it's like, oh, by the way, the game audio wasn't on, it's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it hurts so much when it happens. <laughs> All right, Splat Zones is coming up. Match number two, my friends. And oh, look, we've got a colorful soda social. And we've got an Elita. Are you absolutely kidding? <laughs> oh, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> the Elita is back. And that's Benny, oh. isn't it, on the Elita? I mean, to be fair, it has one of the longer ranges in the game. And it is on Makamot, which is one of the more open stages in the game. So it's, you know, we'll see what it, we'll see what it could do. But it'll take a while. It'll take a while to get into the thick of things. But it, you can already see it just sort of like just... Just lingering back in a little bit. Obviously, you know, that's what charges do, but uh, already IPS do have the initiative, but they are slowly losing it out. The cloud is not going to take it away from them on this occasion. Be safer. Mav, yeah. is, Mav just spent half of his time with Inkjet trying to just trying to survive because he was in such a dangerous position. And now Mav <laughs> is also still, they're still too down. Yeah, again, they're this is a very, a bit, very honestly, dangerous honestly, position Honestly, they have to, to go back. They have to just try to survive. They're in a really, really bad spot here. This is not looking There's good for them still at being all. Picked. They have to get their specials immediately. They cannot spend any time trying to attack as long as they don't have their specials. Now, there's no point, especially with K having theirs, and they're going to immediately force them into another position. And they're already down a 10. This is going to go incredibly quickly. And they're already two down again. This is, oh, no this is an absolute shutout on zones right now. Oh, that was the complete shutout. Oh, no way. That's oh. the worst thing that can have happen to you in zones, is that 
that you just you just get uh, get zoned out and you just can't come back. And like even honestly, I've been play I've played against teams that I knew had weaker players than me. But sometimes if you're zoned out, like being zoned out is the hardest the hardest part about about zones. It's like what do you do when you're zoned out? Because it's so 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 difficult. And IPS sucks was definitely skill enough skilled enough to be able to exploit this really difficult situation they put Metro Misfits in and then it just they just didn't come back. Yeah, it was unfortunate that they had nothing that they could really do about it. And again, going into a 1v1 when you don't have your special, knowing full well that your opponent has the splashdown, that 1v1 is never going to go in your favor, especially when you're in that tight spot. Like, Makamar is an open stage and as a result, you can exploit and position players to go exactly where you want them to go. And in that specific spot, you either getting splatted or you're jumping off the map. It, there's, there's, there's no way out unless you win that fight. So, uh, and before we, yeah. before we start this match, I want to quickly remind you guys, the winner of this match is going to be third place and they will be winning $25 that they can donate to a charity of their choice. And they will be winning a drawing, a half-body drawing by Lonely Days. You can see her art in the bottom right. She's an incredibly, incredibly skilled artist who works really, really hard on every art piece that she, that she does. So um, this is this upcoming game. If... Um, if IPS Talks wins this one, then here we go. We've got we've got our first prize winner. Prices yeah. prices are now actually happening. We've been talking about them in theory, but now prices are actually nah. they're turning into into practice. <laughs> That's just a theory, an ink theory. Absolutely. <laughs> for watching, sorry, I'm so sorry. No, it's look, fine. Look, it's fine. It I do that. I do that all the time. Hey, hey alls, no okay. here. <laughs> all right. And now we're going to Tower Control Piranha Pit, which let's face it, let's we're glad it's not Rainmaker because it's a very different stage on Piranha Pit. I love Rainmaker Piranha Pit. It's actually so this do tournament I. too. I, I love the fact that it starts so differently. Um, but yeah, we still got the conveyor belt in action and we got the designated path and we've already lost the Nautilus, which is, is a, not a great start. Um, can they get the spy with the Splash Machine at least? They can okay, at we least. It's like a two. double it. two! Oh, and K is in- Oh my gosh, K actually got a trade out of this. K was in such an awkward position. And, like, if you if you know you're dead, then, like, your, your question is, am I gonna try to jump out or am I gonna try to take the trade honorably? And K went for the honorable trade and it worked out for them. So, yeah. congratulations. Be, That's it. Metro Misfits now pushing the Rainmaker. And but. to be fair, to be fair to them, it wasn't just, like, just a 1v1 trade. They got two before then. That was a really decent triple. And the Charger gets one as well as the Aftershock goes down. Uh, they have managed to take the initial lead, but uh, couldn't quite get it to the first checkpoint. So with a minute gone on the clock, it's still it's still early days, but uh, they have you know a ten point lead at least. And seeing that the push was stopped at eighty three, it kind of makes me think maybe this was a little bit of an unwise decision. Usually, making the first checkpoint on this map is not necessarily that difficult because the tower moves into your direction. So yeah, there might have been. They might have been a bit too overzealous here. That being said, they can try again because IPS sucks. Actually, just lost two of their players. Yeah, that's another great, uh, great spot that they find them in. And uh, Marin can't get the spot on this occasion. They do decide to jump out, again. and the Stingray is also going to come out, trying to protect the tower, but it's not going to happen on this occasion. And whilst they do get points on the board on the first checkpoint, they aren't going to get through it on this occasion. They did an excellent job. They're pushing them back with that, with that suction bomb rush. Interesting decision by, um, by, uh, wait a second, IPS sucks actually, by IPS sucks to, uh, use the, oh, there we go, there's the lead, to use the, uh, <laughs> bomb rush charger instead of the stingray charger. But yeah, I think, was... like, honestly, if your bomb rush works, if you have the bombs all around the tower, um, that holds people away from the tower just as well as the stingray does. And I guess on a map like this, where you have a lot of corners, maybe yeah, that to... just makes for the better decision. Yeah, and to be fair, they did pretty much get a near wipe as well, which is why they got to push all the way up to checkpoint two, and uh, and they passed checkpoint two at this point. They are on an absolute roll, finally taken down, but it was a trade again. They're not gonna like that in the in the at all, and that's checkpoint three as well, with two and a half minutes left on the clock. Snipes is just dancing around that tower, been an absolute nuisance. Finally, does get taken down, but they broke through all three checkpoints in one move, and that means if. IPS sucks ever gets into a advantageous position like we just saw. Now they do not have any step points that they will have to go through, which means things will be considerably faster and considerably less dangerous. So they yep. might be eyeing the KO at this point. But of course, I for Metro Misfits, the question is just, will they make it through the checkpoint? 
How many Man, seconds will they make it through and can they take the lead back? And you see the fact that two of them immediately just sort of like lingering back a little bit and now IPS is just waiting to see if anybody's going to come forward. They probably know that the Spanner Scope is there. Mavlin's going to come forward with the Nautilus and probably hop on that tower and immediately start getting it back to the center. They need to get more points on the board with a minute and 40 left on the clock. Just, you have to keep your eyes open, you have to keep that communication going, and I don't know if they spotted the fact that they are being taken out by Safe S by the again. Oh, look at that movement. <laughs> no nothing slow about it as they retake the tower again. It's another jump out as well. And not going to win the 1v1 on this occasion though, that is going to go the way of the slushy machine. Can they get the double? Not quite, but I think the splashdown did get taken out regardless, so... It's still a good chance to get a push back, okay, and it is going to get back to the middle. Splashdown. Yeah, splashdown comes and out. One map minute control, on the map clock control, slowly coming back. It. And well, there's the. We can see IPS sucks. They're all waiting on the back lines there for the Metro Misfits to arrive. Yeah, Marin, You see, usually really... we think well they have to attack and all, but they they actually don't because the the opponents there they're gonna send right into the face anyways, courtesy of the tower. Yep, they got it again. They got a 4-2 to two advantage, and now it's just the uh, the nozzle node that's left in Snipes. Snipes is saying, no, 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 this is ours to win, not yours. <laughs> uh, always a bit now of show about to be had. Left too. So this is... I don't know what they... I don't know what Metro Misfits can do at this point. They need to... Well, I mean, the map control... What I got to say, like, throughout this entire thing, they've always been really good with map control. So they do leave themselves a little bit of an opening there, but they were again being taken down. Two people being taken down by IPS sucks. And, and so that... I don't think they will be able to save it at this point. Nope, and they most certainly can't. They just see the snipes just casually hops off the tower because they know they have it in the bag. It's another 3 0. And this one is going to go the way of IPS sucks. And it does mean that they kind of don't suck really because they will take third place. And as you say, they get a nice little piece of art to their names. They they very much do. Um, I gotta quickly. So before we go into the grand finals, I I got to quickly um, figure some things out. Um, grand finals always as the the most special as the most special event. Um, we gotta make sure that we are or all properly prepared. So I will I will have to head out for a few minutes actually because I also need to go to the bathroom after. Wait, I've been I've been commentating for how many? Wait, how long has this tournament been going? Wait a second. Let's take a look at the schedule. So I started at 19 o'clock my time, and now it's 23. Oh, wow. Yo, this has been speedy. Like, we are, we are way ahead of schedule. Yeah, this is... Like, has, way this has been, ahead of schedule. This has been very quick. <laughs> okay, this is not just... <laughs> this is not just the, the biggest ink theory ever. It is also the fastest ink theory ever. <laughs> You wouldn't think that would that would be how it works. You would think the bigger it is, the longer it goes on. Yeah, right. That's this is not what I expected to happen, but I guess here we are. Um, <laughs> but yeah, again, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta disappear for a second while I also go to the bathroom and then set up the grand finals, which is going to be between Brainlet and Carnage Gaming. So I hope you're all gonna be excited for that and. Um, yeah, uh, Lila, if you want to take a break, you are, that is fine. Or you can also just chat with the wonderful people that are <laughs> sharing their excitement and making me draw some, some things, apparently, in, in this chat. <laughs> oh, to be fair, the chat's going to do their thing. You, you, you know the chat. It's like the second you go into intermission, you'll come back and you'll just see a flood of emotes. <laughs>
Okay then. Oh, you just asked. Wait, <laughs> she just sent me a message in in Discord. If you hear, if you heard the, the clickety clacks, um, she, <laughs> Lila, Lila, <laughs> hi, I'm back. <laughs> hi, back. I'm. No, I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna continue on with that. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I know. The tune is all we've about got people puns, in chat for not. those jokes. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. So I deserve I... it. <laughs> Wait, I've got a little bit prepared for this, so let me quickly figure this out. As we are going for the grand finals. All right, let me reset it. Yep. Oh, I was bopping to that. <laughs> <laughs> able to continue to continue bopping to that uh <laughs> ah here we go okay the grand finals they deserve they deserve their own hype music everybody <laughs> let's get ready for the the grand finals of ink theory july is going to be brainlets is going to be here we go. Brainlets versus Carnage Gaming. One team is pretty much undefeated in this tournament so far. Yes, and the other team is a sponsored high-level team. So look at Brainlets. Also, guys, uh, give me quick feedback since I've been, I've literally like, I had the, the idea of having, having hype music for the grand finals like right today. So I prepared this like literally a few hours ago. How's the volume? Is this good? <laughs> I mean, it's good on my side. I mean, obviously the chat will let you know if it's uh, if it's a bit too loud. Ooh, apparently they're saying it's sort of color quiet. Oh, that's we can't have that. What? <laughs> Could be louder. I am okay. Do 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 drop the bass. <laughs> sure, sure, <laughs> sure. I guess. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> So, um, I think, honestly, Brainless and Carnage Gaming, they've been, they've been sitting here for a while, waiting for me to get ready. Oh, Wargan wants more bass. <laughs> yeah, don't, please don't bass boost it, that, that would just destroy everybody's ears. <laughs> no, I think, I think I am fine without extra bass as okay, well. Good. And yes, guys, we are reaching the, the Grand Finals. Let me quickly see if the pings... Yeah, for those of you who are just joining oh, us excellent. for the Finals, it's been a lot of fun so far. Obviously, we had baggage for the first six rounds of the Swiss side of things. So, uh, massive thank you to Baggage for doing what they uh, what they do best. Uh, always appreciated. And uh, Snowpoke obviously has been here from start to finish because, hey, it's her tournament. That's how it goes. <laughs> Um, and also, thank you very much for having me. Always appreciate it. Oh, of course, of course, of course. I am, um, I am very, very, very happy to have experienced casters by by my side. And I mean, I personally, like as a as a tournament host, I am getting more and more experienced over time. But it's still, it's a long process. It's um... yeah. I've had a, I've had and a I lot mean... of people say the same. Like when when I started off, and versus to what I now do now, it's like people are like oh yeah you could tell the difference it's like so once you get into the hang of it you just suddenly find like little things that you improve on as each event goes on so yeah give, you know another few tournaments and you'll be you'll be smashing them out of the park that would be that would be awesome one day one day <laughs> i mean i also have this like edit edit effect of not being a native speaker so sometimes my my phrasing might be a little bit off but honestly you that's got just... this that's, that's just a special feature at this point. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice way of putting it, I guess. So we're currently trying to figure out who is going to who is going to let me into this lobby. We have so many highly highly experienced expert players in this match that me, a lowly a lowly commentator. <laughs> has a really hard time getting getting into the into the lobby because apparently Splatoon doesn't like to show me who is. I mean, who is having the lobbies open? 
Splatoon is like, nah, 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 nah. Below, below 2,500, we're not gonna let anybody into this lobby. <laughs> yeah. It's like, did, did you think we were gonna go through this without one technical hitch? <laughs> right, right. I mean, I'm, I'm not counting the disconnect that you had at the start of the tournament. I watched that happen. I felt so bad for you. But at the same time, massive credit to Baggage for continuing on because he didn't get <laughs> disconnected. Was it was so weird. <laughs> So whilst we are having all of these get fixed and whatnot, just gonna quickly ask the chat. I know I typed it uh, a couple minutes ago, but uh, I just want to ask uh, directly to you all: um, Who here wants to see us go all the way to a match number seven? Like, even even if you're supporting one side or the other, as a as, for those of you who are neutral, and especially for us as casters, you would love to see a match seven. Like, you always want to see a final go the distance. Well, I've got good news. Like, those teams, again, like, they had a match earlier, and uh, there was a 2-2-1 a um, with Brainlets winning, and I, I am very, like, honestly, I am very hopeful about this. This might finally be the Ink Theory where the biggest match is going to be the Grand Finals. Oftentimes, actually, the Bronze match tends to be more hype than the Grand Finals, but this time... I feel like we're in for something special. This might be this might be the moment, the moment where Ink Theory gets to shine. Ah, that would that would be great. That would be absolutely great. And do I do I hear the call? Do I hear the call from Undertale? Um, it might be. I, I kind of like when I when I choose music, I try to choose music that isn't immediately recognizable, so that people don't. Don't, Sorry, like, that, that doesn't get through me, I'm afraid. <laughs> but I guess, I guess you guys are too good at video games. <laughs> oh, and yes, I should have, of course, um, I, I want to point out the remix music that they're hearing right now in the background is actually, those are all remixes by Noteblog. Um, you guys might know their YouTube channel. If you like, if you like YouTube music or like video game music, you probably know their, you know their remixes. And um, that is who I, I chose to have like awesome hype music in the background while we are getting ready for those grand finals. Actually, I feel like this might be a mix between Core and Hotlands, actually. No, no, I think, think yeah, I think there are, like, there are some remixes that are actually mixes. Uh, there anyway. are it some remixes that are, <laughs> are mix-ups. That being said, guys, we're starting the grand finals of Ink Theory. Let's get Brain that hype in gaming. the chat. Let's go. Oh, first blaster of the tournament. Let's go. And flings a roller. <laughs> hey. They're coming out with all of the stops here. You love to see it happen. So Carnage Gaming in the orange and in the purple will be the brainlets. And already it's going to be Miso who goes down to the Splatling remix. So you're going to see that we are pretty much going to be uh, directly pointed at that tower. And then immediately going to take the advance. And here comes the first Booyah of the game. And there's the counter booyah, of course. <laughs> Making sure it's just just landing at the checkpoint. But they might still look? pass it. Oh, oh, they need one more frame. Oh. Go on, come on, get back on there. There we go, there, there we go, there we go. go. <laughs> yeah, it was like for a split second you thought there's no way they're gonna leave it. It's just one little little tiny millimeter, not on this occasion. But they have pushed all the way to the second. The flinger does remain on there. They just quickly dip out as they are getting completely shut down there by Wumi. And they do get the retreat and finally pushing back towards the middle. Waka will get a Booyah off to just wait in a little bit. Finally throws it to I'd the left one... and now they're going to... Oh, nice flat against oh. Q. Once, one checkpoint, I think this is... Um, this is not the end of the world. On this map, I would say... Like, I've seen a lot of chaos on this map and I could imagine that um, this legacy, the legacy of Black Valley Skate Park as, oh, excuse me, Humpback Huntrack as one of the maps where um, where matches, matches go all the way to the KO line. Um, I think that legacy is going to continue here as um, we have two teams that are incredibly close and yet one of them did make it to 47. But now let's see how is, how our brainlets are, how are they gonna try and take this back? We've got two, we've got Wumi and Rachel back on the tower and where is it, where is Carnage Gaming? I'm confused, where are they all? 
Yeah, well, it looks like they're all back towards their own spawn area, which is a very odd thing to see, considering that everybody is back up. Booyah is going to come on up when we throws it right at the ink rail that pops it into their colour as well, so they can't get through on that occasion. But again, Booyah immediately forces the veto off that tower, and they are going to maintain lead and it's actually get two spots in the process. And it's interesting to see how the um, the teams actually do try to take out down each other's booyah bombs all the time. Um, I even saw earlier the decision made to have the inkjet. The inkjet was actually trying to take down the booyah with, an, with the inkjet shots, which is very, very difficult. They don't do a lot of damage. So that is a considerable considerable coordination feat to, to do there if you're actually risking your specials to take down the booyah bomb. And in that yeah. particular case, it didn't quite work out. Let's see if we will at some point in this match see, uh, see one or two one or two stop we want. This is always the most satisfying thing to see. Yeah, we got just the uh, the base. Well, not just the base sloshes, the hero slosher with the missiles ready and primed and marked right at the tower. And once again, it's just a get off the tower button. Just like the Booyah Bomb, the Ink Jet's gonna come out in retaliation, but there's nobody on the tower, so it's gonna go back towards the middle again. And Rachel, not in the best spot in the world, and then Wall is just gonna just this is immediately one, this knock is one them back. For, for brain Lutz. Carnage Gaming wasn't in a bit of a disadvantage there. Oh, but there are so many explosives, and Waka doesn't make it. Wumi is trying, but Wumi is in a huge danger. Now Wumi is also down. Yeah, and now it's only one left. For Brandon. That's another two Wumi for basically. And again, it's the um, again they have that pincer movement. Like they've got the slosher that covers up a lot of uh, a lot of different approaches. And you also had another weapon on the side. I couldn't see who the other weapon was. It might have been the the T Tech. But between the pair of them, they've got two splats between them. And back toward the middle, and back on the tower are Carnage Gaming. Carnage Gaming now has a has a very nice chance to improve their lead. Oh, by being by taking down two opponents. And there's the special, there's the inkjet, there's the booyah bomb. Three down, three down on Brainlets. Yeah, Four just, down, that's just it. They're gonna, they're gonna expand their lead. That <laughs> Even shooting at the spawn. And Q is gonna take that immediately a moment and to just go straight in. So trying is to the take down everybody who jumps down. Oh, and but the rain, the tower is stopped. Brock is being stopped too, and Q and Banana oh. were still trying to take all the jumpers. But they're forgetting the, about the tower. They're forgetting about the tower. Q is gonna. Are they gonna try and make it back to the tower? They're trying to, but they can't quite make it. They got the one to one such a good in the end, any, but any possible again, respawner, it's just, but it's just. But it it's wasn't pushing. enough to to stop them from the tower. No, it wasn't. Like it was just unfortunate they had two in the spawn area, and the two who were on the tower just unfortunately got taken out. Smartling should be able to get the roller. No, doesn't actually get the roller. Actually gets taken out as a result. The Kenza Pro is pushing all the way up and the tower is back in the center. It's a 3 to 2 advantage as the Booyah is going to come up again. Oh, they should it. get the Spun and Banana. It does. Now this two could down be... For Carnage. This could be this lead. Dangerous. This, this, yeah, this, this could honestly, be lead. Where, where is Carnage Gaming? I can't see them anywhere. Look at the map control. The map control is huge. is coming. Oh, and they stop. Oh my gosh, Carnage Gaming is still 3 down. This is a huge it's push. Oh, they're wiped. It's this a wipe with 15 seconds to go, and that's lead as well! Carnage Gaming oh, led no from way. the start, and they're gonna lose it right at the Five end! Seconds. Five seconds, three! Oh, they stopped, they stopped, they stopped! Okay, there's one more, okay, but the... <laughs> the Booyah Bomb is still there. No, the Booyah Bomb okay, was wow, just outside is... of reach, it was just outside of the reach of the tower, so... Carnage Gaming <laughs> had this on overtime, as long as they stay on the tower, they'll take this, but if they get taken down, as long as somebody from a brain that can just touch it just for a second, that will be and got all bombs. they need. Oh, there's the blaster. Banana is now down, and Rachel's on it. Yeah, that's there it. you go. <laughs> there you winning. go. You see, it's not quite, not quite what I, what I assumed would happen throughout the first few minutes or the first four minutes of this match, but um, here we go. They took it back. Excellent job. <laughs> Yeah, brilliantly done there from Brainless. They left it right to the end of that. There is no doubt they were behind for, what was that, four and a half minutes? But in the last 30 seconds, as long as you're leading when time is over, that is the most important thing. And again, good shout out from Carnage Game. They did so well that just unfortunately that wipe, that wipe absolutely threw them and they couldn't get out of their spawn for a good while there as well. It was just unfortunate because they had so many good plays as well so many pins and movements that worked in their favor but it just goes to show that these two teams are so so close to each other here that this could still go either way and now we've got a classic rainmaker art academy though i also have to say at this point now carnage gaming is trailing against the team that has defeated them before um so they gotta they gotta stay calm they gotta make sure they keep their confidence because of course, like I mean, 
like we can see as the as the objective outsider okay i'm not sure how objective we are but like as the outsiders like we have a slightly better chance of being objective as see, at seeing how good carnage gaming did but if you're in the middle of this if you're at the grand finals of a tournament that may i say is actually kind of big um <laughs> of course there's a huge pressure on them and now and now they see that they are up against the one opponent that they so far just have not been able to defeat but they've came so close, especially in that first point. We're going to see a Squelcher coming out and that Slosher coming back. The Dynamo is back on on the side of Brainless, and obviously so too are the Custom Duel of Squelchers. Both sides rocking the Enzap and the Kenza T. Uh, the, yeah, the Kenza Splash Shot, which is always nice to see. And Incarm is already ready, and they're probably going to get a chance to activate it as well. Beautiful. Okay, so you see the Slosher trying to run away, Banana? Not even getting the trade. Wow, three down already. Carnage Gaming being a huge disadvantage. And this is Rainmaker, guys. Don't forget this. Oh, no. This is Rainmaker. Oh. If there's a three down situation, that is that is a problem. We've seen the last time we had Rainmaker on this map. The map ended in like 30 seconds, I think. So, yeah, that's, um, that's pizza time. That, that, that's good old pizza time if that happens. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen on this occasion. They Carnage Gaming are pushing them back. And Banana will grab hold of the Rainmaker and will turn them temporarily into Banana. I'm sorry. I'm, that I'm is, sorry. That is actually, honestly, honestly, that uh, still, still a better name than Rainmaker. Rainmaker is such a weird name for for this weapon, and um, I will take I will take anything as an alternative. <laughs> well, Rainmaker is unfortunately going to go down. Unfortunately, Wumi just completely pits at wrong place, wrong time. And it was if it wasn't going to be Bronze who got the spot there, it would have been the other one. As both of the other team are going to jump straight back in to Bronze. Give them a little bit of cover. Bronze, interestingly enough, coming in with the Stingray on this, which is always an interesting move for yeah, Rainmaker. Especially with their specials. Okay, so there's yeah. gonna be one missiles, I think. And wait, is this two missiles? No, it's one Stingray to one missiles, I think. Yeah, I believe so. And uh, nobody wants to pick up the Rainmaker on that occasion, so it went straight back to the middle. Doesn't really change much. It just meant that you had to just rinse through the shield again. And I think it went in the favor of Brainlets, who have indeed grabbed the Rainmaker again. Having seen the contemplative contemplative game style that Carnage Gaming had in the match against Metro Misfits. I feel like they were probably waiting until they had their moment to use their specials here. And I mean, one awkward situation or one awkward position that they're in is they have a Stingray, but Stingray is mostly good if you're defending, if you're trying to stop the Rainmaker, Rainmaker from pushing forward. So it's not it's not a particularly useful special if you're actually trying to push forward, which was the situation that Carnage Gaming kind of saw themselves in there. And yep. so they kind of ended up wasting those specials, which is unfortunate. Yeah, and then once again, they, uh, they lost the Rainmaker as they were trying to push it out of their own half. Brock trying to go in for a little bit of a sneaky little flank. Couldn't quite get the splat that they were looking for. Quickly retreats back into the rest of the team, but the Booyah Bomb's going to split them straight back up again. And that yeah, Rainmaker gonna is probably no, going to reset not. again. Yep, they... Oh, nice takedown on the, on the Dynamo, though. Yep. And as far as range goes, no no player on the side of Brainless actually has decided to go with the rangy, with the rangy option. And then Carnage Gaming does have their... Um, their sea jet, but that is yeah. about it. I mean, look at the look at the map; it's all blue. And Brainlet's two down. This might be, this, this might be the counter be, push. Oh, there goes another one. There the goes Musil. It's, oh, it's a wipe. It's a wipe. It's a wipe. That's gonna be me. This could be KO. The map is blue. The map is blue. They're going up for it. It is a KO. It is a dunk. It's one piece. It's one piece. Well, there wow. we go. This is this is exactly going how I expected this co to go. This is yo yo. We are Lila. We're in for a wonderful, wonderful thirty minutes, forty minutes. How oh. long? How long? However long this is going to take. This is. I'm gonna sip some of my nice sparkling water because this is gonna mm. be wonderful. You you might need to, and yeah, but that means we are already guaranteed to not have a sweep this time around. We've had three sweeps already in the top cut, not for the grand final, and that's just how quickly Rainmaker, especially Rainmaker, could just turn around because it was a really good first push from Brainlets. But uh, like I said, you wipe when you've got a hold of the Rainmaker. And that is just, especially on an art academy where it's just like a direct path to that podium. You either have the lead and just miss the podium, or you're on the podium and you got the KO. And that's exactly what happened there. Brilliant. Art academy. Inkblot Art Academy, it has only this one way that you can go, but if you can go that way, you can go it quickly. And that is exactly what happened here. Also, I would like to say something to Chad, who just mentioned that they are not, partic not particularly pleased with Brainlet's team logo. Team logo, excuse me. So I am happy to tell you that Brainlet's team logo originally, the, the um, neck actually goes further. Um, I cut <laughs> off um, two thirds of the neck 
for your for your enjoyment, <laughs> so oh, no. that it's not <laughs> to reduce the creepiness, oh, no. but also because the it doesn't fit into the overlay, and so I had to go I had to go with the head only. Maybe for the <laughs> next tournament, I'm just gonna have neck only and remove the head, but I will. It's it's always either one of those those <laughs> needs more neck. Oh no. Uh. Okay, guys, match number three this time, clown blitz. Yep, clown blitz time, and we're back on Macomar. Not for not for zones this time round, so uh, we'll see how this one plays out. We've got a tri slusher. Oh my gosh, you're played to my heart, Carnage Game, in a tri slusher. Thank you. That's two ink on their side. The tri is back. This is wonderful. <laughs> it's such a fun weapon. It's such a fun weapon. Like burst bomb is always nice, and uh, ink armor is just, uh, such a re re reliable tool. And it and always warms my heart to see weapons in in the game that are not shooters. Because I mean, that's kind of what sets Splatoon apart. Is um, that it's not all shooters. That you can have an, a, a water bucket as <laughs> as a weapon. You, you can you can have a bucket. You can have a roller. Or if you're feeling really spicy, you can have a brush. Exactly. Exactly. And well, we have sadly not seen any brushes, not seen a lot of brushes so far. But what we are seeing is a triple against Brainlets. That's immense. That is immense from Carnage Gaming. When we finally does get the splat, can they get the second to at least give their team a little bit of breathing space? No, not on this occasion, but Banana is going to fall down in the end. Nobody really has a push on the cards just yet, but the clams are on the side of Carnage Gaming. Look at this. Brock has nine. It just needed one more. Ink armor going to get popped. Just about surviving from the suction bomb, but they're in a bit of a dangerous spot here. Oh, and look at those clubs popping up. I think... Oh, here we go. Here we go. He's got them. But he's of course, he's nowhere close to being able to actually throw them. Now being able to take two down. But look at that map being all green. Yeah, map and is all green. And in that position, of course... Well, oh, having said that, though, rain. Just, it was just the one that was left there. So the rain came out, but it didn't really affect things too much. Banana... Also on the cusp of getting a uh, football of their own, and there is that one for them. Missiles got locked on, and they'll be highlighted for the rest of the session until they've dropped that football, of course. And again, just both teams seem to be trading consistently here. It's again another 2v2 here. If we look at the splat number, it seems like the tri slaughter with eight splats having considerably more than anybody else. But then on the other side, I mean... At the end of the day, of course, what counts is the other clowns, and the map control seems to still be on the side of Brainlets, even though they seem to be splattered more often. Man, and that here we was go, he's cheeky. The first push. That was very cheeky for me, so just slipped on on the side and just threw it, just completely caught Carnage Gaming by surprise. They're not going to get any. Oh, they do oh, get additional going. points, just going. as I went to say it. <laughs> oh, but now Rachel and Misha are very far. Oh, never mind. That's a lot of swim speed. Yo, those squids are fast. <laughs> yes, they are. That's how diff That's the difference between not having swim speed and having swim speed on that uh, on that gear. And as that's just like that, they're down to 62. A decent first attempt, but Banana gets the splat, but unfortunately is going to lose the football. Brock quickly picks it up, but will stay on the center for the time being. Income nice will give them a and little Brock. bit of protection, and now comes the dunk. Okay. Interesting how Brock waited for a second there. I wonder what the strat was there. They were probably waiting to like be able to probably be lined up before throwing. Yeah, that being said, probably. it seems like it's not quite working out. Brock's still there, no. but doesn't have a clam, of course, and everybody just being being forced to move away from the from the basket. Yeah, Brock will now the one v one on their side, but unfortunately, I don't think they had any clams to really help. So uh, as a result, it's eighty to sixty-two, but uh, they're still in this, and they still actually have a good chance at another quick push. But again, the turf coverage is going back on the side of green more than purple. The clam was at least going to come out. Oh, there we go! That's the that's the first taken down Booyah Bomb of the day, finally. I was waiting for that. As nah, I, a Booyah Bomb take down in previous years, I love seeing that. Also, Carnage is 3 down and Brainless is pushing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is a great opportunity for Brainless to try and get a few more clams in on the side. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Get past the halfway mark. It's just the wall that's they left now. Get that and they will farther. finally go down. There they go. So damage done though, they're down to 43, so um, and with a minute left on the clock, this one smash has gone very, very quickly, it must be said. And Bronze again has another football, but they're the only ones left. They're all alone. Oh, that's really bad, because now they're going to lose even more time, and they need they need two power clams and three normal clams, if I'm not mistaken, to take this back. And well, I mean, a double clam throw like that happens in, in competitive. But then those three, honestly, those three extra clams, they're going to be they're going to be tough. And um, I guess that's... Like, now Carnage Gaming has to consider that not only... They can't just, like, throw in cheeky clamps. They need to be they need to be in position somehow. And at the moment, the map is kind of green. So that's hard. Yep. He got in position. Here we go. Banana's going to get a chance.
to go for the splat oh, and the inject. Just... Oh, oh, Hugh with the clams in the air, though. Oh, yeah, no way, they're all wiped. Yeah, that is a wipe. That was unfortunate because with 20 seconds left on the clock, they did exactly what they needed to do. But this is going to give them a free chance to get the lead straight back. But uh, they didn't get one. They could get, get they taken out here. Clam. Wait, they, they missed as well. So they, they get overtime, right? They get overtime. Wait a second. They need, they, to pick up the they need to pick up that football first. And they do have a football on the field. So this will be overtime. Crucial to defend it. Oh, no then. way. This might, honestly, this might, be, this might be a victory. This could be I a victory right here. It's I think we're seeing a comeback. Where are the clowns? Where are the boobies? Bron's getting the splat. That's crucial. But where are the clowns? They're going to get in. They take the lead. They have the lead. They did it! <laughs> Can you believe the absolute audacity from Carnage Gaming? Because it's like, they had a wipe, and immediately you saw a brain that's full. It's like, well, if we score right now, that's it, the game's over. They actually whiffed two throws in a row! They couldn't get the ball in, and Carnage Gaming went, we'll take that, thank you very much. We got another ball immediately into a counter push. Wow, that was and I loved immense. From Carnage Gaming, and just like that, they have the lead. My favorite player of this was how Bronze, like, Bronze had the path open to throw clams, and instead, like, they didn't, which, like, for me, was like, why are they not going forward throwing the last clams, like, in the, in the very last moment? And instead, they moved behind and went up the snipe, or I think it's, well, let's call it snipe, went up this little, this little pedestal to have a safer position, and then was able to throw in multiple clams instead of just, like, rushing for the objective immediately, which honestly, like, I think most people would have done that. Uh, most people would have just like, like the basket is open, the overtime is about to end in a few frames. The ba I have clams, let's just rush, rush, rush. And instead, Bronze decided to back up and try to put themselves into a safer position. And that is what ended up giving them the game. What else, which was, in my opinion, a marvelous gameplay decision. It certainly was. It's like they certainly, they, they, they kind of inadvertently pulled the brainless. You know how brainless like took the lead with the last 30 seconds in the first match. Well, they took that to a full-on extreme. They took the lead in overtime. And like I said, they got the win. And you forget how far you can throw the small clowns, which is why they were like, well, if we sit in the middle, we're sitting ducks. If we flank around, we cause a little bit of distraction in that middle area. And then we can flank the clams in when they're not expecting it. And that's exactly what they did, as you said. So we go in to main stage and... Uh, well, why in the world the brain let's do as a as a response? Now they're gonna still come in with that nozzle nose and that dynamo, but uh, they're gonna be very wary going into splat zones. And it seems like the custom duty squares have finally arisen, having one on both teams. I expect with a lot of main power up. I mean, you wouldn't but be well, surprised as the income comes out as well. They paint excellently. And here's the first map control for brain let's, which now actually have to catch up. They're not leading anymore. If this was a best of three, Carnage Gaming would have won it. <laughs> but it's not, it's not even a best of five, it's going all the way to seven as a yellow do take control for like two seconds and then immediately drop it. That blue robber is doing everything they can to just uh, just be as annoying as possible because we all love the blue robbers, of course we do. <laughs> blah blah are great, I think Chad was actually asking earlier for more blah blah so um... Oh, this, is, a... this must be a great a moment of great happiness. <laughs> <laughs> and we Just see a nice little. Uh, to keep keeping the zone. Yeah, nice little flank from Rachel. Got the splat, and as a result, the rest of the team just pushed right on forward. But they are going to lose it back again. And uh, obviously, when you uh, look at this, this is lovely little spot that Rachel has. And I think finally they're catching on to what she's up to. <laughs> and finally, it's pulls always it back those to the two flanking ground. spots. Like this is the map. Honestly, this is the map where where people learn to flank. <laughs> this is the map where, like, you just see the map and think, huh, maybe flanking is something I should start considering. <laughs> <'Cause> those <laughs> it really is. This is just very inviting. Yeah, another ink armor on the way, and having said that, they have lost the lead in all of this. Finally, do do wrestle control back. It's a ten point deficit, but look at that. Pretty much a near wipe. It was just the um, it was just the spider shot that was left. It's a really good play there. And Wumi gonna come straight back towards the middle area. Gonna keep an eye on everyone and uh, needs to charge up that storm again. Won't be too it's, far away. Just about happen. saw the grenade. <laughs> but of course, at this moment, we're, we're with 40 remaining, lead is not the most important thing. It's just about, it's just about like getting back control. And wow, Carnage Gaming <laughs> coordinating all their specials. 
fighting against Brainlet specials and succeeding, not just in getting a bunch of specials out, getting the map and also getting that triple. And now it's a wipe. It's a complete team wipe. Counter's game is going to be able to take so much map control now. Banana, that look was... at Banana with the with the blood lover being in such a nice position. They can see everything. That was sheer perfection from Carnage Gaming. The specials were on point, and there was nothing Brainless could do about it. They went free down and now look at in that a matter time. of Nobody's seconds. Nobody's even close. Yeah, that's going to be lead straight back at them. And yep, there oh, it goes. Three bomb came in just a little too late. They're, still paying way too much. <laughs> they're not getting it. I cannot believe that didn't take it. I thought for sure it would have done so, and they don't even get the spot though on the Dynamo, so this could give them a chance to get oh, back in another good play follow by the Dynamo. Up. The Dynamo is saving the game, it seems. Oh, the Dynamo is. Oh, that's risky. Well, that's a triple, and he's that's saving should the take game by neutralizing the finally does so. Dear Lord, Wacker just came. Just, just decided to operate on a completely different level there. That was just like splat after splat, and single handedly got the team back into it. And they now have a 4-2 advantage here. They still got a few penalty points to fling on down, but crucially, they have turf control. Now Carnage Gaming will have to figure out how do we how do we get back into this? And it seems like they have seen they have decided that the very, very outer left side of the map, this seems where they, they're going through right now. You see two players up there. This is there, they're trying to make this their opening. But yep. can they do it? They're not ready with their specials. But it's just yep. two players. Is this enough? There's also rain. 20 remaining. Yeah, that's gonna be a one. Twenty remaining, nobody close to the zone. Carnage gaming two down. Oh, I don't think Three they're gonna down. get that in time. They're not. That's gonna be lead taken, and with nobody else near that zone, it's just the scorchers. They're not gonna cover turf in time, and just like that, that is lead. That is KO, and uh, that is and guess a what? That's two, two. <laughs> equalizer. Let's go. This is gonna. We're gonna be sitting here for a while. I love this. Yes, we are. So, it's a best of seven. It's 2-2. Two, two. And look at the splats again. We got Q with the 10 splats. We got Wumi with the 10 splats. So, both of these teams are coming out with so much fire and so much energy. And uh, Carnage Gaming had a great play midway through that entire match where they just synced up their specials perfectly and got the wipe. But unfortunately, that Dynamo, holy damn, Waku and that Dynamo just turned that on its head and pretty much got a near wipe of their own and the rest of the, the rest of there was history they were just a solid wall they would not allow gaming back into it if it wasn't if it wasn't for this dynamo hero push um we would have been looking at a 3-1 here and we would have been we, we would have been close to the end and now instead game seven like again the original the original game carnage gaming brainless in swiss stage brainless one two two one um this match is just as close as it, it showed itself to be in the Swiss stage and um, I am sure the players in this match, I mean, they're probably very tired to be fair, but they <laughs> must be having an amazing, amazing time playing against a team as strong as as those two that are, are presenting themselves right now. Oh, yeah. And they are already ready. They know exactly what they do to have there. They have their gear ready and we are... As much as I enjoyed preparing the music for the mid for the mid game scene, we are hopping right back into battle. Yeah, and now we're know, playing tower control on the reef. Yeah, they know exactly what they want to bring out. We've got the Tristoster back on on uh, Carnage Game. We've got that blaster as well on the side of Brainlets and Rachel already going to get that incoming charged up and ready to go. There it goes. And I think both teams popped it pretty much at the same time. Good old sync from both teams. But it seems like the first the first pick is being against Brainlets with their T tech going down. But of course, yeah, this is going to be a long, long battle. Yeah, the trust Look gonna at go Rachel well. trying to they attack the <laughs> splat wow. with an answer, but it worked out. Carnage Gaming yeah. three down. Yeah, Carnage Gaming uh, not gonna have a good start here. Already past checkpoint one, our brainlets and away they go. And it's just Wumi on there as the rest of the team just goes straight on forward. And you know exactly what they're planning on doing: keeping Carnage Gaming stuck in their own spawn. Bok will at least ping armor. But they're not and gonna get to the two? tower in time. That's gonna be another one through, or is it? Oh, oh, the, oh no, the Booyah Bomb, the Booyah Bomb is saving it. Commentator's curse, curses. And this time the Dynamo is not being able to save, uh, to save Brainlets. And instead, Banana on the tower. Yep. This time, not with a Blob Blobber, but with a tri -slusher. Yeah, no, that's still a bucket, and the ink armor is going to come out as well. The point sensor was out as well, so you can just see they know exactly where to throw those burst bombs, and they will go on through checkpoint one, and that's going to be a Booyah Bomb coming down as well. Interesting choice to throw the Booyah Bomb over there. Yeah, I I'm expected surprised it to land on the tower, the tower, but instead, 
Instead, they're going for a more aggressive approach. Fending off the opponents, fending off Brain Lads as they are trying to come from the side, but it didn't quite work out. No, I feel like it would have probably been a better idea to throw that towards the tower because you just saw at least, at least one person coming towards that tower at that point. They are going to reclaim it for the time being, and they do have advantage. They have taken the Dynamo down, and Wumi goes down as well, so they still do have advantages. Brock things out another Ink Armor, and that will be checkpoint two. Now, can they take the lead from this, actually? I don't think. Anyone's in position? Oh, ah, no, yeah. never oh, mind. Oh, is, is oh, being oh. Can it take, go, go to the tower, guys. Go to the tower. Oh my gosh. 44. Oh, Wumi. Yeah. Wumi, no. No, Wumi didn't get there. Wumi didn't get there. They're still on the tower. And that's the lead. That's the lead. And that's checkpoint two. That was perfectly and beautifully done there by Carnage Game. And they just tiptoed. Just like for the... Just one little oh, frame. Quick... They were on that oh, tower. Gosh, this is getting checkpoint fast. three. They're Two people... passed it already. Two people on the checkpoint means the checkpoint goes by faster, and we could see how quickly that was. Three, it's a wipe, it's a wipe, that's it. That's a kill. They, there's no way they're gonna come back. Oh, wait, they are, they're trying to, they're trying to, but there's a booyah, but they're all the specials. Rachel, is Rachel gonna be able to be there in time? No, she's not. It's 3 2. It's 3 it two, 2 just two. like that. Out. Wow. <laughs> goodness me, well, you said you wanted it close, but my goodness me, the KOs are just as close as well. And we thought it was they a really good first push from Brainlets, but boy howdy, Carnage Gaming. Again, like I said, pixel perfect plays is what Carnage Gaming were all about there. They hopped on the tower for like a frame at a time on two different occasions, and that was enough to keep it on that checkpoint. And it worked because it baited in Brainlets to try and immediately take that tower. Both times they got caught out, so again, beautiful plays from Carnage Gaming, and hey, guess what? It's Rainmaker time. And I wonder I wonder if Carnage Gaming's outsmarted us all there by throwing that Booyah Bomb towards the side. Maybe they weren't, like, maybe they knew they wouldn't be able to do this one push. Maybe they were actually going for the long con. Um, preparing yeah. themselves for that. I, maybe, okay, maybe I'm just imagining things here. But, like, I mean, we're in the Grand Finals at this point. I, I, I honestly, I think they probably all have their, their sixth, sense, sixth sense. And they, they <laughs> know 10 steps ahead what they want to do. And, yeah. um... I, I want to believe that that was a, a very smart play to get yeah. them ready. Um, it's like it's like a Xanatos Gambit. It's like, I know that you know that I know that I'm going to do this, so I'm going to do this instead. Exactly. <laughs> okay, but, uh, guys. Put, or, excuse me. Folks. Folks. We're saying folks now. Folks. Potential deciding game. Game 6. Brainlets 2. Carnage Gaming 3. If Carnage Gaming wins this, they're winner of Ink Theory. If not, we're Aww. going for a Game 7. And it has to be on Piranha Pit, and like I said, this is how different Piranha Pit looks when it's on Rainmaker. It just look at look at this, it's awesome. And away they so go, and we're long. gonna see, we're gonna see that Dynamo look coming at all out. All of those, all of those uh, conveyor belts. Yeah, it's so good. And obviously, the Rainmaker on the podium makes it that little bit more difficult to actually go for the first push. So it really comes down to who's gonna get the splats first on this side. Wacko is not quite in the position to do so, but now gonna fling in the Booyah Bomb. Both will lose one, one loses the Squelchers, and ends up and Slosher goes down. And this will be a great chance, Wacko will trade in that Dynamo for the Rainmaker and make the first push. Oh, and that's actually going pretty far. If it's, oh, but there's the Stingray. But if it's not for the Stingray, they, they're going through the slow pedestal, it seems, and they're making it pretty far. 43, yeah. that's, uh, that's not a, that's not a push to scoff at. That's pretty good. And they're going further, yep. they're taking, oh, that's a fast pedestal, it's a fast oh, pedestal. Oh they're down to five. God. That was nearly pizza time. That was nearly done in 50 seconds flat. That would have been absolutely impressive. Banana will at least stop that for the time being, and they do take two away from that. But how close was that? And crucially, how about that for a first push? Five is immense to come back from. This is not an easy. This is not an easy map to get the KO in. This is not one of those one of those very fast maps. Considering that there are all of those battles. <laughs> <laughs> that are just everywhere, but if you if you can take the fast if you can take the fast belt, I've I've recently discovered my love for the fast belt, the one that goes into the direction of the pedestal. But of course, you have to make it through this one extra choke point, um, where you're like very very close to the opponent's spawn. But if you can make yeah. it there, it's just it's just such a beautiful feeling to just like rush rush right up there. Yeah, Wumi does get the spawn on the slot ship as it does get taken down by the zap and it just trades left, right and center. But once again, Brainlets are going to take the Rainmaker and immediately charge. They are going to lose it on this occasion. But again, they've still got the Booyah Bomb coming up. That'll force the rest of the uh, Carnage Gaming to uh, look out. And Rachel pops in Karma as well, so this could be another good chance for a push. But Miss Else will hold them back a little bit. Okay, so far it seems like Carnage Gaming has this spot under control, under control though. 
I would not like, try to to fight against this death pleasure. They were pretty safe. Yeah, and as a result, that is going to get reset. And you just see, <laughs> you just see Misu just trying to figure out where to go from here if they can flank at all. But uh, Q gonna try and go for the two v one. Comes out with the inkjet. Not gonna quite get the dynamo on the this roller. occasion. Oh, rollers are so dangerous against inkjet. <laughs> just I was scared that. just watching that. I'm an yeah, inkjet so man. Like... It's like you saw the dynamo just peek out, it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, I'm in trouble. So many bad memories. And Stingray's gonna come out, and this is gonna be points, and Banana is gonna take the Rainmaker. Gets a splat with it, too! Just immediately takes that Wumi oh, off it, they were quite expecting that. And oh, let's see if they can make the it to the ramp. They've, they've got a 4-2 advantage here, they could start moving, and they're gonna have to, now missiles are on the way. Yeah, but they're gonna attack from the left, they gotta make sure that the left is gonna be safe. Oh, they, it is now, it is now, they got them down. But it seems like there was just, oh, there was just the CDS. Yeah, the squad still there. just falling oh, down, wow. got the trade as well, which is crucial for them. I don't think Carnage Gaming can uh, regroup in time, having said that, Brain that seems took like quite Brain a while a to pop that shield. It's now popped, but they are going to lose the end zap, so advantage definitely lost, and that Rainmaker is probably going to get reset with Q being forced back towards their own conveyor belt. And there it goes. Have a 1v1 with that Scrotcher. I think they're just stuck in that podium now for the time being, but again, they've got the player advantage. It's uh, two, two down. down. just two minutes. We're now with, uh, with just one minute, actually. We're just kind of having a face of a, of a more neutral game. Um, Carnage Gaming knows they probably have just one chance left and they have to KO in that one chance, or like at least nearly KO. And so of course you try, you, you get way more careful, you know. We, we have to, we have to get this now, but now they're two down. Brain is starting to acquire more and more of an advantage. Three down actually. Yeah. And the time is running. The clock is yep. ticking down. And the worst part is, is that Brainless have decided to pick up the Rainmaker as well. And they're going to go for a push of their own now. They don't really need to do so. They have a massive lead, but hey, they want to style. They want to take this with a KO. And Rachel's already up into the spawn area. Had to quickly dip out there, though. Bit too much pressure for them. And Misa goes for the fast belt again. Does not make oh, it on look at this that, occasion. That showing off strength. They just, they just got further than Carnage Gaming ever got in this match. Just for a second time. That's just, that's just how you know that this is. They, they are legit in Rainmaker. I, I wonder are. if they won the previous Rainmaker match as well. That was. So yeah, three. They just, they just proved this was not just an accident. They know they know what they're doing. And that, my friends, with 10 seconds left on the clock, they know that they need to pick up the Rainmaker, and they do. Stingray comes out. It's a 4-3 to three advantage, but there's still plenty that can be had. That's a 4-2 oh, to advantage two, nice. now. Overtime will happen. If this Rainmaker Wait, goes down right down. here, that's two. That's three up all right towards them. They'll live for the time being, but they are very, very alone. She has to be Earth extremely team. careful now. Wumi's yeah, coming. Wumi's coming with the CDS. Yep, you can see oh, the right that side they is, are this alone, is a big they do go down. Down. down, they do go down, this is okay, still very much up for grabs here, they're gonna start they're pushing, already. they're going up the belt, oh, but they have to this is not safe back. for Q, this is not safe for Q, Rachel's in there, Rachel's attacking, this might be it, that's it. It is, we, my friends, Rachel. have a match 7. Oh my gosh, well then, guys, guys, game 7. My friends, I hope you're sitting comfortably. I know I was like, I didn't, I didn't seriously think we'd make it here, but we have 12 slats for Wumi. Rachel doing what they can as well, and look at the arms there. Eight armors with the point from just one player. And my word, well, your dreams are coming true. Grand final of Ink Fury <sighs> goes the distance and. Who's, who wins it at this point? Like, this is this is very hard to call here. So, wait, let me take a look at the... Okay, actually, the previous Rainmaker match was won by Carnage Gaming. So, you see, we, yeah. we've got to do some some statistical predictors, predictors here. So, um, <laughs> this is Clan Blitz on Manta Maria. So, our statistics are telling us that 100% of Clan Blitz matches so far have been won by Carnage Gaming. Um, not sure what that's telling us, but... Uh... <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, oh, I'll tell you what. Mean, wait a second. Was this a one point? Was that a one point lead? That was an overtime. Remember, that was an overtime win for oh, uh, Carnage course, Gaming in that previous that that one because they were behind the entire match. thing. Oh my! All of those mats are so close. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we have. By the way, we have a professional statistician in chat, and I am currently being applauded on my excellent, good sample size of one. Um, thank That's you very good. much. I. <laughs> that is absolutely good. So. 
Manta, and obviously with, Manta, with it being a stage like Manta Maria, I mean, you probably won't see Stingrays coming out, but if you do, you also won't be that surprised because Manta Maria is a very narrow stage, so you are more likely to hit an opponent with that kind of weapon. Having said that, this is Clamless, you will see Armus, and you will probably see a Booyah Bomb as well. Maybe some bubbles, I actually, but I don't think we've seen bubbles at all yet, so... I actually love Splash Dance on this map mode combo. Like, when everything oh. is, like, all clumped together uh, down down with the, the basket, you can just, like, you can just, like, plop... <laughs> You can yeah. just flop in that little in that little hole and everybody got stun. Oh, you don't like to see that. So it comes down to this. Can Brainlet win ev win this point and win every single set in this tournament? Or oh, Carnage Gaming gonna swipe it from them at the very last second. Match seven for all the marvels. Lights out and away we go. And we're gonna see a slosher once again. So we've got the missiles coming up on the side of Carnage Gaming. Rachel, meanwhile, knows exactly what they're gonna do. Here we go. Here charge, and off it goes. 20 seconds. It was interesting to see gone. how a brainless they were all moving together, whereas Carnage Gaming they all went their own different directions. Well, it's worked out for them so far. It's this ball point splatling, and I love the fact that the ball point is coming in oh with my this. Gosh. It... Oh the wow. bomb. Are they gonna take it? That's going to be immediate score. Surely Brock is going to score from here, and they do score from there. Great start for Carnage Gaming, and they're probably going to get a couple more as Rachel well. There. Rachel is ready. Rachel finally oh, just Rachel's about not going to let hand. anybody through. Look at that. Yeah. So damage limitation there for Brainlet. The first score does go the way of Carnage Gaming. They managed to get in one additional clan, but. Uh, well, Banana, with the uh, slosh of range, does manage to catch out Wumi and Missiles, or all ten of them, going to the left-hand side. Now look at Bronze nearly getting... Oh, nearly getting that, that sneak attack, but... Oh, well, Bronze is so close to the basket, but is it, is it enough to throw? Well, it doesn't matter, because they've gone for the eject, so. and that's another... That's another win, that's another 2v1 on their side. Booyah Bomb not quite working the way they wanted it to, but the Dynamo is holding on for dear life and not allowing them to push. Q does have another chance, but the rest of the team are back now. Well, they, at least they have a huge map, uh, the huge clown advantages. They also, they're starting to get their specials, but now the ends up is down. Yeah, that, that go, there goes a lot of turf really like coverage, that. a lot of pressure. Q quickly drops the uh, the football, quickly reclaims it as well, and has to double on back. They have missiles off their own, but they're not going to be able to utilize it. Rumi gets the splat and immediately throws in the Booyah Bomb as well. This will be a great chance for a push. Rumi comes in, trying to uh, disrupt a little bit of things. And... But they just trade. It's just a trade. They keep trading. Oh, and now three down on Carnage Gaming, though. This might be... Oh, but where's the clown? They don't have any clowns left. Yeah. And like Q's got, got... That, got those missiles, so they don't even yeah. have to be close. Like, there they finally go, have it now, line. but again, the rest of the team the will be coming back in, and they're not going to throw it. They're not going to get a chance to. That, that literally is Clam Blitz 101, where it's like, you can go forward and you can get the splats, but if you don't have the clams to form a football, you're not going to get the scoring by the time they get back. Now everything is back to zero. Of course, Carnage Gaming still has this 23-point lead, but uh, this is Clowns, 23 points. This is not decisive yet. It certainly but isn't, but again, is they got splats on their side, and if they can keep this up, and if they can keep Brainlets from at least scoring, they'll at least take this with two minutes left on the clock, but as we all know in the previous matches in this set, anything can and will still happen. Missiles on Q, ready to go. They are going to try to think about going through, but they're going to retreat back because they've just lost the end up and the slosher. Oh, no way. I kind of liked how Carnage Gaming has been playing this so far. They've been, they've been very controlling, their, their positioning has been very nice. But now, now it looks like all of this might be lost as Brainlands is coordinating their specials and pushing forward towards the, the Counter Gaming Street. Yeah, and Dynamo, I oh, think the, the Dynamo, Dynamo knows ready. the Q is there, but and Q, it, oh, it. They, they couldn't get the splat. And Rumi's going to go for it. Rumi's going to go for it over off the jump, but the Dying Check no, there's there, there. Needs to try oh, and push oh, it. Oh, oh, Rumi makes it, Rumi makes it. Yep, but, oh, but they, it's so they frustrating do score. You... They do score. The slosher guts. The uh, gets the splat. Now, can they keep them away? Because crucially, that one single clam that Carnage Gaming could be the difference between winning this set, and they are gonna lock them down. So with a minute left on the clock, Brainlets have to do another score to take the lead and win this set. But now, at least all they need is one sneaky power clam. 
They don't need any coordination. They just need one sneaky power clamp. And Box gonna get the spot on the Dynamo, and that's a 4 to 2 advantage. They've got a football on the side, but Box going in, and they want more splats. They want more it's damage to be done. Oh, but look at Karnas Gaming. They're also ready. They're ready. They're throwing it, and they've got a bunch of clamps ready. Oh, and it's a wipe. They've got all it the clamps, a and it's a wipe. Look at Banana with all those clamps. They got nine that clamps. They were ready for a huge push, and they're doing it. And that is going to be a massive thing to come back from. And look, there's still more clamps coming in. The barrier is just oh, up. They keep going. There's nothing that they can do. They're not winning the one v one. No way! No, they, well. missed. they missed! They missed! The they missed! The football with They were so close to KO. <laughs> Oh, I no have way. Okay, this better not be a comeback. This has got to hurt so much if this is a comeback for Carlos I Gaming. have never seen anyone throw it over the wall before. That's such a surprise for me. Well, with three seconds to go and they have a football, overtime will happen. It's a massive deficit to claw back. So, essentially, oh, no, how what? good did defense... just fall down? I think... Oh, that T-Dex just fell down. It's only three left. They're now in a disadvantaged position, even more. Oh, my gosh. Gonna be Carlos it. Gaming keeps taking them down. The Booyah is happening, but Bronze is safe. Bronze and is safe, and it's just Bronze the end down. That's a wipe. That's it. That's it. It's over. My, it's over. Hello, my Bronze. friends, nice. my friends, Carnage Gaming have done their revenge. They've got it perfected. A match seven goes the distance. But it's Carnage Gaming that are your winners. Carnage Gaming being the winners of Ink Theory July after an amazing, amazingly long seven game battle. First time in the history of Ink Theory that we got a seven game grand finals. Was it worth what it? What a match! <laughs> <laughs> oh my word, that was amazing. And, well, it was so close from start to finish. And you just thought that with that last minute, Brainlets might be able to get another push going. But unfortunately, they just suddenly went down. And you saw how aggressive Carnage Gaming were being. They were like, okay, you want to take this to overtime? We are not going to allow you to do so. They probably wouldn't have liked throwing that football over the wall. They'll probably not want to see that one again. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they got the results. They got the win. They got the revenge against Brainlets. And what a way to end Ink Theory. What an exceptional performance. I Throughout this entire match, I, keep, I kept wondering, okay, which one is the stronger team? Okay, maybe this was an exception. Maybe this team is actually the stronger team. Which team is actually the stronger team? And it, they just kept trading and trading and trading and trading. It was like, it, it just, they, they just couldn't decide who is the stronger team. I still don't know. I mean, Carnage Gaming won this and clearly, clearly they deserve to win. They won their matches, but it was so close. I mean, look at this one, look at this one Clams match. If it wasn't for this one Clams match, game three, where they had this last second comeback this would have been the win for brainless it would have been a yeah. it would have been a 2-4 there was pretty much every other match on there it was just like you had those close moments where it was just like the last 30 seconds of the very first match of the set was when everything changed into brain it's into um into brainless favor and then we had it again with the climbers as you said and it's just it's moments like those that could just sometimes tip the other way where if it went the other direction it could have been very, very different scenario, but not to be on this occasion. And to be fair, Brainless looked formidable and were still looking very formidable in that set. Like I said, they won all of their sets up till this point. So, but that just goes to show how much you learn in a competition like this, that the fact that Carnage Gaming went, okay, we lost them, but it was close. We know what we can do against them if we do meet them in the future. And well, they put it to damn good use. And as a result, Absolutely. well, both teams do still get a good piece of artwork, is that correct? Oh, very much so. That's actually... I was I was having my button ready for this. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> they are getting artwork. Wonderful artwork, actually. Bye. So, um... Brainless are going to get a wonderful, a group of little derps, it's so cute, <laughs> by six, and they can donate $50 to a charity of choice. Maybe something like prevention of long necks, or I don't know. I don't know what there is, but I think I think there are some ideas that they can, they can work on. And then Carnage Gaming, $100, and a wonderful full body drawing of their entire team by Julie, known as Adorable Weapon of Doom. I've seen her in chat, actually. Um, so that was, um, that is so, so amazing. And look at all of this beautiful art. They're all so, so, so skilled. 
I am really, really looking forward to seeing to seeing the not just you see now the tournament itself might be over, but we will still we will see the aftermath. We will see the beautiful art. We will see we will see mm-hmm. honestly people talking about this for the next few days because that was that was amazing. Oh, um, I can't wait. I can't wait to chat with everybody about this in my stream tomorrow. Um, <laughs> before we end this, <laughs> before we end this, maybe we can take a quick look at the overall results of the tournament so if you give me a second yeah that's right ah so oh wait i have the the audio ah you see i was going for that epic that epic like switcheroonie into Uh. into different different phases of the tournament okay so here we are Let's let's see who. Ha, so so we've got we've got on position number four we have a Metro Misfits. Um, can we all have clap claps in chat for Metro Misfits, who had a wonderful performance, managed to make it into top four in so so many close Swiss matches. But then IPS sucks. They were able to to sneak past them and make it to position number three in an exceptionally great bronze match. And that also means that they are, they are winning, they are the first, they are third place, they are the first team to win a prize. And they are winning a wonderful dream drawing by Lonely Days, who, by the way, also, again, I want to point that out, sponsored $140 into the prize pool. So that's why the prize pool is so high. We're not going to be able to do this every month. This is, this is an exception, sponsored <laughs> by Lonely Days. Lonely Days 17, please, please, please follow her on Twitter, like for real. And then, we just saw the amazing Grand Finals, Brainlets versus Carnage Gaming. We have Brainlets on place two, who have fought so, so, so hard. We got seven matches of amazing fighting, but in the end, in the end, the winner of Ink Theory July is... Ta-dam! Carnage Gaming! Congratulations! And um, I am so, so, so glad that this, all of these matches were as exciting, that they went the way they went. I, I don't think this could have gone any better. Um, this is, this is like so much, so many nerve wracking moments. And um, I am happy about every single one of them. And I hope that also includes the other teams that um, were eliminated in Swiss days, but some of them making it very, very close. Such like Midnight, we saw in the Swiss, Swiss match number six. Um, they won the match, but they just barely didn't make it into the top four. Which, again, um, future Ink Theory tournaments, if they keep having as much as many players as this one, it's probably we're probably going to turn this into a top eight instead. Because of course, if yeah. you have forty teams registered, top four is a little bit small. Um, so um, if we can keep this going with the size that we have, then I can promise a top eight in the future. But for now, with position number five, midnight. Barely not making it into top four, but showing an exceptional performance. Conversion 2 on position number six. Kiwi and the Caveman on seven. Riot on eight. Fear of Death on nine. And Toxic Ice Cone on ten. So those are your your top ten of Ink Theory Monthly. And then, of course, you can look up you can look up all the standings on the Ink Theory Tournament website on Battlefly. And um, to all of your teams, to all of you Woomies, uh, all of you viewers, viewers who also are Woomies. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Woomies and Thank you so alike. so much for being here. And can I also, can I point out, first of all, the staff in this tournament, this went so well. And so, so many people that are entirely new have been working in the background of this tournament, making sure that everything works all right. And like for as far as new people are concerned, that includes Witty. We had Matt. We had uh, Splat Squid, who was entirely new. Then we have all of the wonderful artists. And then, of course, Lila, you're also your new commentator. You're the first one, the first time, the first time in, in an Ink Theory tournament. Um, <laughs> all of you, thank you so, 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 so much. Um, before I, before we, we finish this. Also, wait, I would also like to point out, of course, the other, the, the staff members that are repeating, um, Repeating members, I would like to. I would like to point out. So we have. Uh, did you see this time? I have the problem. I have to wait and actually until the overlay rotates. Ah. Uh, here we go. We have Lex. We have Falco. We have Gaki. Thank you so 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 much for being support members. 
who are who were such a huge help in organizing this tournament and in making sure that everything runs smoothly this time i hadn't didn't have to worry at all about any match disputes or like if people had to drop out nothing i had to worry about my brain was so much more relaxed throughout this tournament which is which is awesome um thank you so 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 much for the the continued support and um baggage Baggins has been helping so, so much. He's always been ready to be a commentator. I'm wondering, Baggins, if you're still here, because if so, we could have a, we could have a triple commentator. <laughs> we could be all together in one voice chat. Baggins, can you hear me? Baggins, I'm not sure if, I, I, honestly, if I was, if I was him, I would probably be taking a break right now. <laughs> I would not be surprised. He did do a lot in that uh, initial Swiss set. <laughs> I mean, he is online on Discord, so he might join in. Maybe he will, maybe he will. Well, <laughs> that being said... <laughs> Girl calling out the lurkers, I'm so sorry. That being said, <laughs> Lila, thank you so, yeah. so, so much that you were you were here to support the tournament. And without you, like, you are like one of the one of the people that I could show on Twitter and be like, Hey, guys, we've got legit people here now. This tournament is legit. And um, I am so, so happy that somebody as experienced as you was willing oh. to support this tournament, to lend you, to lend us your voice and um, to make this grand finals in especially as exciting as it is as it was. And also, Bagus, stop, un stop muting yourself, Bagus. I can see that you're in voice chat. <laughs> Hello there. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey, Bagus. <laughs> Bagus, thank you so, so, so much for being in the in the Swiss card. I know it's it's so, so many matches, isn't it? And it's, a, it's a lot. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. And um, keep in mind, in the previous tournament, even Bagus like, went through the entire thing, including top card and everything i'm um, i hope i hope that this time you guys like like it wasn't quite as extreme as like not having to do the entire tournament and i am so so thankful that like you've always been there to to make sure that everything works out and all of you wonderful viewers <laughs> all of you wonderful viewers thank you thank you so much for being here i'm glad that like people are actually watching watching the tournament and being excited just ex as excited as we are like, it would have been so lonely if it was only us three being excited <laughs> over this awesome Splatoon gameplay. And we would be sitting here all alone. And instead, we've got all of those people being excited and spamming some emotes sometimes. And ah, rah, 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 rah. Um, <laughs> all of but, the ass, hey, all I... of the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, but seriously, Maybe there's we'll... no poke. We would, not have, we would not have been able to do this without you for putting, up, for putting this on in the first place. So... Thank you so, so much for having me, and I hope that the next one that runs is just as successful as this one, if not more so. Thank you, thank you. Um, I was so excited to see how many teams were participating this time, and I will I will think about how, how did we do this this time? How was this like, can we repeat this for the next time? And I hope we will, and then we're going to have Ink Theory August, and it's going to be just as exciting as this one, and that's, that's great. And that being said, that being said, guys... Um, Guys, I think, I think it is time to send the excitement somewhere else. We are yes. reaching, reaching the end and we need to see where are we, where are we going to go? How about I send you guys over to, well, I mean, we're, we're it's between two tournament streams. So of course, of course we should raid a Splatooner. And how about somebody who actually actually took part in the tournament. I'm not sure how long she's going to be streaming now, but um, Ashley. Oh, that's not how you raid. Oh, whoops. <laughs> how about we don't put a space at the start? Here we go. Ashley. Mistake. Ashley. Um, oh, and yes, guys, yeah. the raid message. Can you type <laughs> yeah. exclamation point ink theory raid? Yes, there is, there, is a, there is a special ink theory raid message, actually. We need that. We need that. Ink, wait, raid ink theory. Is it this? Wow, I don't know, I don't know the message, oh no! <laughs> oh no! I don't remember the command! <laughs> Here we go, we did it, we there did it, is. we did it, we did it! There we Hold go. your bubble hats, this is a theoretical raid. And of course, tomorrow we're gonna get the snow poses as an emote back. But for now, until, until tomorrow, you can still use the Ink Theory emote if you are subscribed to my channel. Or uh, you can also use it in Discord and everything. So, everybody, again, thank you so, so, so much for being here. And, um... Yeah, guys, I'm going to send you guys over to Ashley now. Everybody, everybody, and Baggage and Lila, bye-bye. Bye. 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 bye.